Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wait a few more seconds here to allow some people to join. We'll get ready for our morning prayer. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to morning prayer. I want to thank everybody for joining. So every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., we come together and we pray. We pray together because we believe that when we pray for one another, that the Lord hears our prayers. And not only does he hear our prayers, we also know that he gives us comfort as we wait. A lot of you have made your requests known to God. And you're waiting. So what do you do when you're waiting? You keep serving them. You, you keep believing. Last night we had a really good Bible study. It's online. Uh, and in that Bible study, we studied Matthew chapter 7, verses 7, 8, and 9. It says, ask, seek, knock. So when you're asking, you may not get an answer. So you, you start seeking. I've asked the Lord, Lord, I need something. I need some help. The next step in that process is now you, you do your part. You, you go looking, start seeking, making sure that the thing that you're, you've asked God for uh, is within reach. He'll give you the resources. You keep knocking. What happens if the door doesn't open? Do you give up? Some of you have been knocking. Lord, my health, Lord, my bills, Lord, my job, my marriage, Lord, my kids, knock, knock, knock. And it feels like the door hadn't been opened yet. Do you quit knocking or do you keep knocking? If you lost your keys this morning trying to go to work, do you stop looking for the keys or do you keep seeking? You're going to keep looking for the keys. You keep knocking. And so we come to the Lord saying, Lord, okay, when? When? Because I know what your will is. 
as we go into prayer this morning, one thing that's important that we have to understand is that we have to pray the will of the Lord. In chapter 6, in Matthew chapter 6, right before he goes into 7 with ask, seek, and knock, he says, Our Father which art in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let's make sure that when we're knocking on doors and we're seeking and we're asking, we're including, Lord, is this your will? I'm asking you, but is this your will? I'm looking, but is this your will? I'm knocking, but is this your will? Is this your will? I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. Can we do that just for a moment? Say, Lord, what's your will? I'm listening. I need everybody, just before we go into prayer this morning, I need everyone just in your own spirit. Don't put it in the chat. You don't have to type this. Just you and the Lord personally. Lord, I'm listening. What's your will? But what's your will for me? Lord, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to handle this? I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. Oh, where, do you, where do you want me to go? I'm listening. Is this, is this something that should be resolved now or is this something that will be handled later? I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. Come on. Lord, I'm listening. Lord, I'm listening. Father, we come this morning thanking you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We come this morning appreciating you for everything you've done just yesterday. We come this morning thanking you for what you've already done today. Your mercies are new every morning. Brand new day, brand new mercies. Thank you. But we come every morning asking you to help us. Every day we come seeking guidance, seeking directions, seeking your word, seeking direction. Every morning we come knocking, knock, 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 knock. Well, I just want to make sure we're in your will. I want to make sure that we're seeking you the right way and, and understanding that it Whatever you have for us is for us. I, I, I mean, I genuinely want your kingdom to come. I do. I do. I want your kingdom to come in the lives of everybody that's here. Please. Please. Lord, everybody that you sent to the chat this morning, I'm going to ask that you just bless them. I ask that you bless the prayer team and everybody that's assembled here that we, as we pray for one another, that we would be encouraged. That we would be encouraged. That we would be encouraged. Welcome to our morning prayer. How this works, if you're new here to this chat, this is all we do is pray. I'm the facilitator. That's all I am as the host. I have an entire group of family members that's online right now in the chat that's going to pray with you. They're going to pray. That's all we're doing is pray. We invite you to pray with us right there where you are, right there where you are. When you see a prayer request come up, just pray. Just go to the Lord in prayer. We have a scripture that we've all memorized together. Matthew 18, 18 and 19 that says when we agree together in that prayer, according to the Lord's will, he'll answer. His timing, but he answers. So as I'm praying, all you have to say is, Lord, yes, I agree. 
Father, I come in agreement. Father, I co-sign on that. Father, I'm, I'm on the same page. Where two or three agree, where two or three come together, he's in the midst. The Bible also says that we have authority given to us from Christ to walk among scorpions and snakes and nothing will hurt us. So I need you in your agreement as I'm praying for others. Say, Lord, yeah, no weapon, no devils, no snakes, no scorpions. Nothing will hurt them, Lord, please. I, I need you to agree that whoever we're praying for is set free. Because we another scripture memory we have is John 8:36 that says, Who the Son sets free is really free, like truly free. We, we, we don't have to stay where we're at. So Lord, make them free, Lord. Help them realize they're free, Lord. Give them revelation knowledge that they're free, Lord. Give them an opportunity to feel your freedom. I need you to agree with me there. Is this all coming together, helping us understand this? First prayer request in the chat. And just type your prayer request in the chat. I'll, I'm going to get to every prayer request. I will. We will. First prayer request this morning. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. Like, he woke me up. He woke me up. Can, can I tell y'all that real quick? Can I share a real quick? I don't know if this is a testimony or just an observation. I'm going to get to the prayers, but I, I've, I've been wanting to share this for about a year now, and I, I think I've shared this with a few of you. So around 2000, maybe even in college, the Lord started testing my faith, teaching me. I started hearing his voice on how to trust him, how to trust him, how to trust him. And it, it started way back in college with me waking up every morning getting ready for class me waking up every morning getting ready for for, for workouts i was a uh, athlete a college athlete played basketball and so we have these 6 a.m workouts or 7 a.m workouts 5 a.m workouts and my alarm clock would would you know bother my roommate my roommate was also my brother my last two years in college and the last thing i wanted to do in a dorm was wake the person up at 5 a.m and so now if you if you've ever been like me now you're waking up early looking at the clock waking up early looking at the clock waking up early looking at the clock and now you're really not getting any rest because you're waking up looking at the clock and not really sleeping and so somewhere in that time period i remember the lord said do you trust me like i could i just felt him saying trust me i'll wake you up i said but what if i'm late and he said but do you do you trust me though this is this is gonna take all your faith. This isn't this isn't for everybody. I'm gonna pray. I just want to share this real quick. I've never shared this before. I don't think in a in a full audience, and so I'm just sharing it now. And so I started my journey without an alarm clock way back in college. Got married, went to my very first job at Pepsi, and had to be there like at at 5:30 in the morning. And I again early relationship with the wife young kids uh i stopped using alarm clocks and and it took some some training it took my body listening to the lord some mornings he would wake me up 30 minutes before some minutes he'd wake me up an hour before and i got to a point that when my body woke up that was when the lord was saying ken ken very gentle. Ken, it's time to get up. 25 years into the marriage. No alarm clock. None. Wake up when we wake up. My wife don't have an alarm over there. I don't have an alarm. We wake up when the Lord wakes us up. And if the Lord wakes me up at 5 o'clock in the morning... That means he wants to be up at 5 a.m. And I'll tell you, I haven't been obedient every time. Sometimes I'll wake up, I'll pray, I'll get my word, I'll say some things in my head, I'll, I'll go through some things that I'm thinking about, I'll write down a dream. I'm like, Lord, can I get like 15 more? Sometimes they wake me up 15 minutes before, 30 minutes before. I trust them. Do you know I've never been late to work in 25 years? ever 
all the years that I worked, I'm, he's always woken me up on time, every time. I say all that to say this. Uh, I'm in there resting. I was in there having a good slumber. Oh, I was sleeping good. I knew I was sleeping good because I felt my body just in a good rest. Six fifty-five, or five five fifty-five for some of you. Five fifty-five. I felt this. Ken, Ken. I looked at the clock. I said, "Oh Lord, Lord, it's prayer. It's prayer in five minutes." The Lord says, "Okay." Now, some of you, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't tell that story to tell you to stop. Using alarm clocks, a lot of you have those Apple watches on and things like that to alarm you. You use whatever works for you. I'm telling that story for the purpose of you got to trust them. Whatever, whatever it is, it, it could be something totally different. It could be the very thing that the Lord has been telling you. Do you do you trust me on this? Because I'll handle it. I'll take care of you. I, I'll make sure it's right on time. I, I'm never late. I'm never late with the prayer. I'm never late with an answer. I'm, I'm never late. Some of you feel like I've been knocking. When is this going to happen? And the Lord says, I, when it's time, I'll give you a gentle, hey, hey, come on. I don't know why I shared that. I thought it would, now I feel like maybe it was neither here nor there. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. First prayer request this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer. Do we keep our foots in the door that are trying to close sometimes? That's a good question. You should have came to Bible study last night. We answered some of those questions. Here's what we uh, here's what we learned last night about pray, prayer. And I'll answer that question as I get ready to go to the first prayer request. Ask, seek, knock. So as we're asking and knocking, the Lord is the one who allows doors to open. Come on, get this revelation this morning as we go into prayer. You're knocking on doors. Lord, come on. Lord, is this the one? Is this the right man? Is this the right job? Lord, is this the right remedy for my health? Lord, is this the right business opportunity? Lord, is this what my kids need to do? Lord, I need to move to Dallas. I need to stay in Oklahoma City. What should I do? I need you to help me, but I'm going to keep knocking. And as you're knocking, if the door does not open, that's your answer. Go to the next door. When we were in sales, when we did cold calling on door-to-door sales, no one answered. Do you quit? Do you get in the car? Say, well, no one answered. I guess we're done. I guess no one picked up the phone, so I can go home for the day. You. You call the next customer on the list. And you you call the next customer on the list. Well, the Lord said, even if, if a if an evil father knows how to give a good gift to his kids, how much more do you think your heavenly father would give to those he loves and who who's consistent, who's sincere in their asking? So if that door opens and you can get your foot in. And it's the Lord's will. You won't have to push it open. You won't have to pry it open. You won't have to force your way into it. You won't have to demand your way into it. The door will open. And I will tell you as we pray today, the door doesn't open. You keep knocking or you go to the next one. But don't stop knocking. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. Brother Kevin's here this morning. We're glad to have you, brother. He said, pray the ones I've hurt that they would forgive me and that I can forgive the ones that have hurt me. That's good. Lord, forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lord, whoever Kevin has hurt, I know you're going to soften their heart because Kevin's heart is right. Kevin is really trying, Father, to align with your will. He just wants things to be to be right he's thirsting and he's hungry for righteousness lord lord will you fill his cup lord give him compassion grace to forgive people who hurt him 
And for everybody in this chat right now, that's holding something against somebody because you're waiting on an apology. They did you wrong. It was rude. That, that really hurt your feelings. I'm asking the Holy Spirit right now to, to, to soften your heart. Yeah, if you're going to stay in this chat, you're going to be a part of the chat. And we pray for you. I ask right now that the Holy Spirit reveal to you like he's revealing to Brother Kevin who you need to forgive, who you need to just let it go. You may never get an apology. Let me say this out loud so you can hear this. You may never get an apology, ever. You love them anyway. Love your neighbors. Love your enemies. That covers everybody. Lord, I pray over Kevin. I pray over everybody in this chat. We love our enemies. We love those who hurt us. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Yeah. All kind of lies and matter of evil against you. You're blessed. You're favored. God's kindness is on you. Well, give him the strength to just let it go. Why you need an apology anyway? You're not God. You, you don't get to hold people accountable. You don't, you don't get to forgive people of sins. You didn't die on anybody's cross. You don't have that kind of power. That's between them and the Lord. You love them. You forgive them. Even if they hadn't come yet. Listen, listen. You need to forgive them before they apologize. You need to forgive them before they apologize. In your heart right now, I forgive them. Forgiveness means that you owe me nothing. There's no debt to be paid. There's no paybacks. There's no nothing you have to do to, to make this right again. I forgive you. Let's start over. Reset. The reconciliation is a different piece. The reconciliation of us sitting down and, and, and having dinner together or getting the relationship back to where it was is a different situation. A lot of people don't teach that and pray that. But the forgiveness part is what he asked us to do. Lord, I forgive him. Lord, help Kevin to forgive. Next prayer request in the chat. Sister Renee said, uh, please pray for the people who pray on the prayer line for me. Pray for Renee. Lord, we pray for Renee. That's good. Lord, we pray for everybody here. Give us the strength. Help us. Help us to do what we need to do in your will. Brother Alex said, pray for me. My AC went out in his truck. Lord, I know you're going to handle that. I know you're going to give him peace. And Lord, I know you're going to continue to give him calm in his life. Brother Alex, I pray over you that you continue to search the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. He is a refuge in the time of trouble. So Lord, all of Alex's concerns, cool him down. Bring him down. Give him peace. I come against that depression that's trying to peek his ugly head here and there. I come against the sadness and the loneliness that tries to come upon brother Alex and everybody in this chat let me just speak to loneliness for a second yeah we have the power the Bible says we have authority over all scorpions and snakes the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood we fight against evil spirits so just for a quick moment let me tell loneliness and grief and sadness and depression and I don't care no one loves me let me tell that spirit for a moment uh, what I think about them Nobody loves me. No one cares about me. It's never going to change. Look at me. I'm nobody. I, I'm, so, I'm so mad at myself. Let me tell that spirit that's hovering and lying to you what I think about them. Let me tell this spirit that thinks he can come in and tell a child of God the opposite of who they are. Let me tell you about yourself. You have no business being here. You have no business even being around God's people. You have no business whispering into their ears and lying and manipulating them. You have no business being on their porch, being in their lawn, talking to their kids, talking to their brothers and sisters, talking to the whole family. You have no 
rights to their their being. You 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 lost. Let me make sure you understand what's getting ready to happen. You lost. You already lost. The blood of the Lamb has given us victory. The blood of the Lamb has given us authority. The blood of the Lamb has, has given us salvation. The blood of the Lamb has given us power. The blood of the Lamb has allowed His kingdom to live inside of us. That's our scripture memory, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And so every evil spirit in this chat right now of loneliness, Every evil spirit, every whispering spirit, every manipulative spirit, deceiving spirit of no one, no one will ever be with you. No one cares about you. No one calls you. Don't you say that ever again to Alex or anybody in this chat. You are a liar. That's not true. That's not true. That can never be true because the Lord loves us. That can never be true because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. That can never be true because the Father himself has reconciled us through Yeshua. So I'm never lonely. I'm never lonely. I'm never, I'm never by myself, ever. I'm never by myself, ever. I always have somebody with me. I always have somebody with me at all times. And he's he's closer than any brother would ever be. Oh, I have the comforter living on inside of me. I have the Prince of Peace living on inside of me. I have joy and love and kindness and goodness with me. So I tell this spirit of loneliness. I tell this spirit of grief. I tell the spirit of depression. I know there's layers to this. I know there's levels to this but just at a at the top level we don't we don't get to do that today i stand against it i need someone to agree i need just one or two people to agree with me that today that spirit of loneliness you don't get to settle you don't get to pick 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 your head in and see what we're doing today you don't get to ring my doorbell to ask me about if i'm interested you you don't get to stay on my porch and solicit and put little door hangers on there. You don't, you don't get to do any of that today. No. I bind you in the name of Yeshua. I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua. That word rebuke in the Hebrew is to, to silence, to tell someone to be quiet. So when Yeshua said, I rebuke you or we bind you, we're just telling that spirit, shh, hush. And because of the authority that we have, they have to obey that's the part where i also need everybody's faith to grow i need your faith to grow that when you speak they listen evil spirits have to listen be quiet loneliness right now grief be quiet sadness hush don't say nothing else what i bind on earth is bound in the heavens in the spiritual realm hush and right now we release or we lose peace joy we, we, we release contentment we, we release right now god's goodness right now the holy spirit is just filling your space he's filling your room and he's letting you know you're not alone alex alex just a liz many others in this chat you're gonna have a good day you're gonna feel his presence with you all day i speak that I declare it in the name of Yahshua. Sister Summer said, please pray for Savannah's heart. She soften it to forgive. We also pray for Brother Peyton that he'll come to the Lord. And so by faith, Lord, we know that you're going to send laborers. By faith, I know that you care about Brother Peyton. Summer is praying. We're staying with Summer. We come in agreement with Summer. That you're going to send somebody into his life. I don't care if you send it to him, Lord, through TikTok, Instagram, you send it to him on Facebook, or it's just somebody at his job. Send laborers to help him see how good you are. Lord, allow salvation to enter his home. Lord, stand at the door and you knock. Please. Lord, let's let Savannah see what grace looks like. 
Lord, give her revelation knowledge of grace. Lord, allow a situation or something to happen in her life where she understands that she has to forgive. That you, you're forgiving God. That you let stuff go. Lord, that, that she has to let stuff go. Please. 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 Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in their lives. Thank you, Lord. Liz, we say that your daughter's home, I think you said, is complete. And now they're moving in. So we pray over the family that they, they have a blessed life in this new home. I pray in the name of Yeshua that all things, all things, everything works according to the will of the Lord in this new home. Lord, bless that home. Put angels around that home. Anoint that home. Lord, we give that home back to you. Whatever you want to do in that home, bless it. Bless it. Whoever you want to send over as, as guest, Lord, bless it. Lord, in the name of Yeshua, bless her son, bless their health, bless their finances, go before them, and we trust you with her new career. I know she's listening. I know Liz is listening, Lord, to whatever it is you want her to do, and she's open. She's open. Liz, say, I'm open, Lord. I'm open to whatever you want from me. I'm just waiting on you now. Lord, I've done my part. I've asked. I'm looking every day. I'm looking every day. I'm knocking on doors. Lord, I'm waiting on you to open the door. I'm waiting on you to point me in the right direction because I trust you. I know that you got something in store for me. That's faith. That's trust. Lord, I thank you for moving in her life. I thank you, Lord, for showing her. She's open. She's, she's open to wherever you want to show her. She's open. She'll go right now if you told her to get up and go. Do it. Do it for her, please. User 0648 said, pray for my daughter that she would come out of that lifestyle. Thank you. So, just so we're clear, I'm not afraid of any devils. I'm not afraid of, of those letters. I'm not afraid of, of saying certain things. But I want to stay on here. So, we... We're going to be wise as a, a snake or a serpent. We're going to be cunning. And so the way that I like to say it, just so we're clear, for your family members, for your sons and daughters, we pray that the Holy Spirit, and the Lord knows what we're getting ready to say, and the devils know what we're getting ready to say. Lord, everything that's crooked, make it straight. Lord, everything that's crooked in her daughter's life, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Make it straight. Lord, rearrange those alphabets and put them in order. Make them straight. Lord, the, the, the letters are out of sequence. Put them in order. Make them straight. Every evil spirit in her daughter's life that's not of God, every evil spirit that's misappropriated every evil spirit in her life that's a distraction every evil spirit in her life that's rebellious every evil spirit in her life that's disobedient see I just covered it all you know who I'm talking to stop 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 come on just stop and I, I trust you Holy Spirit that you're going to just work in her life she asked for this. So I'm standing with mama right now. I'm standing with mom right now. That, that Every mom and dad in this chat who wants their daughter or son out of that lifestyle. We stand with you right now. Yeah. We come in agreement, Lord, that you have the power to start shifting their heart. They don't even want that anymore. That don't even make sense to them anymore. They're going to come to themselves and have an aha moment. That what am I doing? Now, come on. Who wants to agree with me right there for their sons and daughter? Crooked Road Straight. That's the prayer. We stay on this app. Crooked Road Straight. Crooked Roads Straight. Lord, make every crooked road straight. We come against a spirit of disobedience and rebellion. I come against a spirit of curiosity. I come against spirits of lies and manipulation. Every crooked road straight. Every crooked road straight. Lord, turn their heart. Turn their heart. Lord, send laborers, someone maybe who have been there, who's come out of that and now said, listen, let me help you with a sincere heart, with a loving heart. Send laborers 
Come on, send laborers. Send laborers, please. YH, WH, Father, Father, Father. There's a lot of people, and I'm not even at the bottom of the chat. There are a lot of people in this chat who's concerned about their sons and daughters on the crooked road. Will you please, 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 please do us a favor and get them on the straight path? Please. I come against a spirit of arrogance. I come against a spirit of pride. I come against a spirit of haughtiness. I, I come against a spirit. <sighs> hmm. it's, it's many spirits. There's so many spirits with that. And each in its own way has, can, can show itself. And so you know what your sons or daughters are going through. You can call certain spirits out stronger than the others. Our prayers straight we bind a spirit of rebellion that's a rebellious spirit you're just rebelling you it's a wicked disobedient spirit stop and we're, we're going to speak into their life god's love god's perspective god's truth god's foundation god's knowledge we speak it to every child's life right now whether they want to receive it or not we speak it we loose it in the heavens we walk among scorpions and snakes and we don't get touched. In the name of Yeshua. Straight thinking. Solid thinking. Disciplined thinking. Straight thinking. Solid thinking. Disciplined thinking. A sound mind. A disciplined mind. A sound mind. A disciplined mind. We speak into the light. Come on, speak this over your sons and daughters, nieces, nephews. You may know somebody that, that's there. Lord, a sound mind, a sound mind, a sound mind. Oh, a sound mind. Yeah, when you get around them, just silently pray. Lord, a sound mind. Crooked road straight. You crooked, rebellious road, you're going to get straight. Sound mind, sound mind, sound mind. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that, sister. Thank you. Next prayer request this morning. I see everybody's joining. This is awesome. I'm gonna get through these. I'm gonna move quicker, quicker today. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to stay on task, but I'm gonna let the Holy Spirit speak. Is, is that okay? Sister Monica said I hadn't used alarm clock in years too. That's good. Sarah, good to have you. Pray with us. We're just here to pray. All right. I'm just scrolling here. I don't want to miss anybody's prayer request. Sister Crystal said prayers for healing, marriage, restoration, financial stability. Lord, I I need you to continue to, to encourage her. I need you to continue to, to give her mercy every day. That's my that's my sister. I want my sister healed completely. I want her finances back to a place where she's comfortable. She has no worries. Father, I'm asking you personally, Lord, you restore her marriage. Bring Jerry home. Lord, continue to work on his heart. Like, we're not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua. We, we know the power that it has through salvation. Lord, Send laborers into his life, new laborers, old laborers, people that he hadn't seen in a long time. Lord, we know that you set the dominoes up just right. We, we know that you put the chess pieces on the board in the way that you want them to go. Our ways are not your ways. Our thoughts aren't your thoughts. And so you are in control when we pray. We acknowledge you. We, we allow you to move in his life. Full restoration. Her health. Her marriage. Her finances. Lord, continue to bless Lord Grady. Lord, continue to allow Sister Crystal to be the mom you called her to be with the love and compassion that you had. Lord, give her the patience and the love and the joy to be everything Grady needs in this season. Lord, I pray, I pray that their bond, their relationship would continue to grow, Lord. That she that she would be 
his confidant and that he would, would lean in on his mom and, and be able to, to just trust her. As he grows older, he hits 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, Lord, their bond as mom and son would be tightened. In the name of Yeshua, I pray that over your life, Crystal. Monica said, I get a nudge. I hear a noise. My spirit wakes up. Here, here's the wakes up. Same thing, Miss Monica. Same thing. All right. All right. Uh, 0914 said, this is Sister Michelle. She said, continue to pray for Michael's heart. Restore our marriage. Pray for our daughter, love in our home. Lord be with us all. Lord, I know you're moving. Because we've been praying. We, we've been praying the prayer of trust and confidence, the prayer of expectation. Yeah, the prayer of expectation is simply, or faith is, Lord, I know you're going to do it. Michelle's faith is strengthening. Lord, I'm, I'm asking you, Lord, that she continues to hope. She continues to love. She continues to believe. She continues to put all her trust in you for her marriage, for her daughter, for their home. We speak love into that home. We speak love into that home. We speak reconciliation into that home. We speak forgiveness into that home. We speak that who the sun sets free is free in that home. Who the sun sets free is free in that home. He set everybody free in that home. Son, wife, daughter, free. Free from hurt, free from pain, free from misery, free free from mistakes, free from I told you so's, free from you messed up last year. We're free. We're going forward. We're hitting the reset button. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, give her peace. Give her peace. Every day his mercy is new. Every day you get a new day of peace, a new day of joy. I don't have to use yesterday's peace. I get some brand new peace today. Bless them peace be in that home I declare it I need one or two people to agree that we send peace to Michael and Michelle's home in the name of Yeshua Sister Sarah I see you have some questions on here I'll answer your questions privately later we just want to right now just if you would pray with us if you see a prayer request in the chat uh, this is this is our morning prayer line, and so we ask respectfully that you just, if you could, just pray with us. Keep your chats to to prayer requests and hallelujahs and thank yous and testimonies and scriptures, even if you will. Next prayer request this morning. Christina said, "Pray for the aggressive drivers out there. There are." We ask that the Lord keep everybody safe in this chat. I ask that the Holy Spirit would watch over everybody in this chat who, who drives daily, who, who has to go here, there, to and fro. I pray that the Holy Spirit put angels around your car, extra angels. We already have guardian angels. It's in the scripture if you don't understand it. Uh, angels are amongst us. Can't see them. Spirits, evil spirits are amongst us. We can't see them. Some of them you may have even entertained unaware because you don't know them. You can't see, like they don't walk around saying angel, demon, but they're amongst us. Lord, will you, will you protect everybody on the roads with some extra angels? Lord, don't let anything happen to their cars. We ask that you keep everybody safe from distractive drivers, that you keep people away from aggressive drivers, I come against a spirit of rage and, and frustration. I come against a spirit of, of hostility. I come against impatience. A spirit of, of impatience that tries to jump on people when they start driving. Things aren't moving fast enough. Talking to other cars and drivers, they can't even hear you. I, I, I just pray for patience. I speak patience. For all of you out there that are hasty when you drive I pray for you yeah I pray for you you know who you are it's okay God forgives us for every sin confess your faults one to another so you can receive healing I pray for patience quit hitting the steering wheel quit talking to the next driver slow down 
slow down, follow the speed limit, follow the laws of the land, follow the laws of the land. Some of you try to beat the, the, the number on the GPS. It says you'll get there at 5 o'clock and you determine to get there by 4.50. I pray over us. Patience. Patience. That's fruit of the spirit. That, that's a test of your own faith. That, that's an indication of where you are in your own faith, even just in your driving habits. Patience. Patience. No condemnation, just love. Thank you, Christina, for that prayer. Sister Fox said, got my heart results. Doctor said the beat's a little high, but he doesn't see any issues so far. Well, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. We've been waiting on the right diagnosis. And more importantly, we've been asking God to heal you. We, we've been asking the Holy Spirit to start the healing process. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for what you're doing in Sister Fox's life. I thank you that you are moving in her life. I thank you for increasing her faith i thank you for stretching her faith i thank you for the work that you're doing where you're teaching her to trust you i thank you so much lord for the results i thank you for her body starting to heal and mend i thank you in advance lord for removing her anxieties and her fears because now she, that's not an issue so that's one off the list no longer have to worry about what's going on with my heart Lord, give her the strength she needs daily some of us just need strength. I just need strength to get through the day. I need strength in my body. I don't want to feel achy. I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to feel the inflammation. I want to be able to go from one room to the other room without completely getting ready to pass out. Lord, will you continue to send your healing power? Lord, here's what I know. I know it's your will for us to be healthy. I, see, that's where I, the, I'm going to stand on that. I need two or three to stand on the fact. He wants us to be healthy. This is will for us to be healthy. He healed everybody he came across. He healed, listen, he healed every, there's not a scripture in the story where I found where Yeshua said, no, I'm not going to heal you. You're going to stay sick the rest of your life. I can't find one. I can't find one instance where someone came up to Yeshua and said, I'm sick. My daughter's sick. I'm blind. I'm paralyzed. And he said, no, it's, it's my will for you to stay a paralytic the rest of your life. It's, it's my will for you to be blind the rest of your life. I can't find it. I can't. He healed everybody. I stand on that truth. I stand on his word. I will not be deceived by the enemy. I will not be deceived by modern medicine or even churches who try to say, well, the Lord's will is for you to stay sick. No, no devil. I won't, be, I won't believe that. I won't accept. I need someone right now to accept this. Come on. You need to change your thinking. You need to change your belief system. You need to change the way that you see the Lord. His will is for you to be healthy. His will is not for you to take 16 pills, nine pills, and this pill may interact with this. That is not his, that is not his plan. No, no, keep taking your medicine, keep going to your doctor, keep going to your therapist. God is going to heal. They're going to be the one to prove you're healed. Just like he did with Sister Fox. You're good. Let the doctor tell you you're healed. Let the Holy Spirit confirm it to you. But that's not his will. So Father, I pray right now over everybody in this chat who was convinced somehow or the devil deceived them somehow, or uh, they've come to their own understanding that maybe this is just the way it has to be. This is just who it is. It, this, it is what it is, Ken. I, I, I gotta, I'm going to have heart issues my whole life. I'm going to be a diabetic my whole life. I'm going, that's not his will. It's not. I don't believe it because the word says he healed all of them. Father, according to our faith, according to what we believe, I'm asking you to increase everyone's faith in this chat right now, an extra level, right? Just right now, an extra level, an extra anointing, an extra stretch in their faith that that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to be. 
I, Lord, right now, I need someone to change, start, start their thinking to think that they, they don't have to be a diabetic. They don't have to have high blood pressure. They don't have to have COPD. They don't have to have HIV. Like, that's not his will for me. Lord, I, I pray right now in this chat that someone will receive that they don't have to have migraines. They don't have to deal with the, the inflammation. They don't have to. So the, the lie of the enemy, the, the great deception of the enemy is to get on TV and say, when you get older, you're going to start feeling sick. No. The minute you believe it is the minute that you know the Lord can't do anything with you. It's according to you. The minute someone says, you know, when you start getting 40, 50, and 60, your body hurts. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're back. The moment you accept the lie, the moment you accept it, the Lord said, well, that's what you believe. So I can't, I can't, I can't do anything with your beliefs. I believe, let me tell you what brother Ken believes going into 50. I'll be 49 here in a few months. I've already told the Lord, Lord, at, at 60, I still won't be playing basketball. At 60, I believe I'm going to still be in there lifting weights. At 60, I'm going to be able to, to still run a, a mile. May not be able to do it in 10 minutes. Maybe at the age of 60, I'll run a mile in 15 minutes. But I believe that my body is going to be healthy and well. I believe that I can, I can cut back on the extra sugars and, and the processed foods. I believe that I can do better by trying to find the things that are out there that are healthy for me. I believe, Holy Spirit, that you will keep me, but you'll give me the wisdom and the strength. I believe I don't, I don't have to have Alzheimer's like my family lineage. That curse is broken. I, I don't have to have migraines every other month. Because it's just in the family. I don't have to have high blood pressure just because it's in my family. I don't have to have heart disease and, and, and diabetes just because it's in the family. Yeah, my family members have that stuff. I, my belief is just different. I have a belief, but, but yo, you know, you pre diet, predisposition for it. You know, it runs in the family. I don't believe, I don't know about y'all, but the Lord did something different with me. I just believe it. I trust it, but I'm also going to seek. I've asked, now I'm seeking and I'm knocking. Lord, show me, show me, but I won't accept it. I'm not gonna accept, why would I, why would I accept a diagnosis that hadn't even been diagnosed yet? Why would I let someone else speak over me something that's not even true? Well, you know, your whole family has, so what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you speak that over my life. Well, you know, your, your grandpa, oh, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you speak that over my life. Your words have power, and whether you know it or not, you just tried to curse me. You, you just tried to, you literally cursed me. You're probably going to end up like your daddy. No, I'm not. You, you're probably going to, you know, it runs in your, I bind that, that spirit right there. Yeah, you, you just got a revelation. I bind the spirit of it runs in your family. You don't get to speak that over me ever again. That's a curse that we've been deceived to accept. We've been deceived. Oh, Holy Spirit is dropping wisdom this morning. We, we've we've slowly set into a, 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 a pot like a, that frog analogy, slowly turning up the heat and you don't even know it. You, you, you've you been sitting in this pot this whole time with the belief that it just runs in your family. It just, but, but Ken, it does. Okay, if that's what you want to believe, it's according to your faith. Do you know Yeshua said that? It's according to your faith. It's according to your faith. What do you believe? Who's, whose report will you believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord that says, by his stripes, I'm healed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. The joy of the Lord is my strength that every scorpion, every snake, I can walk amongst them and not be injured. I can walk amongst diabetes. I can walk amongst high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer. I won't accept it. Prostate cancer runs in your family. Okay, that's good. That's good that it ran in my family. It stops now. I plead the blood of Yeshua right now over myself and over everybody in this chat where prostate ran in your family. I, I, I plead the blood of Yeshua right now it will not harm you. It will not touch you. Every male in your family, I need you to believe this according to your faith where two or three people come together and they believe this, 
The Lord says, I look at your belief system and it, I'll answer. What do you believe right now? Well, you know, breast cancer runs in our family. You better, you better cut that right now. You better sever that right now. You better change your belief system. You need to say out loud, it stops. I'm not getting it. My daughter's not getting it. My grandbabies aren't getting it. And even when I'm gone, the Lord don't come back and get us. My great, 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 great grandbabies will not have breast cancer. They will not have prostate disease. My, my grandbabies will not have heart issues. My grandbabies won't have high blood pressure. My grandbabies will not have, like you have to believe it and speak it. Who the son says free is free indeed. That's just not your soul salvation. That's your health. That's your mental. That's your emotional. Mind, body, soul. Mind, body, soul. Mind, mental, body, physical, soul, emotional. Who you are, the core of your belief system, your essence, who make what makes you you. Father, I pray right now. I pray right now. I, I got off on a tangent again. I'm so sorry. Let me get back to the prayers. I pray right now over everybody in this chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm being led by the Spirit. I get it, but I got I to gotta hear the Spirit. I got to be obedient to what I'm hearing. I pray for everybody in this chat who, who received a false expectation of their family health. I, I pray that you would course correct. I pray right now, and I come into agreement with everybody who is now saying, I I didn't realize that. I didn't realize I accepted that curse by saying where well, it runs in my family. We reverse the curse. It don't run in our family. They stop running in our family. It's, it stopped running in our family with me. Lord, I pray for everybody right now in this chat who wants to take that next step in their faith, take that next step in their journey, that it, it, it stopped running in my family with me. Come on, say that out loud. Oh, oh. And I'm not saying, like, we're not some crazy belief system, some, you know, uh, this religious groups who just speak things and think. Uh, this is scriptural. Who the sun sets free. Where two or three come together and agree on anything. What we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. You can walk among scorpions and snakes and they will not hurt you. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Salvation is ours. Authority is ours. Power is ours. The kingdom of heaven is ours. It's ours. It's ours. Who the son says free is free indeed. Do I need to keep saying these scriptures? Let me put these in your heart. Can I wash you with the word? No weapon formed against you will prosper. All things work together for good. I know the plans I have for you. They're to prosper you. They weren't meant to hurt you. You have a hope in the future. Do you know that you're somewhere in the future? You look way better than you look right now. Do you know that the Lord has set you up on purpose, with a purpose? Yeah, your life isn't a mistake. Your life didn't go down this path by accident. Your health is your health. The Lord said, I can heal you. I can deliver you as long as you believe that you don't have to stay here. You don't have to have arthritis. You do know that, right? The, the Lord has put his herbs, his fruits, his vegetables on this earth naturally. You don't need to take Tylenol PM. You don't need to take Tylenol. You don't have to. The, just with a little bit of wisdom, with a little bit of asking, a little bit of seeking, a little bit of knocking. Don't put it in this chat because we don't want to turn this chat into it. Here's what works for me. This is prayer. But I'm asking the Holy spirit right now to show you to give you the wisdom to put in your mind what to google what to search for on tiktok naturally lord lord make us uncomfortable with medicine oh lord make us uncomfortable with the five pills we gotta take lord make us make us feel the fire of your holy spirit to come down on us and heal us of all diseases lord help us not to settle with man's diagnosis no i appreciate doctors i have doctors in my family i i appreciate the nurses i have nurses in my family we're grateful for everybody in this chat who's in the medical field but thank you for the diagnosis thank you for the information now i can go to my doctor the great physician i i can now go to my therapist and ask him for a second opinion 
the only opinion. Oh, this is good this morning. Lord, what's your opinion? What's your opinion? I'm listening. Is it your will for me to be sick my whole life? No. No. How can I serve you if I'm sick? How can I witness if I'm sick? How, how, can, how can I be a light if I can't even get out of bed and get to the next room? I know it is your will for me to be healthy. I need somebody to believe that. I need you to believe that the curse is broken. I need you to agree that it stopped running in your family. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God bless everyone who, who accepts this revelation. May God restore to you and your family an anointing a hundredfold. May you, may you take that and tell the next person it stop running in our family you know that right next time you're at the family barbecue we got july 4th coming up and somebody gonna bring it up but you know it stopped running in our family wait when did this start it stopped because who the son says free is free indeed we overcome because of the blood of the lamb where two or three people agree he said he'll do it he said keep asking keep knocking keep seeking he said it was according to your faith, according to your belief system. And my belief system is that I don't, I don't have heart disease. I'll never get heart disease, ever. I won't ever get cancer. No, no, I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm, trust, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. And even if I do, I'm going to beat it. It stops. It stops. It stops. It stops. Come on, in the name of Yeshua. I, I stand against these enemies, these devils. And for everybody who's already sick, listen to me, listen to me, because there's two pieces to this. I'm not ignorant to the fact, the fact that some of you have already sick. We got people on our sick list with cancer and lupus. I got people on our sick list dealing with all kind of issues and diabetes. We trust the Lord that your belief system will help you be healed. Keep going to get that chemo. Keep going to your dialysis. Keep, keep listening to the information that the doctor's giving you, but also believe that the Lord is healing you. Lord, I pray over everybody in this chat who's been sick, been diagnosed. They've been told that this is, this is the prognosis. But you heal. Come on, Lord, heal me. That's all. That's I believe, Lord, you, that you are a healer. Heal me. Lord, I'm waiting on you to heal me. I'm seeking you to heal me. I'm knocking on the door. I'm asking you to heal me. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Come on. I believe you're going to heal me. I know you're going to heal me. I know you're in the process of healing. Like complete healing. Cured. Cured healing. Not temporary relief healing. Cured healing. I need a cure. Father, I need a cure. I need a cure. I need a cure. Lord, I pray right now over everybody's systems. If you're in this chat and you need this, just say, Lord, I agree. Lord, I pray right now of everybody's nervous systems. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that the nerves send and receive the right messages up and, up and down the body. Lord, I pray over everyone's circulatory system right now, their heart, their blood vessels. Lord, I pray that they get the right nutrients transported through the blood, the right oxygen and hormones flow correctly through the blood. Lord, I pray over everyone's respiratory system right now, Lord, that the oxygen and carbon, di carbon dioxide flow correctly, that the oxygen comes in and the right carb carbon dioxide flow out. Lord, I pray over everyone's digestive system right now. In the name of Yeshua, I speak healing and health that foods would process the right way, that energy would be stored the right way, that we eliminate waste the right way, Lord, that you would move in people's digestive seats, heat, digestive system. I speak the healing power of God. Lord, I speak to everybody's muscular system, Lord, that they would have the right movements and relaxations in their bones and their muscles and, and their flesh, Lord, and their joints. In the name of Yeshua, Lord, I pray over one's skeletal system, Lord, they would have the right structural support in their cartilage and their ligaments and their tendons, Lord, that they would get protection in their body. They would get the right proteins and they would get the right irons and nutrients to flow correctly. Lord, I pray for everybody's uh, immune system, Lord, that the body would defend against pathogens and foreign invaders in the name of Yeshua, Lord, that you would naturally 
strengthen the immune system, Lord. Allow the red blood cells to carry oxygen through the lungs and through the body the way it's supposed to. Allow the white blood cells, Lord, to fight infection the way it's supposed to, Lord. Allow the lymphonites and the monocytes, I said some of these wrong, you guys forgive me, to have the right immune response. In the name of Yeshua, I'm speaking to your bodies. I'm speaking supernaturally to your, your systems. I'm speaking that the body that the Lord created will come into alignment the way he created it. He didn't make any mistakes when he made Adam and Eve. He didn't make any mistakes when he created the body. Lord, I'm asking for a restoration in our bodies. I know it. We all have to go. We all have to see you one day. But Lord, not unto pain. Lord, I would love to just to go in my sleep at the age of 89, 91. Did you just take me home? I don't want to end my life because of some sickness, because of pneumonia, because my lungs aren't healthy. I speak right now to your platelets for all wound healing. I, I speak to your hematopoietic that it would replenish the blood population correctly. I'm just going off some notes I wrote down. Forgive me if it, it sounds wrong. I speak right now to all the men here that the Lord would balance your testosterone. I speak to all the women here. So the Holy Spirit would balance your estrogen and your progesterone. I speak right now in the name of Yeshua that the Lord would regulate our adrenaline and our cortisol, that he would, would regulate the melatonin and the serotonin and the dopamine. I, I speak right now in the name of Yeshua that our GABA and our glutamate would, would regulate. I, I speak right now in the name of Yeshua over every part of your body. Come into alignment. Come into a listen. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I speak right now that you eat healthy. I speak right now to your life that God would give you the wisdom and the, the, the strength to start exercising, to do something with your body. I speak right now over your heart health, your colorectal health. I speak right now over men's prostate health. I speak over heart health. I come against the spirit of diabetes that your blood glucose would get to where it needs to be and your hemoglobin A1C will get to where it needs to be. I speak right now over your liver health. I come against hepatitis C and all the other diseases that the devil may try to bring. I speak right now that your your creatine levels would get to where they need to be in your kidneys. I speak right now that your EFGR levels would get right. Come into alignment with the word of the Lord who the sun sets free is free indeed. I speak it, I declare it, I walk in it. The authority given to us. We can walk amongst scorpions and snakes and not be injured. I can walk amongst these things in the name of of Yeshua, I pray that everyone gets the screenings that they need to get at the age that they need to get them. That we can we can be wise in our in our dealings. I come against a spirit of stress in the body that causes adrenaline to cause other parts of the body to ache and to pain, and your stomach start hurting every time you hear bad news. Your head start hurting every time you, you you hear bad news. I come against a spirit of stress. I come against high blood pressure and heart disease. I come against damage caused to the body because we are overwhelmed and overstimulated. I bind the spirit of overeating. I, I bind the spirit of not getting enough sleep at night. Some of you. You just need to go to bed at nine o'clock. That's the healing right there. Turn the TV off. Put the phone down. Be obedient to the spirit of your body saying, get some rest. It's one o'clock in the morning and you're still scrolling. Be obedient. Put the phone down. Who said you had to watch the news? Who said you had to stay up that late? Go to bed. Get you some rest. Let your body heal. Your body needs at least six to eight hours to restore. Do you know our bodies would heal itself if we just got the right rest? Did you know that if you just, just maybe got a nap in the middle of the day? Well, I don't take naps. You need to take a nap. If you get a chance, take a nap. You go to your car on your break. For those of you that work at home, set your alarm. You still use an alarm? I know. Lord, wake me up in 15 minutes. Lord, wake me up in 30 minutes. Lord, may we do right by our bodies. I bind arthritis. I bind diabetes. I bind all type of issues that the enemy may try to say this is going to make it difficult. In the name of Yeshua. 
in the name of Yeshua. Come on. Who agree? Who who do you agree with anything that I'm saying today? Come on. Some of you just need to get enough water. You know you don't drink enough water. You should be drinking six to eight of those eight those uh, uh bottled waters a day. Six to eight. Come on, receive this. Practical, practical faith. Ken, I'm not drinking enough water. I'm drinking juices and sodas. I speak, I speak right now, just encouragement on your soul. You be intentional. That the Lord will give you a plan. He put it in your phone if you have to. I speak into your life right now. Better health. I speak into your right into your life right now. Better health. Your stomach's been hurting, but you're not drinking enough water. Your head hurt, but you hadn't even got your eight ounces, eight glasses of water, six glasses of water, and you're wondering why your body can't flow and function the way it needs to. Oxygen needs to flow up and down your body. Your your system needs the help of you. I pray right now. That you're gonna get the rest you're supposed to get. You got a new bedtime. You got a new bedtime. You're gonna go walk, you're gonna eat before six o'clock, and then you're gonna get in the bed. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua. Let me move on. I I I need to get to all these prayers. Lord forgive me. Lord forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you're just now joining us, this is morning prayer. We pray every Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Central. We're going into hour two. We have an entire family member team of individuals in this chat waiting for you to put your prayer request in the chat. They're praying for you silently at home, at work. I'm praying for you out loud. I'm just a facilitator. Brother Ken, that's all I am. Been in ministry for 30 years, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, we're moving by his spirit. I pray that you can sense the spirit. I pray that you can understand that it is by his spirit that we live, we move, we have our being. I, I pray that whatever you're dealing with in life, whatever it is you're faced with, whatever's causing you troubles, whatever's keeping you up at night, whatever's bothering you, we give it to the Lord. We, we give him all of our issues, all of our cares, all of our worries. It's his. It's not my problem. It's his problem. And so we have a conversation. This is just a common. You're going to notice as I'm praying, I'm just talking to the Lord like I would talk to anybody else. He's my friend. He's my comforter. He's my savior. He's my deliverer. So he's all those things to me. So I, I just have a, we have a different type of conversation. So, Father, as I go back into prayer, please forgive me if I missed any of the prayer requests because it jumped on me. And so if I. I'm going to get to every prayer request in this chat. If you got to go, you got to go. We're still going to get to your prayer. If you got to go to work or you, you're just stopping by for two seconds, you just want to stop for two minutes to see what this guy's talking about. What's, what's he talking about? Put your prayer request in the chat. You don't even have to stay. You don't need the like button. We don't need any of that. Just, put, just let us pray for you and go have an amazing day in the Lord. Or you can stick around and hear your prayer request. I load all of our prayers on my YouTube channel. So later today, you can just go up to this profile, hit the YouTube, and the prayer will be there. So it's a key, and I had to go. I didn't hear my prayer request get, get answered or prayed for. You can go up to YouTube. It's on there. Every prayer we've ever prayed is on there. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you. Lord, Sister Candy said, I need prayer for my mom's health. Her legs are swelling. Lord, we just prayed over everybody's health. So this covers her mama too. Lord, will you do me a favor? Will you show her mom what she needs to do to cause, to, to help reduce the swelling? I don't know what mom is doing. Does she need to walk? Is it is it inflammation? Lord, you know. You're the doctor. Like you know everybody's bodies. You know everybody's systems. So I, I trust that whatever is causing mama's legs to swell, Lord, you can heal it supernaturally or you can give them the wisdom on what to take to bring that swelling down. In the name of Yeshua, Lord, take the pain away. Take the pain away. Hallelujah. Christina said 30 years ago I was in a car accident. They said I would never eat again or bear children 
Christina, you testify and we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. She said, now I'm healed. I'm healed. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in her life. Hallelujah. Next prayer request in here. Sister Alejandra, my sister, can we please pray for a quiet mind and no overthinking? You know, right now in the name of Yeshua, we take authority over being overstimulated, overwhelmed. We, we take authority over the mind playing tricks on us. We, we, we take authority over the spirit of stress and busyness. And right now, may the spirit of the Lord keep you focused, keep you disciplined. Even those of us who have what the world would call ADHD, I believe that the Lord can give us a sound mind, that he can help those of us with the gift. Oh, it's a gift to be able to do five things at one time. It's a gift. Don't let anyone tell you it's a disability. It's a gift to be able to the Lord allow you to know, here are all the things that I got going all at once and I can get it done. But the Lord will give me control. The Lord will give me some, some organizational skills who give me the ability to hear what has to be done next in his order and his time. And Lord, I pray right now over everybody in this chat who mind roams at night. Mind roams. Lord, settle the minds. May they think about the things you need them to think about. May they write down those tasks that you've asked them to write down. I pray for everybody in this chat who gets to a point where like, oh man, there was that one thing that I was supposed to write down. Was I, supposed to, I was supposed to do it. Lord, give us wisdom to get our phones out and send ourselves a text message the moment we think about it. Lord, give us organizational skills. Lord, give us the discipline. to do what you want us to do. Quiet our minds. Quiet our minds. And even right now as I'm saying this, the peace of God which passes all understanding is coming into some of you. And he's putting a guardrail around your mental and your emotional. I come against a spirit of stress. I come against a spirit of being overwhelmed. I come against all of the enemy's distractions. Some of you got seven and eight things on your plate. I got to go take care of this. And I got to make sure mama's right. And I got to make sure that the kids school is this. And I got to go over here and check on my own health. And then I got this going on on my job. And then I got to make sure that the kids school sports is this. And, and slow down, slow down, slow down. Holy Spirit. Be, be my admin assistant. Ho Holy Spirit, organize my day. Holy Spirit, remind me of all things. I bind that spirit of being overwhelmed and overstimulated. You don't have to be. Not if you let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. I pray right now, everybody in this chat, everybody, everybody gets this one. Peace. Peace about your day. Peace about your busyness. Peace about all the stuff you got to do on your Oh, you have so much to do, Ken. I got so much to do. Or if you knew how much stuff I have to do. You're only going to do it if the Lord allows you to do it. You can do all things as long as he gives you the strength to do it. The joy of the Lord is going to be your strength to do those things. Because it's in him that... <laughs> the reset button oh sister you know it you know it and can we pray for time to not be so harsh i feel like we don't catch a break on earth but listen as long as we have the lord we're good life is going to be challenging but we have his peace life is going to be harsh but we we have his protection he didn't say i'm going to keep you from the arrows not hitting you they're still shooting the arrows they just won't prosper they won't have an end result. I'm going to get through my life a victor. Yesterday, we said we have the victory. We've already won. We've already won. 
So I'm going through life as a winner. I'm going through life as a champion. I'm going through life more than a conqueror. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Lord, I pray for all marriages. Sister Alejandra said, let's hit the reset button. And there's going to be other marriages prayers we're going to pray here in a moment. You're going to see them in the chat. Lord, every, everybody in this chat who's married, who, who knows someone that's dealing with a very challenging marriage, reset it. Fresh. Refresh them. We come against evil spirits of bitterness and hostility and rage. I come against a spirit of disappointment and disgust. Yeah, I see you out there, evil spirits, acting like you hadn't done anything. I, I, I know you. You're a familiar spirit. In this chat, familiar spirit, this just disappointed. And it's okay to have feelings of wanting things to improve. It's, it's okay to, to want more for your marriage, but not to a point where you're disgusted. I bind a spirit of divorce and separation. I, I bind a spirit that says we just, maybe we're just not compatible anymore. I bind that lie, that deception. I, I come against a spirit that says, I just don't like them anymore. I just don't love them anymore. I, I bind a spirit in this chat that, that thinks that it can get away with convincing us that maybe this wasn't the one. It was the one. You got beautiful children together. You, you built a beautiful life. It doesn't just stop because all of a sudden you're not happy. God didn't call you to happiness. He called you to holiness. It's holy matrimony, not happy matrimony. I speak right now the reset button over everybody in this chat who's hit a rough patch. I speak over everyone's life and marriage right now that who the son sets free, he can free you from that hostility. He can fit, free you from the rage. He can free you from the hurt he can free you from the insensitivity he can he can free you from the emotional distress he can free you right now right now it's here love conquers a, a multitude of sin it's here love i'm gonna love you anyway love you through all your faults love you through all your hiccups your mess ups love you when other people can't even love you i love you when you can't even love yourself love unconditional there's no conditions to my love for you come on i'm speaking this into your life if you receive it i speak right now to the life of everybody who's married in this chat that they love their spouse unconditionally all your quirks all the little things that bothered me unconditional there are no conditions that's that that's not a condition for me to love you that you got to stop doing that thing oh i'm here I'm, I'm here come on i need someone to say it out loud i'm here i'm not going anywhere come on tell the, just let the devil know he's been defeated i'm not going anywhere we're gonna work on this they'll work on me come on come on they'll work on me it's not him it's not her it's me they'll work on me Help me to love 70 times 7. 70 times. Didn't put the shoes where he's supposed to. That's one. Didn't take the trash out. That's two. Left the stuff out. Didn't put it up. That's three. 70. I haven't even got to 70 yet. Said something really rude. That's four. Didn't even notice that my, my nails were painted. That's five. Uh, just walked by and didn't say anything. That's six. You haven't even got to 70 yet. He didn't even remember that she didn't remember that today was that's that's eight. I didn't like how he said that to the kids. That's nine. Seventy times seventy is four hundred and ninety. You just don't eat. Well, I can't I don't appreciate that the way that he that's ten. Unconditional. Oh, somebody just got a revelation. But I don't appreciate the way that that's 11. You haven't even got to, to 50 yet. And tomorrow, guess what? It starts over. You, you don't get to start tomorrow with number 11 or 12. The Bible says mercies are new every 
morning. So tomorrow you wake up and he she, he leaves the shoes over on the on the side of the bed again. That's one. Unconditional. Two. Some of you need to quit counting. Some of you need to quit making a list. Throw your list away. We don't count wrongs. So, some of you have put together a, a, a naughty list, a dirty list of all the stuff that he did, she did. You're, you're, you're documenting. Oh, Lord, it's a documenting spirit. What you going to do with the list? Who's the Lord talking to this morning? And it, you don't have to, to, to out yourself. The Holy Spirit does stuff like this. There's many silent prayer requests. There's many people that watch us and the Holy Spirit sends them here and they're like, I don't know why I stopped. I'm glad I stopped because the Holy Spirit knows what we need. Everybody that's keeping a list, everyone who's marking it down, everyone who's trying to, to create a rap sheet. Yeah, you, you, you're trying to create uh, one of those things. You go online and you see someone who's been locked up and you see all the counts. Count one, left the shoes out. Count two was over at his mama's house too long. Count three, I saw him looking over there at that girl's. Count count four, he was rude to me. Count five, I can't stand the way that count six. Throw the list away. Love does not keep list. Love does not count wrongs. You cannot say you love him if you count him wrongs. Holy Spirit, I'm trying. I'm trying to stick to the prayer list today I'm just listening to the spirit will you put your list will you throw the list away whoever I'm t I could be talking to one person right now I, I'm, a, I'm just I hear the Lord pressing me it's a little tension right now it's a little tension in this chat right now because you got a list somebody got a list I heard the spirit say somebody got a list delete it delete it delete it delete it Improve your relationship right now. Stop what you're doing. Leave this chat. Leave your gift at this altar. Leave your prayer at this altar. You go to that room or wherever it's at. Go delete it. Come back. We'll be here. Be obedient to the Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. To grieve the Holy Spirit means to make Him sad. To quench the Holy Spirit means to hold back what He's trying to do in your life. The Holy Spirit is saying, I want to go here. And you say, no, 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 no. I'm going to... I'm going to put water on it. I'm going to bring down what the Lord wants to do. I'm going to slow it down. You are slowing down the move in your marriage, in your life, in your kid's life. Throw the list away. Lord, who am I talking to? I don't know. I'll let you deal with it. In the name of Yeshua, who the Son says free is free. We can do all things through Christ. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. Be free. Come on, be free. Listen. What's the what's the spirit saying right now? All right, I'm gonna keep moving here. Lord, 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 Lord. Ah, this is good. Every morning, or you do something different. Every morning. Sister Nancy Maria is so good to have you here. You're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting the good fight of faith or trust. She's a prayer for my nieces and nephews that they also may have peace from mental health. I pray over your nieces and your nephews and everybody's nieces and nephews in this chat. Lord, that you would stable their minds. Give them good health. Lord, the dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, reset it. Neuroplasticity, reset it. Lord, I know that you can grow neurons back together. Reset it. F Father, will you do this for her nieces and nephews and everybody's nieces and nephews in this chat? Sound mind. Sound mind. I speak a sound mind. I speak a sound mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Lisa, for the prayers. I thank everybody who's praying right now. Shani said we renounce and denounce all family curses. I know that is right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It stops here. I'm just reading chats. Prayer and teaching. Come on. 
Sister Shauna, one of the many nurses in this chat, uh, we pray over all of our nurses. We pray over all our caregivers. We pray over everyone who's responsible for someone else's physical body. Let the Lord keep you, watch over you, and bless you. I'm going to read her prayer request here. She said, pray for Chad to complete healing of his esophagus and that he eats the right foods, Lord. We know that you're healing Chad because we've been praying for Chad. We believe that you will continue to heal him. Lord, strengthen uh, the muscles or whatever the tissues are in his esophagus supernaturally, Lord, and then through the things that the, the nurses and the doctors are preparing for him. We pray for Sani Shamar and Mel Jr., to complete all their class assignments and pass all their tests. Lord, we speak now to every child represented in this chat who's still in school, going to summer school. Even we speak into the fall semester that they do well. Lord, that you anoint them. Help them to remember the things that they need to pass on their tests. Lord, help them to retain information. Lord, give them good study habits. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, I pray for Mel Jr. that he is the leader you called him to be and that you protect him. Lord, I pray for everybody's child in this chat, including Mel Jr. Lord, direct them. Lord, may we as parents put the word of God in their heart so they can hear the Lord, so they can stay on the right track. You said if we raise them up right in the word as they got older, as they matured, they'd come back to the very thing that we raised them for. Lord, I pray for him. I pray for everybody. Every, and we have a lot of children that listen. We have people that stop by. If you're under the age of 18 and you're listening to my voice right now, I'm getting ready to bless you with the Lord's blessing. I pray, Lord, everybody that's listening right now under the age of 18, that you would show them your supernatural anointing, your your blessing, your gifting inside of them. But I pray that you would show them the, the purpose that, that you instilled on the inside of them. But I, I'm asking right now that every child under the sound of my voice would have peace and confidence in who you made them to be. Lord, I pray right now every child in this chat under the age of 18 that they would walk in holiness and righteousness and not be ashamed of the gospel. I pray for everybody in this chat. As a child, if the child isn't listening, the blessing is still there. That your child will be protected from all hurt, harm, danger, accidents, tragedies, disasters, devastations, mishaps, misunderstandings, assaults, lies, accusations, persecutions, Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, ethically, morally, athletically, educationally, relationally, whoever they get with. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ, we pray. I just need two or three to agree with that prayer. Pray for Nikki to carry her baby to full term. Lord, we pray for Nikki and all mothers in this chat that are with child. Protect them, keep them, watch over them, Lord. I need you to do this. Pray for Justin's complete healing stage for jawbone cancer, Lord, completely. Remove all of the cancer. Remove it all. All of it. All of it. Go. Father, I'm asking you. I'm coming to the authority that you've given us. Go. Lord, we pray for male senior. Eyesight. Diabetes, high blood pressure, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, Lord, heal him completely. Give him wisdom. Oh, Mel Jr., I mean, Mel Sr., Mel Sr., I, I pray over you. Lead those soldiers along. Man, if you lead those soldiers along, I pray over my brother. We pray for Mary Young's complete healing in the name of Yeshua. Sister Lulu said, Can you pray? I believe who I am in Christ. I struggle with self-defeat and assurance. Sister Lulu, this prayer is for you and for everybody in this chat. Sister Lulu, I don't know if you're still here. Lord, is Lulu still here? What a what a what a blessing. I mean, let me don't want to lose my spot, but I need to just speak a word to her and everybody here. Maybe she's gone. 
L Lulu, if you're if you're here, will you just quickly put a yes in the chat or a thumbs up? If not, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray anyway. Let me see. Okay, she's here. She's here. Lulu, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you and everybody in this chat who's felt defeated, who looks at themselves in the mirror or on paper, and you're not happy with where you are. Can, can I relate with you for a moment? Can I, can I help everybody in this chat who's, who's looked at themselves at any time and just said, am I even... Am I even where I'm supposed to be? Have I, have I done the things I'm supposed to do? Look at look what I've done to myself. Or well, look what I haven't done. I just want to ask you, first of all, to put your trust in the Lord, that your life is ordained, your life is ordered, your life has been predestined. Everyone who's a Christian, even our mistakes, even our failures, even the things that people do to us, the Lord said, I'm with you. All things are in my hands. Yeah, e even the stuff we, we look at ourselves and say, why? The Lord said all things work together for good. So I want you to first know that you're in the Lord's hands. You're right where God is wants you to be. I, I need you to receive this in your spirit. I need you to hear the Holy Spirit telling you right now. You're right where you're supposed to be. No one, no one made a mistake. You're not off. You're not off track. I need everyone to hear this. This right where Lulu is at. You're not off track. But I feel like I should be doing more. I feel like I made a mistake. I feel like it's just something's off. No, 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 no. That that's a lie from the enemy. We can differentiate his voice versus the Lord's voice because the Lord said I love you I'll never leave you what do we say in all these things if the Lord is for me who can be against me neither life nor death angels demons things that are high things that are, nothing will ever separate you from his love and if he loves you he's going to take care of you and if he's going to take care of you that means you're on track second thing I'm going to tell you Miss Lulu and then I'm going to pray for you and everybody in this chat no one gets to define for you who you are. There's only one person that gets to control you, help you, define you, give you guidance, tell you who you are, and that's Father. And you know what Father thinks about you, Lulu? You know what the Father thinks about all of us? That we are the righteousness of Him. We wear His righteousness and His salvation. We have His truth. He says, I have plans for you and that you're right on track. No one, not even ourselves, gets to define who we are. Guess who we are in Christ Yeshua? We're royalty. Did you know you're a king's kid? Do you know you have all the privileges of, of a king's kid? You have peace in the palace. You have joy in the palace. You have the comforts and the, the, the credibility of a king's kid. Nothing can stop you. You can be whatever you want to be. You have permission to be as, as successful as you want to be the rest of your life. Nothing, I mean nothing, can stand up against a king's kid. You can do everything the Lord has given you the strength to do. You will do everything God has given you the strength to do. You're more than a conqueror because he's inside of you. The Lord said, I live in you. I'm moving you. I have purpose for you. The, the Lord said that I have plans for you to prosper you. The things that have happened to you wasn't meant to hurt you. It was just to make you stronger. The, the, the things that have, have perspired, the things that you feel may be a setback or a delay was a part of my plan to, to make you stronger. Perseverance, character, hope. And I speak right now into Lulu's life and to everybody's life right now. Right now. That the Holy Spirit will just minister to you. Can we take 30 seconds? Lulu, I want you to listen. And this is what I mean by listening. Turn the music down if you have to. 
get to, to a place. I'm going to be quiet for 30 seconds. And I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to just come. And calm you. The next voice you hear, because we've already eliminated, the devil can't be right here right now. And we've asked the Lord to, to put us aside. Let his will be done. So the next 30 seconds, everybody in this chat, I want you to say, Lord, I'm listening. Lord, I want that real relationship with you. I'm listening. Lord, I need to, to draw closer to you. What do I need to do? I'm listening. L Lord, I'm going through a, a rough spot right now. I'm listening. 30 seconds starting right now. I'm listening. I'm listening. Hallelujah. Whatever the Lord just told you all, whatever you just felt in your spirit, that calm, that, that, that sense of direction, make sure you, you write it down, text it to yourself, send yourself an email. Get up right now. Get up right now. Go to the kitchen. Look in that drunk drawer. Get a pen out and then write down on the back of an envelope or something what you just felt. This is what the Lord is doing in our lives. He wants to connect. He, he wants to get us to a point where we hear his voice. That we're confident. We're confident in who he is in our lives. Lulu, I can tell you this. And for everybody that's listening. Your relationship with the Lord is dependent upon your ability to to make him first Lulu and everybody in this chat be intentional about your time with the Lord be, be, be intentional if you were dating someone if you were courting someone if you were, were looking to, to further a relationship with someone you would be intentional you'd be intentional about date nights You'd be intentional about what you would want to get to know about that person. You'd be intentional about some of you. Now I heard that people do background checks and I heard that they go to a no whole nother level in dating. I wouldn't even know what that is. Pray my kids figure all that out. But you would be intentional, consistent about furthering the relationship. This is relationship. I don't even listen. I've said this. I don't even care if you go to a church right now. I don't. I don't. I don't care about the religious confines of man and offerings and seed offerings and come in, join this committee and be in this small group. I right now, right now, it's about relationship. It's personal. It's personal. And I would encourage you, Lulu, and everybody in this chat. Everybody. This is for everybody. Spend more time with him. Have a date night. Have a date night. Put it in your calendar. Thursday night, 8 o'clock. I'm just going to read Proverbs. I'm going to read Romans chapter 8. I'm going to pause after every few sections or so and say, Lord, I'm listening. Talk to me. What, what is this saying to me right now? What are, you, what are you telling me in my life? What am I supposed to do with this word? I'm listening, Lord. And then read a little bit more. You're going to look up and an hour is going to have gone by. You have taken so many notes. Be intentional. 
It's not that hard. We make Christianity so hard in churches. We make Christianity so hard with these beautiful robes that they try to wear and, and put themselves up on a pedestal. It's really simple. It's simple. It's simple. He said, if you draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. If you come near me, I'll come near to you. If, if, if you ask, seek, and knock, I'll come to the door and I'll knock. Lord, I pray right now over Lulu and everybody in this chat that you would move by your spirit. Fill us with your goodness. Show us your hope. Give us confidence in who you are. I come right now against every evil spirit that's in this chat that's trying to make people feel uh, uh, less than, making people feel like they don't know you. I come against an evil spirit that is that's tormented and attacked anybody in this chat to make them think that they're off track, to make them feel like they're not doing enough for the Lord. I come against a spirit of lies and manipulation and deceit of, of anyone because we're all children of the Lord. We're all saved. We're all sanctified. We've been set aside for his work. I pray for Lulu right now that you would bless her exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything she can ask or think. I speak a blessing over her life of hope and purpose. I speak into her life an anointing of God, the kindness of God, the favor of God, the gentleness of God, the hope of God. I speak into your life right now if you could receive this and say, Lord, I receive, I want this. I accept it. Confidence in you. Lord, order her steps that when she goes left, she knows you're there. When she goes right, she knows you're there. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you start whispering sweet nothings in her ear. Holy Spirit, I pray that as she goes amongst the things and the obstacles that face her, she goes into it with full confidence knowing that you never leave her. You're on her side. Lulu, if you say no other scripture, say, Lord, I said, I know you said you never leave me. So I know you're here. I know you're here with me right now. I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here. I have assurance. I have confidence. I have confidence that you're here. Because you, you said it. That's my prayer. God bless you. Thank you for trusting us with, with your request. I want to thank the prayer team. And I want to thank everybody for just praying with us. And for everybody here that's that's agreeing. If you're just now joining us, you came just in time. She said, I have to go. If you're just now joining us, this is morning prayer. We pray every Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Pray for everybody who puts a prayer request in the chat. We have a prayer team of individuals who this is their calling. They wake up every morning to pray for you. They don't know. We don't know who's going to come. There's no order of service. There's no program. There are no rules, no laws, no oaths, no pledges. This is just simply us talking to dad. This is just us saying, daddy, what's up? Daddy, how are you doing today? Now, what's going on in the world? What's all the things? Oh, what's all the things you saw last night? How, how, how can I be of assistance? What can we do for you? It's just a conversation. I want to teach us to have a conversation with the Lord. Yeah. Prayer should not sound so articulate and so well put together that I got to go get a dictionary and a thesaurus and a d degree to understand your prayer. It's a conversation. It's, it's just a conversation. David would say, Father, they're chasing me. They're trying to kill me. Are you going to let that happen to me? Do I look to the hills for my help or are you going to be my help? No, all my help comes from you. My sustainer, my peace. You're my refuge in a time of trouble. He just talked to the Lord like a normal person. I pray that you continue to learn and grow in your faith. All right, let's keep moving here. Let's keep moving here. I got I to gotta get to every prayer request. I got to get to every prayer request. Sister Gracie said, everyone in bereavement, all children, all those in prison, also those in dysfunctional homes. We pray right now, Lord, for everyone who's grieving right now that lost a loved one this week, last week, last month, last year, 
three years ago, five years ago. It still hurts a little bit. They still miss them. Father, will you give peace to that person right now who's who's longing to talk to their loved one? I just want to talk to them. I get it. They're in heaven. I get it. The Lord had his way. The Lord allowed them to leave. It was their time. But we miss them. So will you will you send peace right now? Lord, we pray for all children that covers everybody in this chat. Those in good homes, those in dysfunctional homes, those dealing with issues, those not dealing with issues. I pray specifically for those in dysfunctional homes that you would help mom and dad. If we know somebody in this chat and we're thinking about them right now, I have two or three people in my head right now that I'm saying to myself, they, those kids could do better. Those kids could be better. Mom and dad, the caretakers could do better. Father, will you go see about them? Will you not allow them to have core memories of the mistreatment? Lord, will you not allow PTSD to, to rise up later on? Lord, will you keep them from the trauma of being raised dysfunctionally? Please. Lord, will, you, will, you, will you blind them to the arguing and the fighting and the mistreatment? Lord, I'm asking you personally that you would please protect nieces, nephews, sons, daughters, grandkids, neighbors, friends. Protect the children. And we pray for the parents. We pray for every parent that's dysfunctional. Every parent who's dealt with their own traumatic issues. Every parent who, who didn't get the right understanding. They didn't get the, the manual on how to be a good parent. They got their own issues. We pray for every parent in this chat who's ever yelled or raised their voice, cussed at a child, put that child in a position that made them feel afraid, made them feel frightened, had a child in a situation where they want to leave. Lord, I pray over the parents that they would be healed. I, I pray that your Holy Spirit would not condemn, but help. I pray right now that the Holy Spirit would Correct wrongs. Reveal. Reveal truth. I, I pray right now for every parent in this chat. The Holy Spirit would show you what love should look like. What his discipline would look like. Yeah, we're supposed to discipline children, but not to the point where they're They're overstimulated. They're now stressed out. They're overwhelmed. I'm going to say it. I'm, I've said it before and I feel the spirit telling me to say it again. We bind a spirit of child abuse. We, we come against spirits of beating kids and taking it too far. Going beyond one or two pats. Wearing a kid out. Some of us need deliverance. We need our own deliverance because we were treated that way. You don't even realize it. The spirit of the Lord will have to reveal this to you. Flesh and blood won't be able to reveal this to you only by his spirit. But you were abused. They called it a spanking. They called it a whipping. You got beat. The Lord, the Lord didn't condemn. I mean, the Lord didn't sanction that. But mama loved me. She may have loved you, but she she didn't know how. She didn't get the, the right model because she got beat. And then grandma got beat. And great grandpa got beat. And great great grandpa got beat. And so that curse was passed down. That wrong thinking was passed down. Pinching kids, hitting kids, just smacking them. I bind a spirit of abuse. They're kids. They're kids. We're, we're adults and we make mistakes and no one slaps up upside the head and says, you, you idiot. Can, can you imagine your boss just beating you because of a mistake you made on a report? Or your wife or your husband just beating you because you did something wrong? You're adults. And we make mistakes and don't deserve beating. We should know better. 
We've lived for 40 years and you make, make the same mistake. I said, I'll never do that again. Lord, I said, I'll never do that again. And you make a mistake. And the Lord doesn't beat you. But then we'll take a child whose mind hadn't even developed yet. A child who's still learning right from wrong. A child who, who we say, you know better. No, they, they're still learning. The, the, the brains don't even develop until they're 23, 24, 25. They, the cement finally settles. And all that beating, all that whooping only creates animosity and it, it creates stress. It creates PTSD. And then we wonder why. We wonder why. Oh, help us today. I was in school with a lot of us. We wonder why. Behavioral issues challenges can't keep a job can't keep a relationship and we thought because we beat them out of them it had helped when really they needed the word of the Lord they needed love because love conquers all mess ups all mistakes right now again I feel some tension in the spirit I feel the Holy Spirit moving he, he's telling me to speak it we have to renounce that thinking I come right now Standing on behalf of everybody in this chat who was ever beat as a child, that you would own it. That you confess that yeah, I was I was abused. Now I get it, you don't want to play victim and it made you stronger and uh, you appreciate mom and daddy for disciplining you and we don't have the right disciplines in the schools now and our parents now parents nowadays don't discipline can they, I get all that I get it there is discipline that's needed there is some accountability that is needed but not in a way that's physically harmful Holy Spirit will you speak right now to people will you speak I still love mama. I still love daddy. But they were abusive. It went too far. After the first one or two, I get it. I get it. But it shouldn't have went on that long. I was abused. Come on, on it. And, and part of this healing that's getting ready to happen that the Lord is doing with you right now is getting ready to now set generations free. You're getting ready to break a curse over your family. Of emotional abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse. Because now it's a mind game. Now I don't know if I'm going to get a spanking. Now I don't know the severity of what's getting ready to happen. Because now mentally I'm uh, I'm in a place of what's, what's going to happen. Mama beat me so bad last time. So I just know. I just know. I, so now I lie, I'm going to lie. I'm going to lie because I don't want to get beat like that. Well, see, lo love welcomes and nurtures and offers the opportunity for growth that type of punishment just makes a kid want to leave at 18 uh, that type of and I hope I'm, I'm hope I'm helping I'm not condemning if you were that parent oh Holy Spirit I'm just I'm just being obedient tell me when to stop father am I going down the right path is this helping anybody Two quick deliverances, and we're gonna keep moving. If you're the if you're the parent, if you were a parent, and you went too far, you know you went too far. It went beyond one or two. They got they got the trust me. Even now as adults, if someone tries to correct you and start holding you accountable, and you get it, you know when you get it, you like okay okay I get it I get it I get it. You don't want them to keep going. You get it. I was wrong. My my bad. My bad. I own it. I'm sorry for my attitude. I'm a little in my feelings, but you made your point. I get it. I messed up. That's what adults do. A child gets it. They get it after the first two or three. I made a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. Okay, I made a mistake. Anything beyond that, parents, you need to own it. The Lord wants to set you and your families free. The Lord wants to heal. Your kids will never admit it. They'll never come to you and, and say, Mama, I'm calling 911. You abused me. I, I needed a social worker back when I was a kid. They, they'll never come to you and say that, but 
we're adults now. We, we know we never would do our grandkids that way. We'd never do our kids that way. So if you are a parent and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now, leave your gift at the altar. We'll be here when you come back. Make a note to yourself. Send a text message to your kid. Leave a voicemail. Call them. Yes, but it's 8 in the morning. That's how important this is. That's how important reconciliation is. Call them. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And say, the Lord has been ministering to me. I'm going to ask you to forgive me. I took some of your spankings too far. And it was abuse. It wasn't borderline abuse. It wasn't kind of abuse. Uh, it wasn't if, if you if you were offended abuse. No, it, it was wrong. I own it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's it. No explanations. No, well, but this is how I was raised. And grandpa beat me and mama and them. No, just own it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for any trauma that, that it caused. I'm, I'm sorry for any any harsh treatment or stress that it, it caused like I'm, I'm sorry and if we need counseling we can go to counseling we can set up group therapy family therapist get you a life coach we'll do whatever we need to do I'm sorry if you were the child and mom I mean they like, tore you up you know who I'm talking to right now you got to own it it was it was abuse don't let the devil tell you it wasn't it was abuse and then you got to forgive you got to let it go you got spankings you deserve and there was spankings you probably didn't deserve but all of it may have went too far and you have to release mom and dad it, it, it may be supplanted it may not even be something you thought was a big deal I'm letting you know it's a big deal it's a part of your healing journey it's a part of who you've become who you will become it becomes a part of your, your story arc it becomes a part of your trope or your your narrative that the lord wants to use later in life you can't have any spots any wrinkles any hang-ups any hindrances did it make you stronger perhaps are you are you more disciplined absolutely but i could have probably still been the same person that i am today with some just good love a good talking to Father, I'm asking you right now, in the name of Yeshua, I come, I come authentic, I come honest and open. Moved by your spirit. The spirit should be telling us the same thing. The Holy Spirit's not going to tell me one thing and tell you something different according, based on his truth. True, we're talking about truth, love. I pray right now that everybody in this chat who is on the one side or the other would receive their healing receive their deliverance and father i'm asking that you break the curse but I, I pray right now we break the curse of child abuse i pray we, we we break the curse of mental abuse emotional abuse scaring kids frightening kids i, I come right now binding a spirit of abuse you don't get to stay here no 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 who the son sets free is free right now who the son is set free is free right now you're free from all that you denounce it you renounce it you've moved on you've evolved you changed your thinking you're a different person you're a new creature This is what love is towards even children. I read this scripture all the time about, about marriage relationships. I'm going to read it from the perspective of a parent and a child. Will you receive this? Will you, will you put on your listening ears, your spiritual ear, from the perspective of a parent, a child, or even a grandparent? At the very top of 13, it said, if I had all the gifts in the world, all the languages, could do anything that I wanted to do, could go to the farthest mountains, accomplish all the things in the world, it means nothing if I don't love people. If I helped the people who were poor, was number one on my job, 
I got all these degrees and certificates. If I didn't love others, all this other stuff means nothing. Love toward my child should be patient. Lord toward my children should be kind. Love towards my children should be never envious or jealous. Boastful should never be proud, haughty, walking around the house like you. Love should never be selfish. It should not be rude. It does not demand its own way. Love should never be irritable or touchy when you come home. Love don't hold grudges against the kids. It's not going to hardly bring up and notice every time somebody does something wrong. It's new every mercy is new every morning. Love is never glad about injustice, but rejoices when truth wins out. If you love someone, you're going to be loyal to them no matter what the cost. You'll always believe in them. You'll always expect the best of them. You'll always stand your ground defending them. There are three things that remain. Well, I can even read this. This makes so much sense. It's like this. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned like a child. But when I became a man... My thoughts grew far beyond those of a child. And I put away those childish things. The things that I thought as a child was the right thing. Those things that I thought perhaps was the right thinking. In the same way, we can see and understand only a little about God right now. As we are peering at his reflection in a poor mirror. But someday, someday, we are going to see him in his completeness face to face. Now all that I know is kind of hazy and blurred. But then I'll see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now. So there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest thing you can do for your kids is love them. Let's move on. Let's move on. Lord, I thank you for your, your word. I thank you for speaking to us. If you're just now joining us, this is morning prayer. We pray every morning, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Central. We've been doing this for over a year. The Lord has been with us. He's granted us his mercy, his grace. He sends whoever he wants to send to this chat. We pray for them and they go on. You don't have to stick around. You don't have to stay. If you need a prayer, drop it in the chat. You can go on about your day. These prayers are available on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll upload it. So if you didn't get to hear your prayer or we missed your prayer, you think you didn't get your prayer, or you just want to go back and listen to how we started. This was an amazing prayer so far today. We prayed over a lot of amazing things that the Lord is doing in our lives and so uh, go back and check it out and see if the Lord wants to use you help you uh, this morning I'm going to plug my phone up but thank you for joining us we have a prayer team I don't do this by myself we're a team we're a team we're family I have like 40 sisters and brothers that are in different states and their ministry is to pray for you you put your prayer request in the chat. They're at home praying hard. They're asking the Lord on your behalf to help you. I just have the, the humble pleasure of just praying out loud. All right, let me let me keep going. Let, let's get on out of here. I know I'm behind. I'm going to try to popcorn for about 30 minutes. What that means is I'm just going to say the prayer request, say a prayer, and move on. I'm going to quit commentating. I'm going to, Lord, keep me on, 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 on point. Keep me on message. Help me to be obedient. But I do want to hear your voice. I want to thank everybody for joining us. All right. Where was I? Man, I'm, I feel like I'm so behind. I feel like I'm so behind in these prayers. Angelica said, I need a cure. Lord, Angelica needs a cure. 
She needs a cure. Lord, will you help her? Cure her of everything that's going on in her life. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of the Most High. My brother Andy, I see you out there. We stand in agreement. Lord, thank you for brother Andy. Bless his life. Keep him. Watch over him. Uh, let's see here. I see. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. The Bible says we're two or three agree on anything we, we pray. So you hear me say, I need an, I just need one person, two people to agree. And I see all your agreements. Uh, next prayer request here, Amy for mental healing for me and my family, sister, Amy, I speak over your life, over your, your marriage, over everything that's happening in your life, healing from the most high God. May you feel the supernatural strength of God powering your mind. Right now, let this mind be in you that was in Yeshua. He will keep you in perfect peace as long as you keep your thoughts and your mind stayed on him. I pray right now for your mental health. Everybody in this chat who needs just a little strength mentally. God has not given us a spirit of anxiety, fear, worry, doubt, depression, sadness. He's not given us any of that. That's the enemy. What he has given you is love, power, and the Discipline mind, a sound mind. Lord, will you reconnect neurons, rewire her neuroplasticity, like supernaturally? This is something the Lord has to do. Will you will you allow melatonin and dopamine to balance the way they're supposed to in Amy's mind right now? Will you, will you tell the cortisol and the adrenaline to just, just chill out for a moment and bring her some peace? Like you, you control the the chemicals and the fluids in our body. So at any time you want to, you can do this in the name of Yeshua. Next prayer request here. I need my ears to be restored back to normal, please. In the name of Yeshua. Steph said he needs that. Or she needs that stuff. Lord, will you will you go will you go open up her ears spiritually and physically? I mean, just pop them open. Lord, you you have the power to do this. You have the ability right now, Father, in the name of Yeshua. We claim it. We believe it. We speak healing power. We come into agreement. May it be done. Sister 6038 said, I need a transplant. Every time I'm close to being listed. Something blocks me. Sharosa? Sharosa. Are you still here? If you are, just put a yes in the chat. Lord, I pray over my sister right now, Lord. I know you're in control of her life. Like you don't make those kind of mistakes. Everything that happens to us, even loved ones who go to see the Lord early, that we think is early, it's early. God's timing. Everything that happens to us, even the stuff that we do to ourselves, God says, I saw it already happening. I can still work it out for my good. Lord, I'm asking you that wherever this young lady is right now, that you would give her the confidence and the courage to know that your her life is in your hands. Lord, you know when she's going to get this transplant. You know which donor has to be a donor so the other donor can donate please please open the door the right door at the right time give her courage give her strength give her courage give her strength Lord may she fight another day Lord you have to do that for her in the name of Yeshua next prayer request sister Kim I some of you I get you got to come you got to get to work you got to get to work and I respect that I thank you for praying uh, next prayer request here Sister Haskins you said confirmation Lord I thank you for Sister Haskins I thank you for her grandbabies I thank you that you are protecting her entire family watching over her keeping her but will you do us a favor she said her oxygen is low Lord, why, her, why is her oxygen low? Come on. 
I need you to restore oxygen levels in her body. I need the white blood cells and the red blood cells to flow correctly, the platelets in her body to produce correctly. Holy Spirit, like this has to be supernatural. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Please, 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 please. Restore her lungs, restore her body, restore her strength. I pray for Josiah. He broke his ankle. Oh, how mercy. Lord, restore his body. Heal his body. Completely. In the name of Yeshua, Lord, bless her entire family, her daughters, son-in-law. In the name of Yeshua. So the Hastings, God bless you. The Lord's going to restore you. He's going to keep you. He's going to keep you. I trust him with you. Rosie said, can you pray for my daughter, Michaela? The enemy is attacking her mental. Rosie, I pray for your daughter. I pray for you. I pray for everybody in this chat whose sons and daughters are being attacked by the enemy mentally, emotionally. Lord, I'm asking you, please, please, please. I don't know how I don't know how old Michaela is. Beautiful name. We bind the enemy's attack. We come right now standing on the word of the Lord, the truth of the Lord that says that we've overcome. Because of the blood of the lamb. Lord, I don't know where this Michaela is, where she's at, Lord, but will you strengthen her? Will you, will you introduce your Holy Spirit to her? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to, to comfort? Will you help mom? Will you help mom and Michaela to seek you and to find you? Rosie, I pray over you and everybody in this chat who has a son or a daughter that's dealing with the stress of life and they're overwhelmed and there's some mental concerns, challenges, issues, whatever you want to call it. I'm telling the enemy to stop. I'm, I'm telling the devil right now. I don't have to yell at him. I just take authority. Stop. 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 Lord, reveal to my sister steps she can take, things that they can do, identify behaviors, address things that have gone on in the past. We rebuke the enemy's attack. Heal them. Heal them. Heal her. Lord, a sound mind. A sound mind. A sound mind. Sister Nita said, God needed me to hear this. I'm running ragged trying to help my newborn heal. Oh Lord, help Sister Nita. Lord, you know what her, what's going on with her and her newborn. Give her peace. Give her strength. Give her peace. Give her guidance. Give her peace. Let your love manifest all over her life. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Next prayer request. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. I don't know what part that was. You said it was good teaching and encouragement. I feel like I'm rambling again this morning. I just feel like I was. I'm supposed to be praying and I'm pray ministering or whatever you want to call it. Pray teaching. I don't know. Next prayer request here. I'm gonna keep moving. Sister Shalom said, uh, "Insomnia, insomnia." Listen, I, I truly believe the Holy Spirit has the power, the strength to give us the wisdom, the know-how, the courage to overcome everything that we face in life. So everyone dealing with insomnia, everyone is dealing with the inability to close your eyes. The melatonin may not be where it needs to be. You're looking at sleep aids and sleep studies or whatever is bothering you. This just got you up. You know what got you up too. You know what's on your mind, keeps you up. You, you go to sleep for just a little bit and then you wake up and there it is again. You thought you escaped it and it's still there. I pray that the Holy Spirit, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to calm you, to give you peace, to give you rest. 
Holy Spirit, I need you to regulate chemicals in her body. I'm asking you, Father, if you do me a favor. Would you would you go would you go see about her? Would you see about her? I'm buying the spirit of restlessness, not able to sleep, insomnia. I, I, I come against all of that. Those are attacks. Stop, stop, just stop. And we speak the peace of God, the rest of God, to fall on you. Cast all your cares on the Lord. He cares for you. Come to me, all of you that heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. In the name of Yeshua. Shai said, I told my husband yesterday about how she felt the Holy Spirit. Shai, it's good to have you. Thank you for the, being obedient to the Spirit. We're just following the Lord. We're just listening to what the Lord says. She said, I don't know how to forgive. Just when I think I have the emo and animosity come back. Shai, if, if you would let me, I'm going to come back to you later because there's some, some teachings that we can do some things we can do in our deliverance um but praise the lord for your honesty and your openness i'm a i'm a at the end shy if you're still here if not i'll send you a private message we'll just walk through um some steps in the scripture on how to really just let it go i have some resources we've had these prayers before you can go up here to my profile go to the youtube page even in my, some of the sections i have in tiktok but it, it is a choice, but it's a Holy Spirit choice. You have to obey the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you. He'll help you. The, the, the biggest thing, and I'll teach you another time. We don't have time because I want to stick to the prayers. But, but forgiveness is really about you understanding the grace God has given you. I'm going to just let that settle right there. Did you really receive God's grace? Did, did, did we get to a point where we... We've really understood what salvation is. Like we deserve wrath. You, you deserve discipline. You deserve a beating. You deserve eternal punishment. And everything you deserve, he put off. He forgave you. It's not a big deal to him anymore. Even our mess ups daily, it's not a big deal to him. He's faithful and just to forgive all sins. I live under grace now. I don't sin just because we have grace, but if I were to sin, I'm not. I, he don't. He don't care anymore. His son did everything, and when I understand grace, then I'm able to apply that to other people and say, you know what? He's been so kind to me. I'll I'll pass it along. But I'll help you, sis. Just stick around, Sister Desiree. Or D. Rez, I hope I said your name right. Please pray to restore my 24-year marriage, Sister Diane. Sister Diane, if you're still here and everyone in the chat that needs a restoration of the marriage, it's just got to a point where it just, it's not looking good. I pray for you, and here's the prayer. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, because he has to be the one that does it on both of you. Holy Spirit, move into their hearts and show them what love is. Show them what unconditional love is. Remind them of what unconditional love is. Remind them that they haven't even come close to reaching the limits. Filling up the jar, the bucket of mercy and grace. They're not even close. Not even close into throwing into the, the bucket how much mercy and grace needs to be filled up lord whatever happened in this marriage whatever misunderstandings fights whatever issues or challenges that have come up i'm asking you and this is for her and everybody this is for everybody i'm asking you after all these years for us to just hold on i'm asking you holy spirit to allow us what i just explained to sister uh uh, uh shy about grace that you would show us who are married I said this earlier in the, in the prayer. What love looks like. Unconditional. I pray right now. Listen. That you hit the reset button. That you don't bring it up anymore. And bygones are bygones. 70 times 70. 
It's water under a bridge. A true reset. I pray right now, Sister Diane, if you're still here listening to me, that you would receive a reset. All things are made new. All things are made new. I come against spirits of bitterness and animosity that have built up over the years. I come against a, a, a disgust that has built up over the years. I come against a disappointment that has built up over 24 years. I come against the, the rage and the frustrations that have built up over 24 years. I come up against the unhappiness and the abuse and the mistreatments and all of the hurt that's built up over 24 years. And what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So we cancel it out. It doesn't have that kind of power. It doesn't define the marriage. It doesn't define what love is. Love has already been defined. God has already defined love. Love is patient. I speak the patience of God. I speak the faithfulness of his spirit into your lives. I speak another 24 years. I speak more hope. I speak believing in one another. I speak into giving each other another chance. I speak in hitting the reset button in your marriages right now that you don't really care. I'm not going to bring it up. It's not a big deal. Let's just start over. I speak right now to the marriages and the lives of everybody here that you love your spouse regardless of what they said or what they did. Yeah, it hurt your feelings. They shouldn't have said it. That was really wrong. But I love you anyway. I'm going to shower you with love. I'm going to shower you with so much love and attention and, and adoration. I'm going to buy you gifts, take you out to eat, tell you how much I love you, set up a movie night, go on a walk with you. I know it hurt, but I'm going to love you. I'm going to restore this marriage. And, and just so we're clear, in case the devil didn't hear me, we bind all spirits of separation and divorce. See, separation and say, well, you go sleep over there, I go sleep over here. And divorce says it's final. I, I come against both of those. I, I come a, against a spirit that says we're not going to talk. We're just going to pass each other in the hall. I come against a spirit that says we're not even going to touch feet at night. We're not even going to get cozy at night. I come against that spirit of separation. And you know, you can be separated and live in the same home. You can be separated and, and be right there in the same bed. I bind that spirit of ignoring one another, not acknowledging one another, not saying good morning and good night. And I love, I bind that spirit of separation. You can't stay in this chat. You got to go. You got to keep scrolling. You can't stay here. You got to receive this. I bind you. I rebuke you. I stand against you. I renounce you. I tell you to hush. All evil spirits. We don't fight against each other. Our common enemy isn't one another. The enemy is the enemy. The enemy is the enemy. Oh, and if the Holy Spirit was to really open our eyes up and let us see all of the evil spirits that have conspired against our marriages, our home. Uh, Trina said it before. She said the enemy is attacking families, husbands and wives. So we come against that attack. Yeah, and, and God forbid he allows you to see in the spirit all of the evil spirits assigned to the husband's family, all of the evil spirits assigned to the wife's family, and now you got spirits coming together and saying we cause all this confusion and commotion on this side. Oh, did you? Well, let me tell you what we did to her auntie and her mom and daddy and they're like oh we're gonna get this family no we put a hedge right now a covering protection a refuge and we come against it and now i'm going to loosen to your marriage diane and whether she's on here or not i'm praying in the spirit over her family i can sense it i can feel it i speak love i speak joy i speak patience I speak kindness. I speak faithfulness. I speak self-control. I speak goodness. I speak hope. 
into the marriage, into your marriages, into your marriages. Yeah, everybody here that's ready to just start looking. You, you've given up on, on him or her changing. You've given up on anything getting better. You, you've given up on the fact that perhaps uh, this is just how the marriage is going to be the rest of our lives. We're just going to cohabitate. We're just going to be roommates. Devil, you are a big old lie. That is not the way the Lord set this up. And so we come against that, that thinking. We come against that narrative. We come against even the thought of, of just cohabitating and just getting through till the kids graduate, getting through until, until uh, we get to a point where we can both go our separate ways. We just, if we can just get through this part of our devil, shh, shh, shh. Hmm, the spirit's moving. I speak life into your marriage right now. You're not going to give up. You, you, you're not. You're not. Who the son says free is free indeed. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It, it's in Christ that you live, you move. You have purpose in your marriage. You you guys are a, a power couple. You're a power couple. Your kids need to see what a power couple looks like. Your family needs to see what resilience and endurance looks like. Yeah, they, they thought y'all were going to divorce years ago, but you need to show them that this is what the Spirit of the Lord looks like in the, in the family. Yeah, and nothing's impossible for God. For, with man, man, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but with the Lord... Nothing is impossible. You can look at that mountain over there and tell that mountain, go throw yourself in the sea. The impossible. Lord, I speak into their marriages right now. Sister Diane and everybody here, everybody in this chat that is challenged with living with the person you said you want to be with the rest of your life, I speak his peace, his acceptance, his love, his courage. His motivation, his hope. Flesh and blood is not going to reveal this to you. You have victory. The Spirit of the Lord is letting you know right now, you got this. Ten more years, you got it. Fifteen more years, you got it. Y'all still have another half, 25, 30 years of life to live. You haven't even gotten close. You haven't even got close to experiencing all the things that you're going to experience as a married couple. You're just beginning. You're just getting started. In the name of Yeshua, I pray over you, Sister Diane, and everybody in this chat. Hallelujah. Who the sun sets free? Who did the sun set free? Who the sun set free? That goes for everybody. I'm getting ready to go through the rest of these chats. And if you put marriage in the chat, I pray twice now for marriage. That's the prayer. I'm going to say, Lord, the prayer that I prayed over those marriages I pray over this this family, this group. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. All right, let's keep moving. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I, I have to do better. I'm just listening to the spirit. I feel like I'm behind. Next prayer request. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank everybody. If you're just now joining us, this is morning prayer. We do this every Monday through Friday. Every Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., join us for prayer. Put your prayer requests in the chat. Um, we have tons, like a good 30, 40 people. This is their ministry. This is our ministry. They just want to pray for you. You'll see that Dr. Cam Dow... My amazing, loving wife is our moderator. Her job is to, to, I say job, but in a good way, she helps us. Like, she's so important to this chat. She keeps out the distractors and people who want to come in here and, and troll. She'll also help keep the chat from moving too fast. We don't want the chat moving so fast that people who come in can't get their prayer request in. So she may mute you for just a little bit. It's all out of love. You can keep chatting. You can keep putting your amens in here. Uh, you can keep 
asking for prayer requests. You can keep putting scripture in here, but you, you'll notice that we're just trying to make sure that we get everybody in. So, babe, love you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. I'm just trying to scroll, make sure I got everybody. I see all the prayer requests. I'm just going backwards to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, whew, Father, thank you. He's amazing. I, we have so much peace in the morning when we pray. Life can be so hectic, but when we give it all to the Lord, it's like, okay, I'm good. I was overreacting. I trust him. All right, I found my spot. Thank you. Greg, truck driver, heading for uh, right and left shoulder. Lord, we pray for Greg. Keep him safe. Watch over him. Speak to him through your spirit. Daughter, uh, Tammy said, pray for my prodigal daughter to reconcile with Yeshua and with me. Sister Tammy, we pray over your daughter right now that the Holy Spirit would continue to speak to her that the Holy Spirit would guide her, keep her, and remind her of all things. We also pray for laborers. We pray for, for everybody in this chat who needs a laborer, sons and daughters that need a laborer. Holy Spirit, please, please send the laborer. Send the labor into our daughter's life, Lord. Break all the chains, all the strongholds. Reconcile the relationship. Remove the hostility. In the name of Yeshua. next prayer request i'm just i'm just trying to make sure thank you for your patience i'm gonna get to every prayer request i'm gonna get to every last prayer request in this chat my prayer team our prayer team my family they're already praying for you so you should already feel his anointing his power overcome you you should feel some peace in this chat you, you should feel his love in this chat Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see here. I just, I, I want to make sure. I want to make sure. I want to make sure, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Next prayer request. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, yeah, so I backed up too far. I was scrolling and it went way, way up there to the top. Uh, I'm getting there. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. All right, I'm at uh, Jersey. He at her. I've given up vaping yesterday. Please pray that Jesus takes the aggravation away. First of all, bless you. May the Lord bless everybody in this chat who's made a decision to improve their health, their faith, their growth in the Lord. Um, we don't judge anybody here because we all deal with everything. No one is you know, more holy than the next person. Brother Ken got his own hangups. But it's grace that we live under and it's this love that we get to spread. So Lord, I pray for this sister. We ask that you would bless her. Lord, you gave her the strength. You gave her the uh, the mindset to, to move forward and give it up. So we thank you. We thank you. So we also know that if you gave her the strength to stop, that you also would take away the urges, the cravings, the aggravation, the frustrations, the, the withdrawals, and all the other things that come with this. But I pray for everybody in this chat who's addicted to smoking, vaping, marijuana smoking, cigars, black and mouths, whatever, they're, they're smoking. I would say some other things, but they would put an age restriction on here. Lord, you know what it is that they, they're smoking. Will you, will you set them free? We do that for us. 
You said where two or three people agree together that it could happen. So anyone in this chat with a, a silent prayer, an unspoken prayer, and you want to keep smoke out of your body, I pray for you. I pray the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom. I hope the Holy Spirit tugs on your heart and shows you that you can do this. It's possible. It's possible to stop smoking overnight. He can do it. I can't do it. You can't do it, but the Holy Spirit can. The Holy Spirit can take the craving away overnight. There, You just got to want it. You got to have a deep desire, a hunger, a thirst for righteousness like our sister here. She said, I gave it up. Done. Lord, take the cravings away. Take the appetite away. Take the addiction away. Take the dependency away. Take the curiosity away. To remove it from the taste buds, Lord. Reset the, the, the chemicals in the mind, in the brain, the dopamine, the serotonin. The neuroplasticity can be rewired. Will you, will you do that for them, please? Please? Please. In the name of Yeshua. Sunshine said, I pray for everyone, including myself, to be healthy, kind, happy, peaceful. I agree. In the name of Yeshua. 4985 said my son Aaron brother Scott drugs alcohol demons physically and verbally Lord I pray right now in the name of Yeshua over this family that you would heal them completely send your Holy Spirit to continue to work in their lives I know you're working I speak over Aaron's life right now Lord that you would set him free who the sun sets free is free indeed we have authority over all snakes and scorpions Lord I pray right now Lord that we what we bind on earth is bound in heaven Lord it is in Christ that he lives he moves he has his being Lord we speak to her brother Scott right now in the spirit realm Lord that by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony they've overcome They've overcome drugs. They've overcome alcohol and every demon in this family's life. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. Stop. How dare you leave this family alone? Leave this family alone. And we speak in a restoration. We speak a hope. We speak the love of God, the deliverance and the healing power of God. In the name of Yeshua. Thank you, prayer team, for praying. God bless you. Someone said, I don't know what we would do without prayer every morning. We'd be miserable. We got to have a conversation with the Most High. Next prayer request in the chat. Uh, Diane Mercer said, pray for my family, my husband. Uh, of them have... Some of them have the same evil spirit. My daughter's overwhelmed. Diane Mercer, I don't know if you're still here. I don't want to scroll down to the bottom and lose my spot. I ask that the Holy Spirit will give you peace in your home. That you would have joy in the home. I pray over your husband and your daughter and every evil spirit that has been welcomed in, invited in. They got to stop. I stand with you. I, I'll agree with you. I, I stand right there with you. Stop. Father, peace in this home. All evil spirits vanquished. All evil spirits leave. And we, we speak the joy of the Lord. May that be their strength. All right, next prayer request. I see a lot of you said, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. That's good. That's confirmation. That's affirmation. You're speaking it. Speak those things as though they were. You have not because you ask not. Ask, seek, and not. Marie said, pray for me to have a better day at work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Running on lack of sleep. Lord, give my sister some, some strength today. For everybody in this chat that didn't get enough rest last night, and you know today is going to be a long day. It's going to be a good day. I'm going to speak into your life right now that you're going to have an amazing day, that you can get all your tasks done. The Holy Spirit is going to give you the information you need. The Holy Spirit is going to give you the strength you need emotionally, mentally to get through this day. You're going to get all your work done. You're going to get your tasks done. You're going to respond to all the emails you need to respond to. You're going to check off the list, all the things you need to check off. If you work with your hands, the Lord will give you the strength to be, be strong, to endure, to complete whatever it is that you got to complete. If you work with your body, your body needs strength. 
I speak life. I speak hope. I speak endurance. I speak his goodness over your life. Lord, help her to get through this day on a lack of sleep. And I trust you. I trust you that when she gets home tonight, she's going to get into bed early and she's going to get some good rest. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Bless her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know right now where she, she's already gone to work. She's feeling God's supernatural strength. We all are. If you're up right now, you're feeling God's supernatural strength. You're not doing this by yourself. Trina said, yes, Troy and I, 70 times 70. This is good. This is morning prayer. If you're just now joining us, we pray every Monday through Friday. Put your prayer request in the chat. I'm going to pray for you. Our prayer team is also praying for you out loud at their homes. Calling on the name of the Lord. Nancy Marie praying for all missing exploited children. May they all return home safe. We had a miracle happen. One of our brothers came into this chat about mm, two months ago daughter was missing long story short 14 year old had no idea where she was gone missing 120 something days the lord protected her we prayed for her many of you kept her on your prayer list you kept brother david in your prayers but we pray for all missing children all exported children all running away children all traffic children we pray father that you would please oh my gosh Please keep them safe. Bring them home, please. Oh, if that was our daughters, if that were our sons, our grandkids, our nieces, our nephews, father, we'd be on our knees asking you, please, to bring them home. Keep them safe. We pray for the adults in the room who know better. Holy Spirit, will you minister to their hearts to release these kids, to quit treating them this way? Holy Spirit, I know people have free will and free choice, but that's why we pray. We pray. We pray in an effort to, to trump free will. We, we pray in an effort that you would allow your spirit to move. That's our prayer. My wife sent me a text that said that it, it froze. I don't know if it froze for everybody. Am I, am I froze? Can someone tell me if I'm not froze on your end? I'm going to scroll to the bottom real quick. I just need one person in the chat. Ken, you're not froze on my end. All right, I got three no's. All right, I'm going to go back up to the top. Lord, don't let it cap me. Please. I want to go back to where I left off. All right. Next prayer request. Donna said, pray to God, I find a place to live. Lord, Donna needs a place to live. You already know where she's going to go. You already know when she's going to start moving in and sign the papers. Lord, you already know. Give her peace. Give her confidence about moving in. Please, please do that for her. That's good. Somebody said, I see change in my life happening. Brother Kevin said, I have a hard time forgiving myself. Nana said, please pray God will intervene in my life. I'm just so tired. But I pray for Nana Partlow right now that you give her the strength she needs. I pray that your Holy Spirit would intervene. I pray, Lord, that you give her supernatural strength. Supply all of her needs. Give her just enough. Your grace is sufficient. Sister Val said, I know how she feels when you think you've forgiven her. I'm going to talk on that. You know what? I, I'm going to, we're going to talk on true forgiveness for those that want to stick around here at the very end at the very end I'm just going to hit on how to let it go you think you let it go but then you see them 
and it's still there. Val, I'm praying for you, sis. I don't know if you're still in the chat. I ask that the Holy Spirit give you that reset you need. I pray that everything I prayed over the other marriages you heard and you received. I pray that the Holy Spirit allows you grace and mercy over your husband and that he has grace over you. I pray that you don't hold each other to the things that were done, the things that were said, and that you give each other a brand new start every morning. I pray we get the revelation from the Holy Spirit, Val, that every day is a brand new day of mercies that we get to be the hands and feet of Christ, that we get to live out his example 30 plus years. She said, I also have several headaches from having two brain strokes. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, you already know about what she's dealing with. You, you, you know the, the reset that can happen in her mind. I know you can heal. Will you do this for her? I come I come in agreement with her and many others asking that you just take away her headaches. Re, 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 rewire maybe how it flows. Whatever connections that happen in the neurons and the neuroplasticity, I need you to do something tonight at her rest. No more headaches. No more headaches, please. Father, you said we can ask you anything. You said nothing was impossible for you, so I'm standing on your word. So Lauro said, I need restoration in my marriage too. I pray some good prayers over marriages. Stick around, please. Uh, if, if and I'll see who's here in the chat when I get to the very bottom. Um, we're gonna go. We'll, we'll go into some some marriage, some more marriage. We've already done it twice. We prayed over marriages twice. If you're just now joining us, um, this prayer will be available on YouTube. But I'll stick to, at the end. We'll talk about forgiveness. We'll, we'll take you through some steps. It'll still be prayer. We'll call it um, Convos After Prayers, when a section that I'm creating on my YouTube. We're after prayer. We're just, we'll keep it real. We'll continue to talk to the Lord, but talk in a way that's uh, practical. Tell you what the Bible says. That's right. Take every, every thought captive. All right, next prayer request in the chat. Carrie said, I asked yesterday, two weeks ago, no power and kids. Continued prayers would be appreciated. Says a Carrie, we're praying for you. I saw your message. Thank you for sending that to me. Um, may the Lord continue to bless you and watch over you. Lord, they need power. Lord, they need they need supernatural power. They need actual power. Will you go before them and help them? Will you please, please, Lord, keep them? Well, I don't know what's going on. You do. She just needs peace in the midst of, in the storm. She, they need. They just need to know that you're there. Will you reveal yourself to them? She's listening. She's listening. Part of prayer is two way. You're you're talking to the Lord, and the Lord is talking to you. He talks to you through ministers. He talks to you through uh, his word. He talks to you in prayer. That's better. That's clear. Well, bless her. Come on, let's get through these prayer requests. I got to do better. Avaya said, prep cook applied for it. Help her get back on her feet. Lord, she applied for two jobs. She just need one. Lord, which one is for her? Lord, will you bless her completely? Will you go before her and what she needs? You said you would supply all of her needs according to your riches and glory. Will you heal her completely? Drinking alcohol, Lord, deliver her set her free she put that in the chat I didn't 
everybody in this chat, spoken, unspoken, that you know that you just want need the Lord to continue to heal you, set you free from some form of uh, destructive behavior. Some form of destructive behavior. This is for you. Come on. Lord, take the urge away. Take the desire away. So come on. Pray this with me. Lord, r remove the cravings. Lord, cancel the, the appetite, the addiction, the thirst. Lord, re reset in my mind the, the need, the want, the desire. Lord, Lord, will you just make it so nasty to me? Lord, will, will you reset how it tastes in my mouth? I don't want to be a drunk. I don't want to be an alcoholic. I don't want it to control my life. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go down that path. Come on, if this is your prayer, say yes, Lord. I agree. I agree. In the name of Yeshua, save her soul. I'm buying the spirit of alcoholism. I'm buying that spirit of it's not a big deal. Who cares? Your liver cares. Your kidneys and your pancreas cares. Your family cares. In the name of Yeshua. <laughs> Next prayer request here in the chat. I want to thank everybody for being patient with me. I'm gonna get to your prayers, and if I don't, I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna see you in the chat. I'll send you a message. Next prayer request. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Um, good to see you, Mookie. He said he's new here. We do this every day. I see a lot of hallelujahs and thank you, Jesus. See a lot of scriptures being quoted. Thank you for putting the word of God in here. Let us not grow weary in our well doing. Kevin, pray that the enemy, pray that my, I keeps jumping. Hold on. I got to go back up to the top. I'm sorry. Give me a second. second I, I had it here Kevin said pray that my enemy would change from their wicked ways and get right with God so we pray for everybody in this chat who has an enemy we pray for everybody who who's against you we pray for those that persecute you we, we, we ask the Lord to keep them and bless them and heal them we pray that they do get right with God. We pray that the Holy Spirit ministers to them. We pray that we get to be the hands and feet that shows them what kindness and love looks like, that we don't retaliate, that we love on people anyway. I pray for all of your haters, everyone that's persecuting you, people that are lying on you. We pray that their souls would be saved in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Pray for my son. One is having mental issues. The other one's having seizures. We pray for your sons right now. Holy Spirit, will you please help Diane's sons? Father. Father. Seizures and then mental concerns. She just needs relief. She needs some peace. Father, I'm asking you if you would do us a favor. Go see about sister Diane and help her. Help her to to be there for her kids in a loving way. Help her with the strength and the endurance she needs, Lord, to, to get them the help they need. We come against seizures and mental issues in this family. I stand with her and I tell you to stop. Oh, I, I, every evil spirit, I stand against you. No, you don't get to win. They're kids. They're children. I don't care if they're children are 15 or 35. Stop. Take your hands off. 
And I speak the peace of God, the restoration of God, the holiness of God on her two kids. Mookie, good to have you, brother. Good. All right. So, so I'm going to tell you right now, it jumped. I don't know what happened. I believe I missed a lot of prayers. I hate that it does that. It it caps me. And um, so I'm going to ask you to do this. If you have not heard your prayer request, just put it back in the chat right now. I apologize to you. This was partially my fault because I took so long and some of the other prayer requests. I know you guys are saying the Lord is using you and the Holy Spirit is moving, but uh, I want to make sure I get to everybody's prayers. I don't want anyone to feel left out. I don't want anyone sitting on here waiting on a prayer and then I don't respond to the prayer. I know our prayer team is praying, so you should have already felt God's anointing. You should have felt his presence. But I know you're also waiting on me to pray. So um, put your prayer request. Just put it back in the chat real quick. I'm sorry. I'm down here. Let me tell you where it scrolled me to. When I asked the question, is it freezing? That's where it jumped me to. I'm down here where you responded. No, it's not freezing. No, it's not freezing. So there's at least an hour's worth of prayers at the top that I did not get to see. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> Just put them back in the. Will you put them back in the chat? Put your prayer request back in the chat. I'll. I'll. I'll do better. Next prayer request here. is awesome i appreciate everybody <laughs> and your 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 support there's one uh miss cozy toshiva cozy going through a spiritual warfare just pray for me in all areas of my life listen for everybody going through spiritual warfare his prayers for you and for everybody that the holy spirit continues to keep you that you you call upon the name of the lord while he is near draw to, draw close to him I pray for you right now that the Holy Spirit will give you the strength you need. I pray that everything you're going through, everything you're challenged with, everything that 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 seems to present a, a trial or tribulation, that the Holy Spirit right now gives you supernatural endurance. We come against every devil, every enemy in your life, every fallen angel, every principality of darkness in high places, every messenger from Satan, every thorn in your flesh, every principal, every weapon formed against you. Stop. Stop. Leave her alone. Take your hands off of her. I speak peace. I come in agreement with her prayer for healing, deliverance, to be set free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. John chapter 8, verse 36. We can do all things through Christ that gives us the strength, Philippians 4, 13. The, the scriptures are our backing. They're our truth. And so I speak into your life, Jeremiah 29, that says that God has a plan for you. It wasn't meant to hurt you. This wasn't meant to hurt you. This is to give you hope and a future so you can put all your trust in him. All of it. All of it. It's in Christ that you live, you move. You have your being. Acts chapter 28, verse 19. I speak into your life right now that the love of the Lord, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, the kindness of God, the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the self-control of God would be with you everywhere you go. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. Next, just put your prayer request in the chat. I, I will get to you. I will get to your prayers.
All right, I'm just reading through here. Yep. Uh, living for Jesus. Haku. I don't know if I said your name right. Hikaru. Living for Jesus. He said prayers for my marriage lord you know what's going on with their marriage you know exactly what they're dealing with what they're going through what they've been arguing and fighting about what their disagreements are their misunderstandings lord you already know what's in their hearts how they feel about each other i'm asking you holy spirit to move I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Yeshua, to heal her marriage, all her hurts, everything that's gone on that she's just, just want to be done. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. F fix it. Holy Spirit, please. We come against all the enemies that are causing challenges we come against every devil that's causing issues stop we come against separation and divorce stop and we speak healing we speak the reset button in their marriage start over 70 times 70 unconditional love unconditional love in the name of Yeshua Charlo says my own family and husband is against me. Lord, I don't know the details, but I know you can fix it. I, I know you know exactly what happened and what can be changed. Father, I'm asking you in the name of Yeshua to go see about her. Touch her husband. Touch her heart. His name is Jason. Please. We pray for healing as they continue to grieve over mother-in-law. That you give them the peace they need. We pray for our friend Karen, Lord, who has esophagus cancer. That you can, you heal her completely. Lord, this family needs you. May they put all their trust in you. Lord, may they not lean to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge you. Lord, will you give them peace that passes all understanding? Will you set them free who the sun sets free is free indeed? Lord, may they have uh, the, the understanding that they can trample and walk amongst scorpions and snakes and nothing will harm them. Lord, will you bring this family closer together? Bring the family closer together, please. Hallelujah. Come on, is that your prayer this morning? Lord, bring my family closer together. But bring, bring us closer together. Dopamine Daily, good to have you in the chat. Pray for my uncle Cedric fighting for his life in the hospital with pneumonia and kidney issues. Lord, Lord, I stand with her. We stand with her asking that you would have some mercy. Lord, will you have some grace? Will you be the healer that you are and, and just allow him to, to continue on fighting? Lord, you have to heal the kidneys. You have to go down and strengthen the kidneys. You have to be the one to restore. You have to get into the actual flesh of the kidneys and tell all the tissue, all the blood vessels, all, all the everything to heal. Like, you just have to do it. Lord, you have to remove the inflammation and the, the, the fluid in his lungs. You, you have to tell the infection to go away. You, you have power. We trust you. We use that power. We stand in that authority and speak to the enemy. Stop. 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 You don't get to do this. We speak life. We speak life. Yeah. Lord, we speak life over Uncle Cedric. As if that was our uncle. We intercede right now. Ask you to have mercy. Save his soul. Save his body. Lord, for just a little bit. We trust you. We know you allow whatever you want to allow. 
But you also said we can ask whatever we want to ask. So we're asking for, for some favors. Please. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. In the name of Yeshua. Heal. Pray for myself, my daughter, for protection from physical and spiritual attacks. Sister uh, Keggy. We pray over you right now that the Holy Spirit will continue to keep you and your family, that you and your daughter would be safe. Every weapon formed against you will not win. We stand on the word of God that says that he's given us authority over all scorpions, all snakes. We can walk amongst them, that where two or three come together in his name, that we can agree on anything. What we can bind on earth is bound in heaven. So I speak health. I speak life. I speak hope. I speak the word of God and his goodness over you. I speak right now into your life that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Next prayer request in the chat. Please pray for healing for myself and my family. Stand strong together. I'm praying for you, sis. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit right now continues to grant you the peace you need, the holiness you need, the righteousness you need. I pray that God continues to give you everything you need. Lord, heal her family from everything that has happened. Everything that's happened. Everything that went on. Everything that everyone said wasn't happening, everything that hurt them, everything that people turned a blind eye to, the, the things that should have been said that wasn't said, the things that were said that shouldn't have been said. I pray for this family. Save them. Bring them closer together. Lord, just bring us closer together. In you. Because we can't do this by ourselves. We'll start fussing and fighting again. But Lord, may we keep you in the center of everything that we do. Lord, I pray her family keeps you in the center of everything. In the name of Yeshua. Brother Mookie said that his roommate practices witchcraft. Well, witchcraft doesn't have any power over the Lord. And they can practice it all they want. But guess what? By his stripes, we're healed. We're covered under the blood. We're saved by the blood. We're redeemed by the blood. We have authority to, to trample, walk amongst snakes and scorpions. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. There are six scriptures right there for us to stand on. We come against every attack, every lie, every manipulation that's happening in this home. We come right now in the name of Yeshua putting walls up against the enemy's attacks. No weapon formed against you will prosper. We come against every curse, every spell, every incantation, all kind of sorcery and, and curses that have come out of these folks' mouth. We bind the enemy in the name of Yeshua. It won't win. We cancel their curse. Listen, every demonic spirit in Mookie's presence that manifests itself as a witch. <laughs> Just stop. I don't got time for games. Just stop. I know who we are in Christ Jesus. Mookie knows who he is in Christ. So under the authority of Yeshua, because demons tremble at that name. Just so I'm clear. He, he trembles at the pronunciation, the annunciation of Yeshua. There's no other name like Yeshua. There's power in that name and the pronunciation of Yeshua. Mookie, I would encourage you to use the name of Yeshua. Nothing wrong with Jesus. We know who Jesus is. That's his English name, his Latin trans, uh, translation. But the actual name that they called him was Yeshua. He knew what his name was. He knew what kind of power it held. So in the name of Yeshua, we come against all evil in the name of Yeshua. We bind the enemy in the name of Yeshua, witches and warlocks and evil princesses and darknesses and principalities of high places. 
You got to stop. I'm not afraid of you. You can't harm me. There's nothing that you can do to us in the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. All right. Keep this moving here. You said, I'll pray that I have another baby. God put it on my heart to have one. Let the Lord's will be done in your life. May the Lord grant whatever his will is for you concerning another child. Please pray for my niece, my sister with dementia for patience to deal with her. Yeah. And I pray for you. I pray for my sister. That the Lord would give you the strength you need. Give your sister the strength they need. Give your family the strength they need. I pray for your niece. Sister Roberta, if you're out there, I pray for you. Pray for Henry. Pray for everybody who is a caregiver. Everyone who has to take care of a, a niece or an uncle, a mom or a dad, a husband, a wife. Sister Gracie, I pray for your sister who's having to take care of your brother-in-law. Lord, I ask that you give them patience, endurance. Lord, I pray that the grace of God is all over them. I pray. I believe this. I know you'll do this. That they would see them with compassion. That they would see them with love. That they would see them and care for them in a way that's sensitive. In the name of Yeshua. Next prayer request in the chat. I will be having an emergency C-section. I have preeclampsia. Please, I need grace. Jules, we pray for you. We pray that the Holy Spirit's power would be all over you and that he would give you grace to, to deliver. I pray right now in the name of Yeshua that your baby and yourself would be safe. We speak life. We speak hope. We speak goodness. I speak into your life right now a great delivery, an amazing mom, a beautiful relationship between you and the child. In the name of Yeshua, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You put all your trust in the Lord. He'll take care of you. He is a refuge in the time of trouble. He will hide you. He will protect you. He'll be a shield. Father, do that for her. Thank you. Sandy said, can you pray for me? I just want the will of God to be done. So much comes against me. Sister Sandy, thank you for your, your request. Our prayer for you is that the Holy Spirit has his way with you, covers you, that you be listening did you listen to the direction of the Lord? I pray over you right now, Sandy, and everybody in this chat, that the Holy Spirit tugs at your heart and you, you follow. I pray that he closes every door in your life you're not supposed to go through. I pray that you can recognize and discern not just good from bad, but good from good. The right decision, the right walk. So much comes at us. We get so many things to come. We need your power. Will you do that for Sandy? In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> What a wonderful day of prayer. If you missed any of today's prayer, I can't even begin to try to recap everything that we prayed for today. We prayed over marriages. We prayed over uh, abuse. And then here at the end, once we get finished with prayer, I'm going to stick around and help those who need help with forgiving. Those who I think even specifically said, uh, I need some help in my marriage forgiving. Cindy said, I need deliverance from all strongholds. Cindy, I don't know what your strongholds are, but you have authority. I don't know what devils or demons have tried to hold you back, but you have authority. And, and for everybody in the chat right now, with an unspoken prayer request, everyone who has a, a stronghold, a, a hold up, a setback, 
you're backslidden, you have an addiction, you can call it whatever you want. The Lord already knows what it is. Our prayer for you is that the Holy Spirit gives you full strength and guidance. Our prayer for you is that the Lord takes away those urges and the Lord would give you supernatural strength. Like he just changes your your thinking. He, he rewires your 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 neuroplasticity and you have a new outlook. We, we pray and believe by faith. This is just trust that right now, Cindy, you give it all to the Lord. He said, if you come to me, I'll come to you. He said, come to me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take take the things that I have and let's, let's change. Let's, let's exchange. Let's trade. I'll take all your burdens and you take my love. You take my peace. You take my joy. You, you take my love, my holiness, my righteousness. You, you take self-control. You take faithfulness. You take goodness. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm meek and I'm lowly at heart. And you'll find rest for your soul. Lord, I speak rest. All right, right now, as I'm praying over Cindy, Lord, just take it away. Just take it away. Just, she don't even want to do it anymore. Put a no in her spirit. Come on. Put a no in her spirit. Say, Lord, put a no in my spirit. Now put a no in my spirit. I don't want to do those things anymore. I don't want, to, I don't want that stronghold holding me back. I come against a spirit of addiction and curiosity. I come against a rebellious spirit. I come against a spirit that says it's not a big deal. I come against that same spirit in the garden that told Adam and Eve, is it really going to hurt? Did he really say that? Is it a big, is like, is, is it really that bad? I bind that spirit, that comfortable spirit, that complacent spirit, that tolerating spirit. I bind the spirit in this chat over Cindy and everybody's life that thinks that no one's watching, no one cares. The Lord cares. The Lord is watching. And he doesn't want to condemn you. He's not pointing the finger at you. His grace is available right now that says today is your new day. We're not starting over. We're not resetting the clock. Today is not day one. You've always been saved. You will be saved. You're going to be saved. You was delivered. You are delivered. You will be delivered. Right now, this is still day 365 or year six, year five. We're not letting the setback or the, the one mess up take away your deliverance. You are delivered. You're saved. For everybody out there that messed up, everyone who said, I can't believe I did that thing again, you're still free. Because who the son said is free, they're free. You're, you're free. Sin no longer has mastery over you. Sin no longer has bondage over you. It cannot condemn you. Your mess up cannot put you in a place where you feel like you're, you're crummy and you're horrible. and I, I, I'm just a bad sinner. No, you're not. You're saved by his grace. You're no longer a sinner. You were, you were, but not anymore because the son has set you free. Walk in your freedom. Just don't do it again. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you strength. The next time it comes up, say no. Lord, I'm asking you, I'm asking you on behalf of Cindy and everybody still here that's got just a little bit of crumbs left in a situation wipe it clean clean up the crumbs get the broom out we're done we'll put a no in their spirit there's so much that god has in store for you we're not gonna let this hold us up we're not gonna let us set the, let us allow this to set us back we walk among scorpions and snakes they won't hurt us we have authority to say stop where two or three come together we can ask for anything we bind it on earth you can do all things, Cindy, through Christ because he's going to give you the strength to say no. Nothing's impossible for God. Yeah, you have a hope and a future. You will live and not die. It's in Christ that you live, you move, you have your being. What's going to separate you from the love of God? Not this hope, not this setback, not this strong hope. Nothing. Nothing. Father, I thank you right now for deliverance. This is what deliverance looks like. This is what deliverance feels like. I thank you. I thank you so much. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. What a wonderful day of prayer. 
Diana said, please pray for Leo, his health. Look, our grandson needs you. You know exactly what's going on. Deliver him, save him, watch over him. Bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. I pray for all grandsons and granddaughters in this chat right now. Lord, an extra angel today. If you can spare, protect them. Holy Spirit, speak to them. Speak to them. Remind them of all things. Holy, Holy Spirit, when no one else can get to them, Holy Spirit, tug on their heart. In the name of Yeshua. Lord, heal his body. Send your power to flow through his body. Your healing power. In the name of Yeshua. Be humble and call on him. Said, I need prayer for a serious health condition. The Lord already knows. Uh, he said, I'm really scared. Listen, listen, there's no fear in the Lord. Fear not, I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I am your God. I'll give you strength to handle this. There's no diagnosis. There's no outcome. There's no prognosis that the Lord is not already aware of. He is not surprised of what you're going through. He's not sitting back on the throne saying, oh my goodness, they're going through this. What do we do? What do we do? He is the sovereign God. He is the almighty God. He is the all-knowing God. He said, all we got to do is put our trust in him and not be afraid. Fear is the opposite of trust. He said, everyone who comes to me must believe that I am the sovereign God, that I'm the almighty God, that I'm the all powerful God. And they must also believe this is found in Hebrews chapter 11 or four, Hebrews chapter four, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Ask and it'll be given to you. Seek, you will find, keep knocking. You got to believe, Lord, I pray right now that you would strengthen his faith. I pray right now, Lord, that you remove that spirit of fear. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I pray over my brother or my sister. I can't identify, but I pray right now that you would strengthen their faith. Strengthen their trust, their resolve, their endurance. Lord, give them perseverance. Give them hope. Lord, may they understand that you are in control. I speak this over your life right now. I hope you receive this revelation from the Lord that he is in control. He has not failed anybody. He's got a perfect record. Even for our loved ones. Yeah, we have to be practical and understand the full scope of what the Lord has allowed. Even for the things that have happened to us and our loved ones where we just say, I can't believe it. He is still in control. I pray right now under the authority given to us that you walk by faith and not by sight. You walk by faith and not your feelings. You walk trusting him and not by the diagnosis. You walk depending and leaning on what the Lord will do and not what the doctor said could happen. I, I pray right now that whatever they told you, you, you say, Lord, this is your problem. This is not my problem. I'm not even worried about it. I know that's easier said than done. So the application to this is to visualize the father. He sits on this huge throne. He's so much bigger and stronger and taller than we'll ever imagine. And you're at his feet. We're at the feet of the Lord. We're saying here, here, take it. I just, I need your grace. I need your healing. I come humbly, but confidently to the boat, to the throne of grace where we would receive mercy. You said you would be his refuge in a time of trouble. You, you said you would be near the brokenhearted. So to, are you going to handle this? Are you going to handle this? Yeah. He said, fear not. Quit being afraid. That's not, that's not his spirit. That's an evil spirit. That, that's, that's you. He said, I got it. 
I, just trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. You got to have a higher expectation of me. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things that we're expecting, things we're hoping for. It's evidence. It's evidence of something that hadn't even happened yet. It hadn't even happened yet. So you got to believe what hasn't happened yet. You, you have to expect what hasn't happened yet. You have to go above and beyond in your thinking of what hasn't even uh, uh, transpired yet. That's, that's what this is. That's the movement that we're under. This is the gospel, trusting something we've never seen. I just trust it. It's a blind trust. It's a blind faith. Lord, do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Shar said, can you pray for my marriage, especially for forgiveness in it? Okay. We, I think I'm getting to the bottom. I'm getting ready. We're going to touch on everybody who's dealing with unforgiveness in their marriage. If you got to drop here in a minute, you can drop. If you want to hang on, you can hear it. Shar, if you give me two seconds, maybe 10 minutes, I'm just going to scroll to the bottom, make sure we got to everybody. Mookie, that's amazing. Keep walking in the Lord. Thank you, Sister Renee. To all the prayer team, shout out to you. Once again, you've been amazing today. Amy has a praise report. She said, I I just got my lab results back and everything is perfect. Amy, we called it. We spoke it. We said it. This stuff is not going to happen to us. This stuff doesn't run in our family. If you just now, if you're just now joining us in the first hour of prayer, we started at 6 a.m. Central. And the Lord spoke to us. He gave us a word. That we don't have to go under the curse, the spell, the, the misdiagnosis of being spoken on to our family's generations that it runs in our family. That's not us. I, I don't receive that. And I bind the devil for even trying to deceive us and manipulate us to be comfortable with the thought that it runs in our families. Because we're pre-diagnosed, we're predispositioned. The devil, quit using those fancy words on me. I have the blood of the lamb on my life. I will not have prostate cancer. I will not have breast cancer running my, my family. My daughter will not get it. My great, great, great granddaughter will not get any of this. My, my grandson, my great grandson, nobody in my family. We come against heart disease and prostate cancer and all cancers. Like it just stops. It stops right now. Lord, I thank you for Amy's results. I thank you for blessing her. I thank you for doing what you said you would do. I thank you for her faith. Amy, do you understand that this took your faith? You believe this. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. This was the Holy Spirit revealing this to you. And you believed. So I thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. All right. Here we go. I think I'm at the bottom. I pray for my prodigal. All right. Lord, her prodigal. You know what it is. Who, who it is. Heal and deliver. Real quick. Real quick. Before we go into this next section. If you need to take a break. Get you a drink of water. Pause. Uh, take a health break. Do so. Come right back. I want to make sure I prayed for everybody. I'm at the bottom. If I did not pray for you and you put a prayer request in the chat, two things can happen. You can put it back in the chat right now. Or when I'm done, I'll get to see everybody's chats. They've updated the the app. Uh, and so now those who who've if you put any message in this chat. I can see it afterwards. When I close the, the live, it shows me, it says you have 900 messages or 900 chats. And I take the time to go through every chat that I make sure I didn't miss. And so if I come across your chat, your prayer request, and I know I didn't pray for it out loud, or maybe perhaps I did pray for it out loud. I may even just follow up to just be sure. 
and send you a quick I'm praying for you I got your request God bless you God heal you but just in case just in case you want your prayer request prayed out loud right now please please put it in the chat and then after we pray for these final few chats I'm going to spend about 15-20 minutes talking about forgiveness and then we're going to pray for those who are having a hard time forgiving and then the Lord is going to deliver you if you want it God is not going to force this on you but his spirit will speak to you he'll teach you how to let those things go so if you give us about maybe five more minutes let me see what's left in the chat and then we'll we'll go down that path praying for healing Lord I pray for uh, awesome that you would just heal I don't know the area of healing mentally emotionally physically spiritually send your healing power to flow everything that's wounded everything that's hurt everything that's inflamed everything that's sore everything that hurt really bad heal it heal feelings heal flesh and blood heal our minds Mary praise report I just got approval for withdrawal of my 401k praise the Lord Mary may the Lord bless you keep you and watch over you Teresa please pray that I fall back in love with my husband Teresa, my prayer for you is that the Holy Spirit, that the Father himself, Yeshua, would just kind of, if you want this, if you want this, allow you to see him the way that the Lord sees him. So the Lord had compassion on people. When everyone else saw the prostitute, when everyone else saw Zacchaeus as a thief, when everyone else saw uh, people as evil or, or or bad the Bible says he had compassion he, he looked at them as little babies he looked at them as children he looked at them as someone that just needed some help he, he looked at them in a way that said they're a child if you stick around Teresa I think part of Part of what we're getting ready to do may also help you. That you fall back in love with your husband. Some of it is maybe some bitterness, some hurt. So many years of, of, of unhappiness that it's now created a new perspective. So stick around. Stick around. I'm going to pray with you. M Mary. The Lord is already working. You already saw what he did with your 401k. This ability is next in the name of Yeshua. Okay, that's a good prayer. That's a good prayer, Teresa. He's willing to go. You all, you're both in it. Stephanie said prayer for my daughter, Kiara. His husband, Matthew, they went on vacation broken down but we pray for them if I'm reading this right they need your help they need your guidance they need your protection they need your love pray that I have a certainty on a particular situation so I can stand on it and not waver the Lord will speak to you through the word through prayers through the word through prayers through the word through sermons worship music Keep saying, Miss King, Miss King, keep saying, Lord, I'm listening. I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening, and I won't move until you tell me to move. I won't respond until you tell me to respond. I won't answer. I won't make a decision until I know in my heart that you are there. You're guiding me. You're keeping me. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, Lord. When are you going to show her? She's asking. She's knocking. She's seeking. Here she is on prayer again asking. Come on. You know, and I've said this quickly. I'll say this quickly. I said before, the Lord answers in four ways. He answers in four ways. 
Sometimes his answer is yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's wait. Not right now. Sometimes it's something different. How do you know if it's the Lord? Well, if you didn't get an answer, then the Lord is saying wait. If you didn't get a crystal clear, here's the door. It's open. Go. Then that's him saying not right now. Just wait. It may be him saying no. Well, how do I know the difference between the Lord saying no and wait? Do I keep pursuing that thing? He speaks to us. He, he closes doors. If it's not in his will, he closes the door. We had a really good Bible study last night. You can go find it on YouTube. Gracie asked a real good question. I didn't get to the question in the Bible study, but her question was, well, will the Lord let you have something that wasn't in his will? Like if you're just persistent about something, could, could he still answer? Could he allow you to have it? I believe that man has free choice. Man has free will. We always will. We can go get something. That doesn't mean the Lord answered it. He, he's, he'll allow it. If I just insist on buying a, a, a $50,000 car when I know that I can't afford a $50,000 car, I don't have the budget or the job for a 50000 car, but I insist the Lord is not going to put 50 angels in front. Now, he did that with that donkey and in other situations where he gets their attention. But he now speaks through his Holy Spirit. I don't need a donkey to get in front of me. I don't, I don't need a big angel to wrestle with me on my way back from, from like, that's not how he operates. He said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'll send you someone who will speak to you. I'll put my spirit in you that will remind you of all things. You don't have to go the old way, the old covenant. There's a new covenant, a new way. And now that my spirit is in you, I'm constantly talking to you. If you don't hear anything, that means stop. But I insist, I insist on the $50,000 car. Well, the Lord is, he already told me no problem. He already probably put obstacles in my path. He made a way of escape. But I insisted. I, I just went and looked for another loan. I went to another car dealership. I went somewhere else because I just want this so bad. And to answer Gracie's question, yes, the Lord will let you go and and then you'll be the one that have to maintain it. You'll be the one that have to keep the marriage together. You'll be the one that has to stay on the job and figure it out. You'll be the one that's struggling because it wasn't a part of his will. But then, Ken, I thought you said that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. They do eventually work for good. Part of that good is the Lord teaching you that you shouldn't have done this. He's teaching you that you should have listened. He's teaching you that you should have paid attention and gotten to your word before you made that decision. He's teaching you that you should have prayed about it before you just jumped into it. You jumped into your marriage. You jumped into a job. You jumped into an investment situation. You jumped into an opportunity. You just went for it. And not once did you pause and say, I'm listening. I'm not going to make any decisions until I know the Lord says go. I need signs. I need wonders. I need dreams. I need your word. I need somebody to confirm. Lord, have your way in her life. Lord, just speak to her. Speak to Miss King and everybody in this chat. So that's not how this works. This is uh, unfortunately, this is, you know, uh, our chat. I, I, I want to be able to control uh, what the Lord has given me. If you got a question, you can ask it to me privately. Your question will still get answered. You don't have to be in front of an audience like this. We're going to stay on track and on focus and listen to the, the spirit of the Lord. I'm in central time zone. So it was seven o'clock when we started last night, central Noel said, can you please pray for me? This is a prayer chat. So, Noel, here's my prayer for you. Here's my prayer for you. And uh, I'm going to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit right now. I'm going to send you something privately. You ask publicly. But I'm going to send you some additional resources and prayers privately. Here's all you have to do, Noel. Draw closer to the Lord through the word. I need everybody right now praying for Noel. I need everybody in this chat that's a Christian to pray for Noel. You know exactly what to pray for. 
You, you, you know what we prayed earlier, that the Holy Spirit allows those crooked things to be straight. And as you're praying, I'm going to minister to him. Come on, I need you praying. This is how this works. Noel, are you still here? Put a yes in the chat. Are you still with me? Okay. Noel, here's what I'm going to ask you to do as everyone's praying for you. You should feel the power of the Lord right now soothing you, encouraging you, motivating you. You should feel a, a sense of calm, a sense of peace that's coming over you right now as they're praying. And I'm going to ask you to do just one thing. Just one thing. I want you to read a couple of scriptures for me and we can follow up. I don't mind discipling you. I don't mind being a help or a guide or whatever you want to call it. You can reach out to me in the chat and we'll let the Lord move. But here's what I need you to read. Colossians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 5. You want to get closer to the Lord? You, you, you want to feel the Lord help oh he's here you, you're asking so he's going to help God doesn't care your your situation he doesn't care your circumstance he doesn't care how you come he doesn't care what you, what we think we are he doesn't care what titles or uh, labels we've put on ourselves Noel he says I love you I care for you so much the Lord says right now to you, Noel, that everything that was said about you, everything that you thought about yourself, I have a different plan. I have some hope for you. Hmm. Noel, Colossians and a living Bible in the NASB version, the Christian standard version chapter 3 in Galatians chapter 5 Lord I pray over him right now that you would speak to him Holy Spirit remind him of who you are and your truth I pray right now Holy Spirit that you would guide him show him your truth that's, that's the prayer I, prayer team I need you just to say that I write, write out loud and speak his name. Show Noel the truth. And the Lord's going to answer. Lord, reveal yourself to Noel in the word. Show him that he's loved. Lord, I pray right now that you just minister to him. Noel, I, I ask that you would, as you pray tonight, and as you get into your word, say, Lord, I'm listening. No, Noel. Lord, I'm listening. Can you do that for us? Can you, can you get in your private time with the Lord and say, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. Lord, cover him. Deliver him. Heal him. You need healing from hurts, from pains, from misunderstandings, from abandonment, from rejection. You need healing from, from all the things that the devil, our, our common enemy is the devil. It's not each other. It's not people. It's not parents. It's not friends, loved ones. Our, the enemy is the enemy. And he came to, to destroy you, to, to set you off course, to hurt you, to cause the pain. And so we, we bind the enemy. We The enemy doesn't have any power or authority in this chat. No. And I pray over you. We believe by faith or trust. We trust that the Lord is going to continue to keep you. Read those scriptures for me. Send me a private message when you can, if you like. And we can follow up, okay? Thank you, Noel, for trusting us. Thank you for being here. 
Thank you. All right. Let's do this. Um, the Lord forgives you. You're forgiven. As he, Franco, he died on the cross. All you have to do is do what you just said to him. Lord, I'm sorry. I repent and I confess you as Lord. And then you're saved. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Like you're free forever. Free forever. Prayer team, thank you for praying for Noel. He feels the power of God on his life right now because of you. The Lord has already saw that he was going to come and we will be praying and the power that's already here. All right. Give me 15 minutes. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about unforgiveness. If you got to drop, if you got to get ready for your day, if you got to go to work, fix you some breakfast, go put the clothes in the washer, the dryer, start the dishwasher. If you just need to go get your breath of fresh air, go to the coffee shop. We're going to call this um, conversations after prayer. I'll put this in a completely different section. Prayer is over. I'm still going to pray here at the end for those that need prayer uh, for forgiveness on how to forgive. But I want to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you on what forgiveness is, why I'm forgiveness is important what the root of forgiveness is i'm gonna take you to the scriptures i'm gonna give you some word and then we're gonna pray at the end that the holy spirit now gives you the strength to forgive people so just just as a show of hands so i know what i'm working with here just so i know what i'm working with how many people in this chat have not forgiven somebody yet you have you're having a hard time Letting that hurt go. It could be husband. It could be wife. It could be anybody. This this is this is not uh, this is not uh, uh, excluded to just husbands and wives. We're going to touch on husbands and wives because husbands and wives are the core to the family and and, and how life works. But I want to just get it get a quick. Quick look here. That that you. I'm just trying to reset my music here. If you got to go, go ahead and go. I don't, don't want to hold you, but if you want to stick around and listen, stick around and listen. If you know that I'm Ken, I'm being honest right now with you and the Lord. I don't know if I can be around them. I can't stand them. Someone mentioned in the chat. They think they're over it. I think Gia said, and then the moment that somebody talks about them or they they pop up the animosity comes up again so they let you know that you haven't been delivered you, you're still holding something against them so just, just let me look here quick and our prayer team already knows what's getting ready to happen uh, for those that need this let me see Lord, thank you for Noel. Uh, so D said, I'm just going to call you D because I don't want to mispronounce your name. Dia, Denaira. She said, me, humble and call on him. Give me your name if you if you don't mind. I don't mind calling you by your pseudo name if you want to protect yourself. Uh, this is a safe space. You haven't figured that out. This is a safe space. Uh, Rochelle said, me, I... Shy said, I got a number of people. And like a number of people that you haven't forgiven. Amy. A little bit. Uh, she said, I forgive, but the pain is still there. The trauma is still there. Okay, we can talk about that in a moment. Teresa said, I just don't trust. But do you forgive? That's the question. We're going to get to the trust piece in a moment. We're talking about forgiving people first. And, and understanding what the true word or the true root of forgiveness means. Uh, Sarlo said, I, my husband, I forgive, but my heart is still so hurt. Okay, so now we're talking about be overcoming betrayal and reconciliation. Again, what I teach based on the Bible, forgiveness and reconciliation are two separate issues. And we'll make sure that you get to both. 
The reconciliation doesn't have to happen immediately. It takes time to reconcile. It takes time to 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 understand that we're back to where it used to be. Like we don't automatically just go back to talking to everybody. And then, like there needs to be some some conversations, some therapy, some healing. But forgiveness is available. I want to make sure we're on the same page there. So I want to make sure we first touch on all those who said I have a hard time letting stuff go. Once you're on my bad side, you don't get back on it that easy. I thought I had forgiven, but to be honest, I didn't really. That's fair. I need we need we need this right now. I think I'm over my husband cheating, but I'm not. Thank you for your transparency and your honesty. Sister Roberta, good to see you. I knew you were here. I may have missed your prayers earlier because it jumped on me, but I you know I'm praying for you and Henry. She said me. Mary said I forgave, but it sometimes it still hurts. So, so I'm not going to show you the answer yet. But if it hurts, it's possible that you have not forgiven. Holy Spirit's going to give you some some analogies, some parables here in a moment to to get you there. Tila. Is that how you, did I pronounce it right? Telia? Pro, forgive me if I pronounced it wrong. I asked you for your name and then I, I butcher it. Please forgive me. D said yes. All right, so here's where we're going to start. Just call me Day. I can I can do that. I can do that. Kristen said me. I. Robert, you, you, you have people that you haven't forgiven. Still hurts a little bit. It's okay. We're getting ready to jump into this Alicia Shirella okay okay so let's let's start here I need you to go back the Holy Spirit's going to help you Holy Spirit's going to help you I need you to go to the incident Robert said my parents this is going to be good and if there's multiple issues multiple people that have offended you, hurt you, tres trespass, that you you just have a hard time. I like I never can forgive them for what they did to me. I it's just it was too much. If it's multiple people, then we're gonna go whatever the Lord is putting on your heart to start with. Because there's levels to this, there's layers to this. There's certain people that have hurt you that the hurt might have been one or two times. It hurts. And Lord can help you overcome that one pretty easy here in a moment and then there's other people it just piles on years after years after years he mentioned his parents and it's just it's so much that where do I start where do I start with the forgiveness 1985 86 87 87 89 you know what they did in 91 92 you know the stuff they did to me like they didn't even show up to XYZ that still hurts me I don't know if I can forgive them like there's there's a lot there but what we're going to do right now I hear everybody everybody is struggling with forgiveness is holy spirit I need you I pray to him I need you praying I need you praying for them for me for us here's where we're going to start I need you to go back to that incident for the record I'm not a clinically diagnosed therapist just just on record I've counseled for 30 years of ministry. I've prayed. I've done marriage counseling. I've done personal counseling. I guess I'm a life coach, you could say. Uh, at the end of the day, there's some steps that we can take. Because the Holy Spirit has given us the steps. I don't need a book from man to, to help us get to where the Lord is at. Does that make sense? So you with me so far? Go to the place, to the incident. Go, I'm going to take you there. I'm a, I want the Holy Spirit to get to that core memory. I, I want the Holy Spirit right now to allow you to pause. Close your eyes if you need to. Close your eyes if you can. And think about one of those incidents. Try to go all the way back to the very first incidents or incidents that hurt so bad that unforgiveness, bitterness, criticalness, hostility, frustration began to rise. 
You got so upset. You got so upset. I need you to go there. Come on, I'm gonna help you. Just stay with me. I just just listen for me for a second. My eyes irritate for some reason. I haven't prayed yet. Lord, just heal my eye. Any irritation, whatever's going on in my eye, heal it. Declare victory. Let me assure. Let me assure. Let me assure. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Forgive me for one moment. Be healed. All right. I'm sorry to hear about your dad doing that to your mom. Hurts. See, there's levels to this. All right. All the way back to birth. Okay. Okay, listen, listen. Now, I can tell you up front, you have to be open to the Holy Spirit. You have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to listen. You have to listen. Before we can focus on the person that hurt you, let's let's start with you. Have you got that? Have you got an incident? Did the Lord kind of give you some ideals of where the hurt began? Some some of the, the trauma where you just just I just can't forgive. I just it's just too much. That place. The first thing you have to realize is that the Lord was there the whole time. That incident that happened. The Lord was there. He saw it all. He was with you. So he's not surprised of what the person did to you. It's very similar to what we did with the whole betrayal. For those who were on with betrayal, I was betrayed by my husband. I was betrayed by my girlfriend. They cheated on me. They crossed the line and it hurts. Well, forgiveness follows the same suit. It may not have been a betrayal, but Whatever they said to you, whatever they did to you, it it released the same chemical. Not like one who would grieve. That's what we studied or that's what we talked about. When you're betrayed, when you get hurt, it releases the same chemical in your brain as if you lost a loved one. Well, lies or unforgiveness release or bitterness. This is what we're getting to. The root of unforgiveness is bitterness. I want you to hear me. Bitterness comes from the root. Stay with me. The same chemical released when someone hates somebody. Very similar chemical. Uh, they've done these studies. You can go look at the stuff online. When you ask my who are you who who do you not forgive? Who who do you never say I'll never I'll I'll never forgive them. I'll never forget it. I'll never forgive them. And that same chemical, when you say, well, do you hate somebody? Oh, I hate them. I hate them with my whole life. So you're dealing with a spirit. Stay with me. Stay with me. Of hate. Now, you'll never say it out loud. Oh, I don't, I don't hate them. Hate is such a strong word, Brother Ken. But would you admit that you're bitter? You're critical? That, that you don't want to have nothing to do with them they're in a jail cell right now you've locked them up they're doing life right now without parole that's what we do in society to people that are bad that's what we do to in society to people that are that that are hate hateful and we we in turn return that with a punishment i'm gonna let the holy spirit pause and allow you to to process that you're just you're really it's bitterness 
You're not a bitter person. I'm not pointing the finger at you. We don't fight against each other. This isn't personal. Don't, don't take this personal. Although it is personal for you. We fight against flesh and we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities of darkness and high places. Evil spirits who has who had a, a strategy, a plan. They were intentional to cause bitterness and hate, which is the opposite of patience and love. So now that you're there, I'm reading comments as I'm speaking. Just listen to me for a moment. Just listen. Ask yourself this question. Ask yourself this question. Is God bitter toward you? Does he hate you? And it's a rhetorical question, but it's an honest question to allow your mind to process this whole thing that we're getting ready to go down this path of unforgiveness or, or bitterness, being critical, putting people in jail, never letting them out. When we don't forgive somebody, we're locking them up and we're telling them that you don't get to come out until you meet certain conditions or you'll never come out. I don't care what conditions you meet. You could say, I'm sorry. You could change your life around in my eye. You're doing life because you're so wrong. And I'll never, ever release you. You'll never come up for parole. You, you won't even get a reduction in time on good service because it hurts so bad. And you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Okay, that's where we are. That's what we've established. That's where, where you understand to be whatever they did. It doesn't even matter. I don't care whether they lied, cheated, didn't treat you right, abused you. Uh, some of you have been hurt in a really bad way and you say in your heart I, I just can't bring myself to to give them a pass to let let it go I can't see them as a different person it just they'll always be in my heart an evil person they'll always be and you know what they might be an evil person but let's let's get to you this is not about them right now this is about you The next part of this, now that you've gone to that place where you've locked them up, that incident, that situation that you said, I'll never forgive them. The question on the table is now, has the father ever been mean to you to a point where he's locked you up, hated you, and he said, I'll never forgive you. See, what we're getting ready to get to is understanding what grace is. We have to define forgiveness. And I, I have an understanding. I have a belief after counseling many people, talking to many people, that we really don't know what forgiveness is. And I'm going to take you there spiritually. I'm going to take you all the way to the cross so we can understand the true definition of forgiveness. And then we can now then bask and swing in His grace. So here's the definition of forgiveness. So here's the definition of grace. It's undeserving favor, merit. It's it's undeserving, undeserved uh, goodness and kindness. Undeserved. Underline that word undeserved. Write that word undeserved. That's forgiveness forgiveness isn't you never made a mistake forgiveness isn't we're going to go back to the way it was it's you don't deserve it I'm going to give it to you anyway but why would I give somebody something they don't deserve what kind of person just turns the, the cheek who, who just lays down you think I'm weak I'm not going to take that they uh -uh, I'm, I'm better than that I'm not the kind of person. Well, my Bible says that blessed are those who are persecuted for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people say all kinds of stuff against you. In the very next couple of verses, he says, forgive me of my sins as I forgive people who sinned against me. And then in the next couple of verses, he says, make sure that you forgive because if you don't forgive, your father won't forgive you. So now, now we have to actually deal with scripture. 
the scriptures of the people don't want to talk about. Stay with me. Just give me a second. Give me a second as you listen here. Do you understand that your forgiveness, your salvation is based on your belief system of the scripture? Let me say it a different way. Let me say it a different way. Do you believe that the Lord has forgiven you of all your sins? You believe based on scripture, based on our Christianity, based on the gospel, the good news, that the good news is actually, this is the good news. This is the, I got good news. Front page. This makes front page every day. It should be on the front page of every newspaper. Here's the good news of the, of the day. Everything you deserve, everything that we ex that should have received by, for wrath has been waived, has, has been exonerated, has been torn up. The Lord said, you, you don't ever have to pay ever. You'll never have to pay for your sins. Everything you've ever done, everything you've lied about, all those secret sins that's just between you and the Lord, you'll never pay for them. Even if you continue, even if you continue to do them between now and the time you die, you have a oopsie here or there, you'll never pay for them. I've exonerated you. I've given you a full pass. I've given you full grace, undeserved, undeserved. You've done nothing to deserve this. You will not die and go to hell. You will not experience the second death. You will not burn forever. You, you will not experience eternal separation ever. The, the moment you leave this earth, you, you are immediately in my presence. I've with, I was with you on earth and you immediately with me in heaven. All, be, all because you confessed that I was savior. You repented of your sins and you tried to live the rest of your life for me. Undeserved. You don't have to live a perfect life. You, you don't have to, to be perfect on the commandments. It's undeserved. Undeserved. Underline this word. Forgiveness is just undeserved mercy and grace. It, it, it's looking at the little kid who's over there acting up and messing up and saying, I'm not going to get you right now. I could get you, I should get you, but I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to give you a chance to do it right. Uh, undeserved is the teacher, the professor who, who knew you flunked, who knew you got the D, but gave you a second chance to do a retake, a third chance to do a retake. Then curved the grade and made sure that you still got a B in the class, an A in the class. It's undeserved. Like you didn't do anything. You, you deserved the grade you got. Un undeserved. Undeserved. Holy Spirit, put that in our spirit right now. The Lord has granted you undeserved grace and mercy. Why is this important? Why are you highlighting undeserved grace and mercy? Because that is the foundation of our gospel. That's the foundation of our belief system. You cannot be a Christian if you do not understand that that is the principle of salvation, grace. You are saved by grace through faith. You didn't save yourself. You didn't go to enough church to save yourself. You didn't speak in tongues enough to save yourself. You didn't get baptized enough to save yourself. You can't live right enough to save yourself. As long as you keep living, you're going to keep making a mistake here or there. And he says, grace. Every day you wake up, new mercies. You should die for your sins. You know that thing you did last weekend that you said you weren't going to do? You should die. You know what you did in 96 and 98 and 2015? You should die. Yeah, everything we've ever done deserves death. Death. Here's what the Lord is saying as we learn forgiveness. I forgave you. I let it go. And not only did I forgive you, I've now placed inside of you my spirit. You should have my spirit living inside of you. And my spirit is loving. It's patient. It's kind. It's loyal. It's faithful. It has self-control. Uh, my, my spirit that's inside of you is pure. It's lovely. It, sh it should, it should at all times be speaking to you, saying mercy, 
grace, mercy, grace, because that's who I am. That's my character. That's who I am. I'm a loving God. I, I was patient as, as much as I could be with mankind. I could have ended Adam and Eve and started with a new Adam and Eve, but I didn't. I allowed Noah and that entire generation to go on until the angels came and created an abomination. But if the angels hadn't have messed up, I don't have time to teach it. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. If the angels hadn't have come down and, and, and messed that up, I would have allowed for mercy and grace all the way through. Even now, I hadn't come yet. I haven't come to the earth yet. I haven't come to end it all. Because my mercy says I don't want anyone to perish. Stay with me. Holy Spirit's ministering to you. So this premise of our salvation, this premise of, of, of us being Christians, this narrative of us following our faith. Well, faith in who? Faith in what? Not faith in ourselves. Not faith in some belief system. Faith in God. Faith in YHWH, the Father. Well, what, what's he about? What's his character? Who is he? He is a loving father. So much so that he said, I got to figure out a way to make sure all mankind, all mankind has a chance to have a relationship with me. Long story short, you know the answer. He sent his son, the perfect sacrifice. That's his system. We don't get to argue it. We don't get to debate it. Blood had to be shed. It had to be perfect blood. He was the lamb. When the lamb shed his blood, it opened up the door for grace. Grace that says, I know that you still cuss and you fuss. Grace that says you still drink and lie. Grace that says you look at things you shouldn't look at. Grace that says that in your own heart, you treat people wrong sometimes. Grace that says you're not a perfect person, but I love you anyway. You can mess up 70 times a day and the Lord said, I'll let it go. I don't care. You believe in me? Do you understand that's, it's that simple? Have mercy on the churches that make this too complicated and the groups who, who cause you to follow law. You are saved by grace, not by law. So the moment that you have a bad thought, the moment you do something, the moment that you say something you shouldn't have said, the moment that you get angry, the moment that you get mad, the moment that you just cross the line, grace says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Just don't do it again. Just keep working on yourself. So here's what the Lord is saying right now as we go to phase three of this conversation because grace is living inside of you mercy is living inside of you hope is living inside of you patience is living inside of you it should be the prevailing thought that's living the bible says in romans chapter 5 6 7 and 8 that we have these two forces living inside of us they're constantly fighting they're constantly tugging at one another who's gonna who's gonna win out uh, I, I love that new movie that's getting ready to come out disney did it a, a while uh, two other series ago with the uh, the little characters that are in the, the, the little girl's head and they're constantly trying to fight. I don't know the name of the movie. I can't think of it. Uh, but, but it's a great illustration of the two forces that's inside of us. It's not five. They really could have put like 25 different spirits or emotions or behaviors inside this kid. They can make that franchise go on forever. It's two. Your old nature, the flesh, and your new nature, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in, that these two are constantly trying to control you, get you to, to behave in a way that they want you to. And that we have to be the ones who yield. We have to be the ones who listen. And the Holy Spirit is constantly telling you patience, 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 love. Love, let it go. And your flesh is saying, no, 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 no. I can't let that go. They don't deserve to let that go. No, they, they need to pay. That, that was so wrong. Oh, my gosh, that was wrong. But your, your spirit, man, the Holy Spirit is saying, but, 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 but God forgave you. And don't you remember the stuff that you did? Did you deserve to die? But your flesh say, but, but no, but they deserve to die. They deserve to be locked up. And the two are fighting. And the Bible teaches us that if we continue to pray, if you continue to do what we're doing right now, you continue to get in your word, this always ends up winning out. The spirit of the Lord gives us liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. 
who the sun sets free is free. I don't have to yield to this one. I yield to this one. So right now, we're going to pause and allow this one, the Holy Spirit, to remind us of all the stuff that you did that he gave you a pass on. All the stuff that you should absolutely die for. If you say you have no sin, then you're a liar. Every last one of us has messed up. Some of us still messing up. Holy Spirit, for 15 seconds, I trust you in this moment that you're moving. Will you reveal to us like how great egregious our sins are in your nostrils, were in our nostrils, still are in, our, in your nostrils? speak okay 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 now now here 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 here's here's what I've learned I'm just teaching you what I learned I'm teaching you what I learned here I'm teaching you what I've learned no book taught me this I didn't read this in a book I lived this out it's at this point where we allow his grace you can just substitute the word forgiveness for grace you can allow at this point grace to be received do you receive his grace do you accept his amazing grace do you accept his mercy that says you you get a pass for all that stuff you just thought about what did you do in 90s what did you do in the 2000s what did you do in the 2010s grace you st you're still living right now. He's allowed you to live. Here's what forgiveness is. It's understanding that these are his people. He's God. I didn't create anybody. I don't have control of anybody. The Lord decides what, what his people get and what they don't. He reigns on the just and the unjust. All he's ever asked us to now do as Christians, two commandments I give you. This is a sum up all the commandments, all of them. Don't have to follow 10 commandments. Don't have to follow all these laws that Moses try, tried to come up with. By the way, those laws were man-made. The 10 that God gave us was the 10 that he told us to follow, but then we couldn't follow those 10. So Moses came up with some amendments and more amendments, and then it became what it... He said, two commandments I give you. Just two. Love me, my father, with everything. Everything. Make me first place. Search for me. Find me. Live your life for me. Go after me. Put aside everything let me be your God. The second commandment is almost like the first. Love people. Oh, and a new commandment I give you. Don't, don't love them like you love yourself. Love them the way that I love them. Don't love people the way that you love them. Don't treat people like you want to be treated because we treat ourselves bad. We, if we were honest, we, we have our own self-esteem issues. We don't forgive our own self. So how can I forgive somebody when I don't forgive myself? How can I look at you with love when I don't even love myself? I have this poor self-image of myself, so I'm automatically, automatically going to look at you with that same self-poor image. I was raised wrong, so I'm looking at you. Maybe it's something wrong with you because there's something wrong with me. So we start projecting. We start projecting our own beliefs on other people because of what we went through. So the Lord said, no, 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 no. Don't love people like you love you. Love people like I love you. Well, how did you love me? It takes us all the way back to the grace. I forgave you. I'm patient with you. I believe in you. I'm loyal to you. I'll never leave you. 
okay so what's the application here it's it's easier again it's always easier said than done this is the teaching right now this is where we're at step four or five i don't know where i'm at so now that we understand that i'm supposed to love people the way that he loves them i can't do this on my own i don't because i'm relying on flesh my flesh rises up this side of me says, no, don't love them like they deserve, like God loved them. Put them in jail. 30-year sentence, consecutive, back-to-back, -back, no parole. You're going to die in jail. You're going you're gonna to die before I forgive you. He says, no, 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 no. That spirit that I deposited inside of you, will you, will you live in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of your flesh? Will you, will you pause for a moment? And listen to the spirit. And I guarantee you right now, you're listening to the spirit. That incident, that situation that we went back to at the very beginning, that person that hurt you, that person that you do not want to forgive because your flesh don't want to forgive them. The Holy Spirit right now is teaching you and saying, be patient, be kind. Be merciful. Blessed are the merciful. They receive mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers. They're the ones who's really the children of God. You're not no child of God if you don't want to keep the peace. Don't lie to yourself. Don't fool yourself. Don't be deceived thinking that you're a Christian, but you can't even have peace with your fellow man. So this is a this is a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit right now is teaching you, reminding you that love conquers sins. Love wins over a multitude of sins. Kindness pours a heap of coals on their head. And the Holy Spirit right now is showing you that, yeah, they may have done it on purpose. Maybe they did it on accident. Maybe they haven't apologized yet. It don't matter because I'm filled with the love of God. I, I get to be the hands and feet of him. I, I get to be an ambassador, a role model for the kingdom. But role models for the kingdom don't hate people. Role models for the kingdom don't put people in jail. They are graceful. Understand the definition. It's undeserved. Absolutely, they do not deserve this forgiveness that you're getting ready to give them. That's why it's called grace. Your mama messed up many times. Your husband messed up many times. Your sisters and your brothers, your friends. Grace. We're talking about reconciliation different. That's different. Right now, we're just having a heart. God is looking at hearts. And right now, he says, I just want your heart to see them the way that I see them. But how do you see them? As children that are hurting. I think somebody said this in the chat just a while ago. Hurting people do hurt people. Have you ever considered the fact that perhaps. That they didn't get the therapy that they needed as a child. That their core memories are, are confused. And, and that they they need help. Did you ever consider the fact that perhaps they didn't get the upraising. And the, the modeling that they should have received. To be the husband that they should have been. The friend they should have been. Uh, some of our own parents who've hurt us. They didn't even get what they needed. All of our parents probably should have went to therapy and counseling at six, seven years old. I know in the black community, all the atrocities that they've experienced both in school and at home. My mama never got therapy. My mama was called the N word every day from first grade to 12th grade. Had to deal with hate, had to deal with hurt, had to deal with people always trying to come after her. She should have got therapy. We would have given her therapy today. So, so people who are hurting, who never got help, don't know how to, to navigate those feelings. They, they don't know how to listen to the Holy Spirit. And if they don't have Jesus, then they're definitely living on evil spirits influencing, speaking to them, do it back to them. Evil for evil, eye for eye. She don't want to talk to you, you don't talk to them. Don't speak. Cold shoulder. We're not going to say nothing all day. How does a person who never got the help they needed 
change. How? And then you have to ask yourself this question. What kind of person are we to claim to be Christians, to not have the humanity to look down on a person who needs help, to look to, to, to be kind to a person who needs help? And I'm just using this as an illustration. I'm using this as an illustration. How do we treat people with special needs? People with severe uh, mental, emotional issues. Do we put them in jail? Are we supposed to put them in jail? I know in our society, we do. We, we do put people in jail who should not even be in jail. And again, there's a full construct there. That, that whole pipeline there illustrates our off thinking in America. We should be providing support, providing love. We should have humanity. Uh, we should love humanity in a way that says, I care for you. I want to help you. I want to rehabilitate you. Not throw you in jail because you, you didn't get the training you need, didn't get the therapy you need, didn't get the help you need. So rather than give you grace, I'm going to throw unforgiveness at you. R rather than provide you mercy, I'm going to be critical. I'm going to be bitter. Uh, rather than try to understand why and what happened to you, I'm going to assume that you knew better and that you should have treated me better. And for that reason, I'll never forgive you. For everybody who has had very deep, deep, I mean deep hurt and unforgiveness, people unaliving one another, people harming each other, sexually people doing things to you that you say man why would they ever do that have you considered that we as a human race are flawed that because of adam all of us have the capacity to to go as far as sin or take us we shouldn't think any higher than ourselves than we should because all of us every last person in this chat could be spending 30 years behind jail if it had not been for the grace of God that said don't do it every last one of us has had that sin nature to take a life to do something cruel to do something truly evil you're not special you're not spe don't think you're special this is what John says but this is what his meaning is when he says don't don't think that you don't have sin inside of you don't think you're better than anybody else just because you didn't do it don't think about your husband that he's some worse person because he failed because all of us had it in us that's why I'm Yeshua said this Yeshua said this at the very end of, of Matthew and he's going to say it in Revelation hey, he, well done come on come on welcome into the glory of the Lord because when I was sick you took care of me when I was in prison you were there when I was homeless you, you took care of me and he goes through this whole list of people who we would see as wait a minute they did that to themselves they put themselves in that situation I can't and they, they're going to say but when did when did we see you in prison when did we see you hurting when were you ever sick he said and when you did it to the least of them the people that you thought the people that you thought knew better they were hurting they were in their own prisons they were sick you didn't you didn't know it because no one diagnosed them you didn't know it because no one shared with you their medical records because they never talked about it but deep down inside the person that hurt you it's just like everybody else flawed. And we're moving now to part five or six. I don't know where I'm at. I hope you're following me. So to recap, the Lord took you to that place of, of hurt. Whoever hurt you, whatever you said, I'm not forgiving. We're talking about unforgiveness, bitterness. The Lord said, listen, whatever that was, that was the establishment. That's why you don't want to forgive that person. That was the thing that happened. And the Lord took us to the understanding that what grace is and what true forgiveness is what the definition of forgiveness is is unmerited undeserved you don't deserve it i'm just giving it out for free here's a hundred dollars to everybody well what did i do to get this nothing i just out of the goodness of my heart 
You can have it. Well, how do I get that goodness? Who, where does that goodness come from? The Lord showed us that it was his Holy Spirit that gives us this ability because without the Holy Spirit, I have no capacity to forgive mankind for their atrocities, for their sins, for the mess ups. So then how do I apply that? What's the application of allowing it? Well, I have to listen. I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. These two forces are inside of me, constantly fighting, constantly asking to take control of my thoughts, my actions, my behaviors, my motives. I have to give in to the Holy Spirit. Well, how do I give in to the Holy Spirit? It goes all the way back. It's a circular, a secular uh, effect of going back to grace. I know what I did. I know my failures. I know my faults. And if he is willing and kind enough to give me a pass on wrath, uh, I deserve to die. And he said, you won't die today, Ken. I'm going to wake you up and let you live another day. I'm going to let you have my mercies brand new this morning. You can you know, be the best version of yourself. You have permission to be successful. I don't really care about the stuff you did. That's what grace is. Two commandments. Love me. And then love people like I love them. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. It's a command. If you are Christian, I have no other choice but to give you undeserved mercy and grace. Let it go. It's a choice, spiritual choice. The Spirit's tugging you right now to say, just let it go. I'll never get an apology, but let it go. Uh, they'll never admit that they're wrong. Let it go. They need therapy, but let it go. Uh, they don't even see what they're doing. They're narcissists. They have cognitive dissidence. So what? Let it go. Because I, I was a narcissist at once in the eyes of the Lord. I had cognitive dissidence, meaning I, the thing that I knew was wrong, I accepted it as right because I didn't want to fix my issue. And so cognitively, I disassociated myself that this was wrong. The person that hurt you or it was wrong, uh, it's hard for them to admit it. They need help. We're not talking about them right now. We're talking about you. So in this unforgiveness that now really is hate or bitterness, the question on the table today, do you want to hate people or do you want to love people? So thank you for healing my eye. I don't know why I was irritated. <laughs> Do you want to love people or you want to hate people? And I ask it a different way. Do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? The only people that will end up in heaven are the Christians who have surrendered and lived their lives for the Lord. You cannot say that you love a God that you've never seen, but hate your brother who you see every day impossible those two do not go together that's the very definition of a lukewarm christian you you cannot claim in your heart to to love oh i love the lord i love him i love him i love him but then the people that he wants you to love on impossible you cannot say you have the spirit of God living in you. Now, now, there's no condemnation here because this is where the Lord leaves us here on earth to get better, to learn, uh, to, uh, to grow from faith to faith, to glory to glory. So right now, part six, part seven, eight, I don't know where we're at. I'm just listening to the spirit. I followed this process with many others that I've helped before. The question is easily answered. No, I do not want to hate. I want to love. I want to be the example. I want to be like Christ. I say I want to be like Christ. So I guess I I have to make a decision right now. We're at the decision stage. We're at the decision stage where the Bible says, and I, I've, I know I've said a lot of verses. I'm not giving you the reference scriptures, but this is scripture. You can go back and ask the Lord to show you. I just want to keep a flow here. This is the part where you get to apply what we've learned today the scripture says if your brother sins against you forgive him Peter says wait a minute wait a minute how about seven times that's your divine number that sounds like a good number 
can I forgive somebody seven times and then after the seventh time they mess up? Just move on. And Yeshua says, how about 70 times 70 a day? And Peter and everybody lost it. I wish I could have been there to see their physical reactions, their facial expressions, their shrugging, their Wait, what? Wait, wait, what did he just 70 times seven, 490 times somebody can hurt me and I am to forgive them? Yeah. And, and that's that's not even literal. I'm just giving that to you uh, to, to give you a, a word picture. One. Two so forth and so on that hurts after a while it, it really hurts after a while it, it's downright disrespectful after a while uh, you're not gonna do that again i'm fighting back after a while i'm 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 a it's getting ready to get ugly grace so, so there Yeshua is knowing what his mission was from day one to take on for all mankind everyone's sins not just sin but the multiple atrocities that I committed on his body the, the multiple failures and mistakes that you've committed on his body he did not just have one sin on him he had trillions and trillions and trillions of mistakes all on him at once think about all the centuries that have gone by and the thousands and millions and millions i think we're up to a trillion plus people in the world and each person probably has thousands and thousands of sins. I know my sins are piled high. And you take on the trillions and trillions and trillions of sins that he knew he had to literally take into his body and wear them and be seen from his father as unrighteous. Because he had no sin. He knew no sin. But he took our griefs, he took our sorrows, he, he took our failures, our hurts, everybody's, the person who hurt you, yours. And there he is in the garden, sweating the greatest drops of sweat that look like blood, saying, Father, this is too much. All of these sins, everybody's sins. It's one thing to die for my own sins. That's punishment within itself. That's that's a lot of jail time. That's a lot of whipping. That's a lot of scourging to to deal with my one thousand sins. But to to take on your sins, your cousin's sins, take on the punishment that's deserving of everybody. He kneels in this garden and says, "This is too much. If this cup can pass, if you can please allow another way." Let it come, let it come. But not my will, but your will. So he goes to the cross. Oh, and on that cross, he says it's finished. It's done. It's done. Well, what's finished? His life? No. Your sins. Finished. Clear given a pass unmerited and he dies when he comes back right before he ascends he tells us this this is his final verbal message to the masses it said that he spoke to the disciples he spoke to two on the road uh where they uh Emmaus I can't think of the name of the road forgive me he even spoke to up to 500 people before he ascended and he tells them this it's a simple message I need you all to go into the world all the world tell everybody the good news tell them about me baptize them in the name of me Yeshua 
my father YHWH. And I'm going to send you a comforter. Tell them that, that the comforter is coming. I'm going to literally put inside of you all my spirit. Never has ever happened before. David had my spirit hovering over him. Saul, Elijah, a few others had the spirit, but not living in them. 24-7. 24-7. And when he comes, you will be witnesses with your life, with your love. You will be the witness to your mom, to your dad, to your sisters and your brothers. You are going to share the gospel with your life. Not going to church, not remembering all the scriptures or going in, in volunteering at the food bank. Your life. Step eight, step nine. I don't know where I'm at. Everybody who has ever done something to you where you say it, I cannot forgive them. I need you to take a moment to understand the depth and the height of his love. I, I need you just for a moment to grasp how important your soul salvation is to this theory, to this belief system, to this narrative of salvation. Salvation in itself is this very thought of applying grace. Grace has been given. It's been received. You now have a responsibility to take that same grace and pass it on. Undeserved. For the record, we understand it's undeserved. Undeserved. So that person that, that comes into the room, and now we're going to talk about the, the feelings that come up, right? Well, I think we're at that point. I think we got a good understanding that I have to forgive. Not because of who I am. I'm not some special person. I'm not, it's not me. It's the, it's the God in me. It's in him that I live, I move, I have my being. He set me free. What well, the spirit of the Lord is, there's, I'm, I'm free. I, I'm, not, I'm not even tripping. I'm not worried. I'm not held back. I'm not in bondage. I don't have any fears or hangups. I don't have any kind of self, you know, uh, deprivation or what's the right word? Uh, uh, I'm not in my pride. I'm not in my arrogance to not forgive you. Like I understand this is greater than me. This is bigger than me. This has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with him. I gotta, I gotta forgive mama. I gotta forgive my brother. That's just who God is. That's his character. That's my character now. And I have to listen. This is, this is the, this is the rub. This is where we meet this challenge. I have to choose to let the Holy Spirit live. I have to choose to walk in the Spirit. You do know Christianity is still a choice. Even with the Spirit living in me, I can still choose to do something I shouldn't do. Each of you understand that. I have to choose to forgive. And I've made a decision right now today. Here's your, here's your reset button for forgiveness. Everybody in this chat, here's where we hit the reset button right now. I choose right now, going forward the rest of my life, to forgive everybody who's ever hurt me. I don't need an apology. I don't need an explanation. I'm just going to give them God's love. I'm going to give them. Listen, I'm going to I'm going to role model this for you. If I can if I can coach you in a way or help you in a way that, that makes sense. My high school coach hurt me drastically, drastically, put me in a position that made me a failure. I felt uh, did not give me the opportunity that I thought I should have had. And I did not forgive that man I hated that man with the definition that we know now I was bitter toward him I was critical I put my mouth on him I told everybody what I felt about him I hated him God got me to a point where I, I let it go 
I loved him. I did the opposite of being critical. I did the opposite of being bitter. I let I, 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 I love him. And I saw him as someone who was hurting, someone who needed help, someone that perhaps needed some therapy, someone who didn't have God's love. And I had compassion. I feel bad for him. I truly in my heart feel really bad that he treated me wrong and many others wrong. But I forgive him. It's not his fault. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Got to college. College coach. First college coach after two years. Did me wrong. I could write a book about the mistreatment. I could tell everybody and ruin his reputation. I was hurt. I don't know what he was going through. He had rules. He probably had to follow some system. But it wasn't right. And I walked around for years blaming other people. And the Lord taught me, you're not, you're not better than anybody. You made mistakes. I given you grace, give him grace. Let it, that's my child. That's not your child. You don't, you don't get to decide whose sins are forgiven and unforgiven. You're not God. Where were you, Job, when I put the sand in the sea? together and told them where to stop who are you I let it go I don't care because it didn't define me it didn't change my future I thought it did I thought it had an impact on my life but I come to find out the Lord is in control of my life even the stuff that don't go right ask Joseph Joseph could have hated his brothers he, he could have been bitter he could have been hurt and he was for a little bit he had them playing these games, putting stuff in their bags and going back and go get the other brother. And he was hurting. And the Lord had to reveal to Joseph everything that happened to you. I allowed it for your good. So you got to forgive your brothers. Job can tell us about it. Job's old, his own best friends accused him of the most sacred thing blasphemy you must have done something against God Job you're a liar if we had to sum up Job chapter 2 through Job 41 his friends pretty much call him a liar the whole book you a liar man you did something Job you a big old fake you've been saying and they hurt him do you know Job did not receive his blessing remember the Lord blessed him double fold the Bible says that Job was told by God, you have to forgive your friends. And the moment you forgive your friends, I'll bless you. Wait, forgiveness? Wait, is this is this a, a shadow of, of what Christ had done? Of course it is. Everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Yeshua in the Old Testament. Joseph points to Jesus. Job points to Jesus. I can give you 10 more incidents in my life of people who severely hurt me. And the Lord said, the only way you moving forward, the only way you're going to get that next blessing, the only way I can take you to the next level is for you to have compassion for humanity, to love my people the way that I love them. The only way that you're going to receive what you're missing. Quit blaming it on the devil. The devil didn't steal anything from you. I do not like when people say, I'm going to get back everything the devil stole. The devil didn't steal anything. Yes, we fight against principalities and darkness, but we choose to allow or welcome in that evil. So you get to a point, yes, where you say, I, I, I make a choice to give you a pass. I, I'm making a decision right now. Give you undeserved love. Your husbands and wives that have hurt you. That have lied to you. Mistreated you. Your sons, your daughters who have mismanaged you. Lied to you, hurt you, uh, your co workers, your parents. I go down the list. You know who they are that you said, I'll never forgive them. Today's your day. T today's the day where you see them the way that the Lord sees them. We'll talk about reconciliation later, another day in a moment. But right now, we just got to 
that person in your head that you said, I just, I just can't believe they treated me this way. They continue to treat me this way. You know how the Lord sees that person right now? That's the way we need to see him. You know why we can see them like that? Because he's, he's in us. See, I want you to get that. Right now, sitting in heaven, the Father and Yeshua are looking down at humanity with compassion and love, waiting for everybody to turn their hearts. He's not angry. He's not mad. He's not sitting up in heaven punishing people. He's not putting together some list of to-dos that they must complete to, to reach him. He's looking down from heaven saying, Oh, come on. Come to me, all you that are heavy laden draw close to me that's what he's saying in heaven so then what is he saying in our hearts since he lives in our hearts since we are the temple of the holy ghost since we live and move and have his purpose since we have the mind of christ what is he saying then inside of us he should be saying oh i feel so i feel bad for them i have compassion on them oh how sad. Not, ooh, I wish they get it. So this is your moment. I see many of you in the chat have always already said, I'm done. I love them. I'm going to let the Lord deal with them. I, I'm going to see them the way that the Lord sees them. If you need to say that out loud so you can hear yourself, you need to hear yourself say, I forgive them. I need you to go down the list. Of everybody, the Lord is right now revealing to you people that you haven't talked to, people that you've ignored, people that you just don't mess with anymore. The Lord is revealing to you in this moment all the people that you were bitter toward, critical toward, hateful toward, sar sarcastic toward, the people that you have been uh, mean toward. He's revealing to you right now those people. And I want you one by one. You just don't put it in this chat. This isn't about the chat right now. This is personal. You and the Lord. Lord, I forgive my mama. Lord, I forgive my daddy. Lord, I forgive my brother. Lord, I forgive that coach, that parent, that teacher. Lord, I forgive that ex-boyfriend. Lord, that, that boss that lied on me and got me fired for no reason. I, Everything worked out anyway. Everything worked out. You had something better for me. So why, why am I mad at something that ended up working out for me? Like, all things have worked out for my good. Look at my life. Look at my life. I'm living. I got food in the pantry. I may not have a million dollars in the bank, but I got something in the bank. I got people that love me. I got people that love me. Why am I allowing the past to impact my present? Why am I allow unforgiveness to sabotage my future? Why am I going to let unforgiveness put a strain, a stronghold on the things that the Lord wants for me over here? He said it wasn't meant to hurt you. But to give you a hope and a future. So why? I make a decision. Can I pause? I, 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 I feel like I've been talking for a long time. I'm going to pause. I know the Holy Spirit's been talking to you personally through me. I'm going to pause for 30 seconds and let him to continue to process. Go journal what you need to journal. Write down what you need to write down. Make a list of all the names of people that you just. You need to continue to work on. And now we need to move into reconciliation. So here's the thing. Here's how you know that you, you've, you're you free right now. You can think about it and it don't hurt anymore. Like, I mean, what impact did it have? I trust the Lord anyway. The Lord don't mess over my life. He doesn't cause me to go down. Like he, he leads me besides the still waters. 
he restores my soul. He, he set a table up for me in the presence of the very people who hurt me. My cup overflows. So why am I upset? Sure, surely, goodness and mercy. Wait, wait, mercy? There's that word mercy. It's going to follow me when? How? Where? All the days of my life. I, I just want to pause as you're processing this. Any additional spirits of bitterness, hostility that's sticking around in this chat, you know at this point your days are numbered. You're done. I want to I want to clear the table right here and just identify any and everything that the devil may have tried to sneak in and, and disguised or masked as unforgiveness hatred being fearful of that person mistreatment offense offended torment criticisms cruelty spirits of bitterness resentfulness I resent her I resent that rage violence guilt shame animosity spirits of contention spirits of revenge spirits of strife spirits of retaliation hostility spirits of separation you separated yourself from the family you separated yourself from the friend group you stopped chatting you took yourself out by spirits of being conceited being arrogant and prideful being better than being narcissistic in your own way thinking that you're better than that person scornful vanity spirits of coldness spirits of detaching oneself being indifference it's a difference in giving it to the Lord and man forget them I don't care about them somebody brings some hey man did you hear about man I don't care about them Man, don't be showing me that. I bind that spirit. That's that spirit of it's a, we call it hate and jealousy, ego. All those spirits. All those spirits. There's probably some more I'm missing on here. You don't have power anymore. You lost your power today. We have victory. We have victory. I want to thank everybody who's been commenting here in the chat. I also want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for following through on all this. Here's what we're going to do now. I think I'm going to, I'm going to scroll back up and, and look at all of this. But just simply, just put in the chat. If you, if you walk through this process, this exercise, and you are now the place, you really don't care anymore in a good way. You love them. If you were to see them right now, you'd wave at them. Big old smile. If you received your freedom today, can you just put it in the chat? I'm free. I'm free. I for, or I forgive. I, I don't care no more. It's not even that the Lord is taking care of it. It's 70 times 70. I love him. If, if you receive your freedom, I'm free or I forgive him. Come on. Robert, thank you. for re, Brother, God bless you. And, and for those like Brother Robert who, who dealt with years and years of parental issues, hate, mistreatment, and you said, I never forgive them. Do you know now there's a, let me speak to you on behalf of the Lord, there's a blessing that's getting ready to follow. Uh, there, there's an abundance of God's grace that you hadn't even seen yet that's getting ready to follow. I hadn't seen, ear hadn't heard nor has heart even imagined what the Lord has in store for those who love him. You are showing that you love him right now by saying, I love your people. Put in this chat right now, if you got that revelation that I can't even claim I love God, I'm free right now if I can't love his people. I'm not disappointed anymore. I'm not surprised by their actions. I'm not hurt. I can look at them and just pray for them. I feel like now when you think about them, now when you see them, you should have a heart of compassion. 
a heart that says, man, really? I'm sad for them. I'm not angry anymore. I don't get upset when I hear stuff. I'm sad for them. I'm sad. I pray for them. I'm free. You don't get that don't hold that doesn't hold me anymore. Robert, thank you. I mean, I'm sorry. Roberta, let me start here at the top. This is amazing, Lord. Lord, I give you the glory. Like I you get all the credit for this. I appreciate you. Look look how many people are getting ready to live in victory. They're getting ready to live their lives in fullness and in abundance. In abundance. You you asked for this. You you stayed around and now you're free. Savage King said I'm free. Robert said heavyweight lifted. Uh Elena, I'm free. T Talia, I'm free. Keggy, I forgive, I'm free. Uh sis always I gotta lock in your name. You tell me every time. Seven, I'm free. Uh this is amazing. I'm just scrolling. Look at all of the free. I'm freeze. I'm free. I'm free. I forgive. I forgive another one. I forgive. Oh, the enemy is upset right now. He is upset. Why is he upset? Because who the sun set free is free for real. Like forever free. Never in bondage again will I be held to not forgiving people. And now you know the process. Now you now you understand what his love looks like. So now you can go role model for others who need this type of love. This is all our world needs. He, he came because he is love. Ah, this is good. I want to thank you all for trusting the Lord here. Beautifully humble, I'm free. Trina, I'm free. Ezra, brother Ezra, good to have you on here, man. Congratulations on Saturday, by the way. Your graduation, man. Send me your cash app. Roberta, free. Jessica, I'm free. Solaro, I'm free. I forgive. Sheena, I'm free. I forgive them all. Living by faith, I'm free. I forgive them. Jose, I'm free. I'll leave it in God's hands. That's not my issue. That he's he created the message. You get you get it. You, Lord, thank, we get it. We get it. Robert, I'm free. Overcoming. Forgiveness is a process. You yeah, every it's like a, I forgive them. And and for those of you that are still in the hurt, you're waiting on something to change, you live your life in forgiveness. In un, it's undeserved. It's undeserved. It's they it's undeserved. They don't deserve it. I give it to you freely. It's you. I'm I forgive you. But they haven't apologized. It doesn't matter. I forgive you. Monique, I'm free. I ch I choose it. Yeah, I choose to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of my flesh. Shy said, I'm free. I forgive him. I'm free, Jessica. I love God too much to risk my salvation on unforgiveness. It's not worth it. I'm going to heaven. I'm not missing it. I'm not missing heaven because I didn't understand the, the gospel message of, of freedom and grace. I'm not missing heaven because I was bitter and harsh and cold and ugly towards somebody because they hurt me. I forgive them. Kim said, I'm free. Welcome back, Kim. Sorry that we, we took so long. She said, how do you forgive yourself, though? Oh, we going down. That's a whole nother path that we can go down. But it's the same process. You forgive you. I take that back. It's not a whole nother path. It's a very similar path. Uh, how do you forgive yourself is by realizing who you are and you're sure that you are royalty, that you are king's kid, that, that again, who the sun says free 
I don't hold myself to those standards. Part of the reason we don't forgive ourselves is because we set unrealistic expectations. We put ourselves in an area of pride and ego that needs to be knocked down. And so I can forgive myself by not even expecting a lot out of myself. And I can be very content. Paul said, I've learned how to be content because I had a lot. I've had a little. He said, but I've learned the secret to contentment. How to live with myself. I've learned it. And that's understanding this. This is the actual application, the, the context of this scripture. He said, I've learned that I can do all things through Christ Yeshua because he strengthens me. I can forgive myself because he was with me the whole time. He gives me the strength. I don't, I, it's not, I can't be upset with me because it wasn't me in the first place. What you're really upset with is God. If, 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 if I wanted to go there, which I don't want to yet, because there's another piece here. We're going to talk about reconciliation. But, but for those who haven't forgiven themselves, what we teach, what I teach is that you have to understand that the Lord is sovereign. We have to accept the fact that he is the all-knowing God. That he does not make mistakes with our life. Even when we choose our own free will, he sees every chess piece on the board. And so, when things happen in my life, even the things that I've done myself, the things that I've caused, my own failures, my own mistakes, I've hurt people, I've messed over people, I've, I've, I've crossed the line one too many times, I accuse myself, I have my own self uh, rejection issues and abandonment issues, I've abandoned myself, I don't love myself, I don't like myself, I don't like what I see in the mirror. Then I have to say, Lord, you created me though. You, this is why I wish I could talk to people who are really uh, hurting and, and don't like themselves because it's this thought right here that if he created you the way that he wanted to create you, then what you're really saying is that he made a mistake, that he didn't know what he was doing. Well, what you're really saying when you when you get mad at yourself and you don't want to forgive yourself, you telling God, you you really pretty much telling God that he didn't know what he was doing. And I know that's not what we were saying, but that's what we that's what's being meant. That's what he hears. I can't forgive myself. Do you trust him? He can fix it. He, he can right the wrongs. He can redirect your path. He can fix those things that are off. David was sorrowful. For what he did to Uriah, how he treated Bathsheba, he cried and mourned, mourned and cried. He saw the error of his ways. He couldn't forgive himself. And then the spirit of the Lord revealed to him that even in this, you're still a man after my own heart. Even in all of your own failures, David, you're still royalty. You're still the chosen king. You're still the chosen child. You're still grafted in. You're still a child of the king. So I can forgive myself because he forgave me. He's not holding me accountable. He loves me too much to hold me accountable. So why am I upset with myself? Why am I putting higher standards on myself that God hadn't even put on me? Yes, I am to live a, a life that's holy, acceptable unto God. That's my reasonable service. I am to, to come out of this world and not be in the world. I, I, I understand all that, but at the same time, I'm growing in my faith and he knows that. That's why I'm still here. He'll take you home when you're ready to go home. And I say that in a loving, compassionate way. I say it in a way for those who've already lost loved ones that will help you understand. He is the sovereign God. Nothing happens that he does not allow. So when he's ready to say, Ken, you've learned it all. You've learned enough. You've helped as many people as you need to help. Then he'll call me home. But until then, every day I wake up is a new day to grow, to learn, to, to, to be the hands and the feet of Yeshua, to be his ambassador, to, 
to allow the temple of the Holy Ghost. Kim said, I'm free. But Craig said, I'm free. For you know not what you do. Yeah, that's what he told them. Lord, forgive them. Forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. I have compassion on them. Freely I receive, freely I give. Charlo said, although I'm waiting on the situation, I, I'm still going to be free. I'm, be free. Amen. Said, I'm, I forgive them. I'm free. Come on. Man, you all are amazing. I'm free. All right. Quickly, quickly. And we won't spend a lot of time on this. We've been on here way too long, right? Reconciliation is different than, than forgiveness. It's, it's totally different. I'll use more scriptures. You'll hear me. I mean, I give you the reference, but you'll hear the scriptures in my in, in my explanation, my dissertation here is that reconciliation, the definition is the ability to to go back to the way things were. Let that process for a moment. Forgiveness and reconciliation aren't the same things. Um, it can happen at the same time. There are times where we can sit down and we have a conversation. I forgive you. You forgive me and reset, reset. We're done. You hear me say that a lot in our, our prayers, Lord, reset marriages, re reset relationships between sons and daughters and moms and dads. The reset or the restoration is process. It's time. It's, it's a lot of choices. It's therapy. It's restoring trust. It's reading scripture. It's just being around each other and getting back to a place. Some people can do it overnight. Uh, me and my brother can disagree, argue about something. And two minutes later, we've learned. We've just learned to love each other. Like, man, I ain't, I'm not tripping over that. My, Dre, my bad. I, I shouldn't have said that. You know, he'll say, hey, we got off. Big old hug. And the reset button is hit immediately. Like it never happened. And then there are other people that the reconciliation takes. Again, it takes two people to reconcile. So you may have forgiven and you're ready to reconcile. But the Lord may need to work on that person's heart. That's what we're waiting on a lot of times is that the Lord may just need to work on their heart. So what do you what do you do between now and the reconciliation? Or what if you don't want to reconcile? What if you cool? I forgive them. I'm not sure if I want to go out to dinner with them, invite them over to my house. How far do I take the reconciliation? What, what does the Lord require of me? That's what we go back to. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. You can't force reconciliation. You, you can't uh, insist that it happens. Yeshua tells us in the chapter uh, of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, he gives us a very clear, I mean, as clear as mud. Mud's not clear, but that's just the same we use, right? Very clearly on what reconciliation looks like. He says, if you have an alt against a brother, brother sinned against you, forgive him, forgive him. But the reconciliation is I go to you and I say, let's reconcile. Let's, let's own it. Let's hold the accountability where accountability is due. Not, not guilty pleas, not uh, uh, making anyone feel guilty or condemned. That's, that's not what we're doing. We're just getting back on the same page. And the Bible says if that brother says no, I don't know what you're talking about. You hurt me. But I didn't, why are you offended? Why are you so easily offended? I didn't do anything wrong. Yahshua says, go get another person who was there, a person who was aware, a person who may understand the right and wrong from the situation. It may not even been there, but they understand the way, wait, wait, I'll go with you. And the Bible says, take him. Jesus said this. Go to the person and say, hey, we want to reconcile. We want to make this right. We, we want to clear the air. We want to get back to the way it was. I got a third party. I got maybe someone who's an arbitrator that understands. Let's you were wrong 
And we just want to make it right. And we just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And perhaps it doesn't happen again. Maybe you, you use your words more carefully. Maybe you think about what you say. Maybe you, you don't do that ever again. And just want to make sure you understand it offended us. I forgive you already. I'm not looking for an apology. I just want to reconcile. We want to be able to come to birthday parties and not walk on eggshells. We want to be able to enjoy the 4th of July and not wonder and ask who's going to be over there. I want to be able to drive by your house and not worry if... if there's animosity there. So can we reconcile? Can we get this straight? And the Bible says, if that person still says, no, no, y'all are wrong. I don't want to forgive yet. Uh-uh. Then the Bible says you could go get a majority, the church, a group of people. Go get the whole family. See, do you understand that we shouldn't be suing one another? Footnote. Christians shouldn't be suing one another. Christians shouldn't be taking one another to court. Yeshua told us what to do. Why are we not listening to Yeshua? He told us exactly how to handle disputes, how to handle misdemeanors and altercations. If somebody did something wrong, don't hit them back. If they ask you for your coat, give them your, your, your jacket and your shirt too. Like, why, why, do we, why do we follow? Because the law said we can. We're supposed to follow the laws of the land. There's a lot of laws that are evil. He told us what to do. You have an issue with your brother or sister. Quit filing lawsuits. I get it. Some things have to be handled legally because it's property or land. But are we asking the Lord for guidance? Or have we tried this process first where we sit down one-on-one, -on -one, then we sit down with two or three, and then we sit down with a group, our own jury, our own loved ones, our own family members, and say, hey, we all need to talk to you. Wait, why are y'all calling a meeting on me? Because we love you. We love you. And so we just want to sit you down, talk to you, and, and, and let you know that this is perhaps something that you need to change in your thinking. It's impacting the family. It's impacting us. You did this. You did that. And we're not here to put you in jail. We're not here to, to make you feel guilty, condemned, or... or we just, we, we're here to love you and we want you to know that that can't happen again. You can't come around the family and be drunk like that again. You can't treat people like that again. You can't treat my sister like that ever again. Like we're here to let you know that we love you. This is all love. Like no one's raising their voice. No one's getting loud. No one's standing up or no one's pointing fingers. We're just here to love you. Remember, this is compassion. This is compassion. This is compassion. Give me a second, Cato. I'll explain it. Let me finish my point. I saw your note. We'll get there. So the Bible says in verse, and this leads up to our memory scripture. This is the context of our memory scripture. Uh, if that person decides they do not want to reconcile, Yeshua said it himself. Paul said it himself. Peter said it himself. At that point, you can stop with the reconciliating. You can shake the dust off your shoes and put it in the hands of the Lord. I still forgive you. I still love you. I'm still going to wave at you. I'm still going to show up. I'm not, not going to show up just because you're there. You're not going to ruin my fun. I forgive you. I choose to love you. Now, your behavior and your actions are on you at this point. And I can move on. I don't have to force the reconciliation. I did my part. I did my part. Does that make sense? Did that, did that answer the question that needed to be answered? Are we on the same page as far as reconciliation? Reconciliation is not that hard of an issue to understand biblically. It's, it's, it's right here in our word, how to reconcile. It's a choice also. You choose to go call somebody and say, hey, I, I, and I'll give, you, I'll give you a situation. I'll, I'll keep this as real as we can, can make it. I have some family members that hurt me really bad bad terribly bad 
lies, misunderstandings. No one called to verify or see what was going on. Just kept their own little narrative going. And for almost two and a half years, I was bitter. I was angry. I was frustrated. It was during that same time period that I was going through my depression. I think I shared this with many of you. Like My life wasn't perfect. Brother Ken, Christian Ken, Preacher Ken. Too much happening at the same time. And the Lord had to show me, remind me of my own teaching that he gave me to look at them with compassion, look at them with love, look at them as if perhaps they didn't get the therapy that they needed or the help they needed. They didn't get the right right role modeling as a, as a child. Love them. Forgive them. So I forgave them. I, I let everybody know I'm good. Like, I'm good. But why you don't talk to them? I had some people ask me, why you don't call them? I said, I do. I check on them. So one of the family members, I went out of my way multiple times to connect, to reconcile. I did not follow steps two and three like Yeshua asked. He said, go get somebody else. Sit down with them. Um, I, well, I actually maybe did. I did step two because we got another cousin involved and said, let's. Let's all try to figure this thing out together. The, the problem was for me is that I had no group. The, they were the group. They were the majority. So ha had I sat down uh, with the group to discuss this because their minds and their spirits weren't in the right place, perhaps it, it, it would have looked like I was the one that was being ignorant or the one that was off. And so I was listening to the Holy Spirit. I was listening to the Holy Spirit. I reconciled three or four times, called, left messages, sent text messages, went by people's homes. I did my part. And even in a couple of those instances, you could say it was a group gathering because in one of those instances, I was over there trying to reconcile with the, the, one of the key individuals that was was um, responsible or kind of leading the pack. And as I was there, other people start showing up. I didn't know they were going to be there. The, the Lord knew they were going to be there. And as I'm sitting there talking, another one and another one. And I'm sitting there saying, Lord. And I kept a smile on my face. I kept good energy. I told everybody in that room I loved them, that we missed them. No harsh feelings. We come in peace. And uh, I, again, I cannot speak for other people. They have free choice. They have free will. All I can be responsible for is that I, I know. I don't care what anyone else says or say I did or didn't do. I know what I did you know what you're doing you know you sent the text message and tried to fix it they can lie all they want to you did your part you stopped by you knocked on the door you waved you smiled they're going to say otherwise they're going to take it out of context but did you hear how she said did you hear what he said it's all good I did my part did I answer that question did that help this is, has this been good today For those of you who need continued support and healing, just keep keep staying in the scripture. Keep praying. The Lord will get you there. But I believe we, we had breakthrough today. Sis, did we have breakthrough today? Does anybody have any other questions regarding this? Forgiveness and reconciliation. Anybody? People that you hadn't talked to in a long time. There's fathers and mothers that you just cut off sons and daughters that have cut you off aunties and uncles and friends and loved ones exes I think we got the solution just love people like the way he loved them see them the way he sees them any other questions I'm going to close this out you've been more than patient we've had prayer a little bit of bible study a little bit of healing service deliverance service I'm going to let y'all have y'all's day I'm going to read a couple of more comments and I'm going to get out of here. 
Yeah. So, so if they don't want to see a counselor, if, if they refuse, if they refuse, there's nothing you can do. You did your part. Now, you, this is what we pray every morning. This is why we pray every morning. We pray for those who, who hurt us. We pray and ask the Lord to bless them, to heal, heal them. We ask the Holy Spirit to speak to them. We ask the Holy Spirit to send a laborer. Uh, they stopped listening to me. They stopped considering that my words had some type of impact. So I prayed that when she or he goes to work. I pray that when he or she uh, attends a basketball game, I pray that when he or she talks to another loved one, that they have an aha moment, that, that a situation comes up like David did, where Nathan had to kind of reveal to him through another source, another way, that you were wrong. And then David said, whoa, wait a minute, you talked about me. That's how I treated her. Wait, I didn't realize this is how I've been acting this whole time. Wait, that's me. We pray and say, Lord, send a laborer. Send a laborer. All right. Let me look here. Keggy said, if there was abuse involved, can we forgive? Of course. Let go? Of course. But yeah, don't put yourself back in harm's way until they're 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 here. See, there's it's two pieces here. That's why I'm, I, I want to be very clear, Sister uh, Keggy, that there's forgiveness, and then there's reconciliation. If that person is on drugs, still in an abusive pattern, destructive behaviors, I, I'm going to keep me and my family safe. I still forgive you. I feel I feel really bad for you. I have a heart of compassion for you. But I'm not going to put myself in harm's way. I would tell my daughter, don't go back over there until his mind gets right, until he gets some get right, until he reconciles, until he asks for, you know, he, he has some things he have to do. You still have to forgive. You, you have to let it go. But don't, man, uh -uh, don't put yourself in harm's way. Very good question. Very good question. Sis said, I really need to hear this. I thank the Lord. Can we give him the credit? Just with your own mouth, say, Lord, thank you, because I don't want any of it. The Lord did this to, for us. He did this for us. Felicia, he did this for us. He does this all the time. I don't know why he's choosing to use us right now for these opportunities. This is all of us. We're all in this together. I, I'm not even able to speak had it not been for you all's uh, you know, openness and sincerity and in, in, in allowing us to, to have these conversations. I know it feels one way, but it's two way. I'm reading the chat. You're being honest. You're being open. You're free now. You guys are getting ready to go through life on a whole nother level. So we're done cutting people off. They cut themselves off. They don't want to speak to me, but I love them. I'm over. I'm, whenever they're ready to reconcile, I'm here. Felicia said, I could not forgive today, but I'm working on it. That's fair. That is the most sincere, honest thing that I could hear. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Continue to work. You, you know the steps now. I'm going to put this on YouTube in a separate section called Convos After Prayer. We'll title it Forgiveness. So you can go back and listen to this, Felicia, anytime you want. Listen to the different steps. Play it at night. Play it on road trips. Let the Lord minister to you in his own way. Maybe there's a step that I missed that's specific to you. But it's all about grace. It's grace. I'm not missing heaven for grace. I'm going to give it out. I'm going to give I'm going to give it out. And you continue to work on it. I, I appreciate you. Let me tell you that again, just so you didn't hear. Me. Just in case you didn't hear me. Felicia, thank you. Thank you. For your honesty and transparency and working on it. That means a lot to me that you said I'm going to work on it. And then I'm going to close here in a, in a word of prayer. I'm going to answer the brother's question quickly. Shy said, I didn't even know I need to be free. Yeah, there's a lot. Like when I did this exercise a few years ago and I did it in 2009. The people that you didn't even think you had a grudge against. The Lord starts showing you. Like, oh, yeah, you, you're in your feelings about this person and you still upset about that situation that happened in the class meeting and you still upset about this that happened at church 
and you mad at this pastor and you still got your feelings and you still in your feelings about it. and i'm like wait a minute wait a minute lord i was just asking you to help me with the coach and you didn't show me five other people he said because they come back seven times stronger they, they come back to destroy you and put you in a position to where you So do I just keep praying for reconciliation? Yes. That's what we pray every morning for husbands and wives, sons and daughters. Lord, Holy Spirit, you always hear me start with Holy. So you go, what happened today was Holy Spirit. Ruish Hakadesh in Hebrew. Ruish Hakadesh did everything today. I didn't do. He didn't need my help. He already knew this morning when you woke up. He knew last night when you went to bed that he was going to start doing this. He started working on your heart. He started the whole forgiveness process months ago, years ago. He, he, this was a setup. Sister Jamie, still on here. I didn't see you on here. Lydia. She said, I have my grandkids last five days, so I'm that's okay. Lydia, you're in my prayers. You are not, you already know you're in our prayers, sis. I pray you you all are amazing friends and family to even go along on this journey with us so the brother said look at uh can i can i look at I try to always read the context of the scripture. You got to read the pretext, the post-text to get the context. And so I'm just, just trying to make sure I read it and, and understand what you want an explanation. Gathering the 12 around. If you have to go, go ahead and leave. I don't want to hold you up for your day. I don't want you to have to spend your whole day with me. We've been on here since 6 a.m. Some of you jumped on a little bit later. I'm just going to read the scripture. First of all, Cato, are you still here? Because I'm not going to explain it if he's already left the chat. Let me see. Cato. Brother Cato, are you, are you here? So I, I read from different versions. I have a, um, a tick, TikTok on these different versions. There's a scale that we use in Christendom on the relevancy of the Bible not to go into too much detail but there's three versions of the Bible that you can always purchase and within those three versions are various versions so for instance the very first type of Bible there is is a word for word they went and got the, the Dead Sea Scrolls and then even some ancient scrolls that they found after the Dead Sea Scrolls and said this is exactly the word for word translation god god faith faith hope hope and they did a word for word translation there are about 10 bibles in this word for word i read one of the best versions on the the far end of the scale called the nasb the nasb uh, the new american standard bible i think that's what nasb means nasb is in my head it is as close to word for word as you're going to get the esv is also a word for word king james is in that word for word category but it's somewhere in the middle the, the new king james is actually closer to word for word than the old king james because again new writings and things have been found since then that we can now go back and rewrite and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not really the word for word. Here's the actual word for word. The, the second version of Bible that you'll see out there is a thought for thought. They don't take the actual words. It's the thought. This is what he meant. And so in IVs fall in uh, the thought for thought. There's many of them. I have a scale. I have a scale on my TikTok. You might have to scroll down a little bit, but there's a scale. Uh, I may repost it. And then the third version of Bibles that are out there are paraphrases. There's nothing wrong with 
any of these Bibles. You have to read all of them to maybe get an understanding, get your concordance as the Holy Spirit. What fits kind of in this uh, paraphrase is the Living Bible, which is the closest on the scale to the word for word, the thought for thought. Like if you were to go in order, the Living Bible is there because, again, it's just a paraphrase of the word for words. It's just paraphrasing. It's very close. But it's not word for word. The furthest thing that you can get away from, and I highly suggest to people do not get this Bible because it's nowhere close to even to a paraphrase, in my opinion, is the Message Bible. It's not word for word. It's not thought for thought. In my opinion, it's not even a paraphrase that that person just whatever. So to answer your question, answer your question, answer your question. Um, I read from the NASAB. I read from a Christian Jewish Bible that actually has Jewish words uh, mixed in. They use the word YHWH. They use Yahshua. They use like actual Hebrew words in place of words that we would have otherwise put Jerusalem. It says Jerusalem. Instead of David, it says David. Right? It uses those different things. I uh, hope that helps. I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, Miss Monique. Yeah, Christ is Lord. So, I don't know what that question was meant for, if there was a, a, a trickery to it or a reason behind it. Uh, the word Christ, the definition for Christ is just anointed one or chosen one or savior. There was a promised savior all the way through the Bible, all the way from Genesis. There's indication that someone would come to relieve us from from all of the sin that Adam caused. And you can find it in Exodus and Leviticus, David, Samuel. You you you, you pick a Bible, you, I mean you pick a, a, a book, the Savior's mentioned, the anointed one, the king. Isaiah talks about it. Jeremiah. There are over 400 references that one day in the future the Christ would come or the Hamashiach. Hamashiach, four syllables. You don't have to be super spiritual to use this word. It just simply means Christ or the anointed one, the chosen one. Hamashiach is coming. So when we say Jesus Christ, we're really saying Yahshua, which was his actual enunciated name. Yahshua Hamashiach. You're not super spiritual. That's his actual name. That's his name. My name is Ken Doughty. If you ever wanted to know how to pronounce that last name, my family pronounces it Dow T. Like Bow T. How T. It's Dow T. I have been called Ken Dottery, Ken Dottery, Ken Dottery. They put E's and R's and all kind of other stuff in my name. And I politely will correct them. It's Dow T. That's how we pronounce my name. And if you want to be really particular, my name is Ken Dowdy Jr. My dad was the senior. My son is the third. I'm in the middle. Just That's my name. That's what my mama named me. That's what my friends call me, Ken Jr. Ken, I'm not Doherty. I don't know who Doherty is. Well, that's how we pronounce it. I thought it was Dotty. I thought it was Dotty, like daughter. Do no, it's Dow T. That's that's my name. I don't care what they how they pronounce it or where they want to respell it in Germany or in in Mandarin or uh, Swahili it, in Tagala. I don't care what y'all think my name is. I need you to pronounce Ken. Well, over here your name is going to be Cheyenne or whatever. No, no, I won't answer to that. I answer to Ken. Whole nother conversation there. He's still Jesus, the English equivalent. But I choose to use the name Yeshua because there's power in the name that his daddy gave him. He told Mary, you will name him Yeshua. Yeshua Hamashiach. All right. Is the brother still on here? I've been. Ezra. It's or it's Ezra. Have I been saying your name wrong? Oh, you, you said you've been Eraza. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. 
Yahshua. I don't care. I don't even know the spelling is important as much as the pronunciation. Now, the spelling of father is important. His personal name was Y-H-W-H. I've said this before. I said quickly, if you're just new to my channel, uh, don't let anyone tell you that they know the pronunciation of the ancient letters Y-H-W-H. It's called a Tremayagatan. I always pronounce that wrong. Tremayagatan. Those are the four syllables or the four letters that make up the the name that he gave Abraham, that he gave Moses. That's my personal name. Who do I tell him sent me? It's not I am that I am. That was, again, a translation. It was like as close to a word for word that they could get the actual translation in a Jewish Bible. It's Y-H-W-H. No one can tell you that it's a Y or A or E. That's their that's their assumption. I believe that the ancient pronunciation based on scripture was lost on purpose. Man could say that we we left out that name. We replaced it with the word Lord because we didn't want to dishonor the Lord. We didn't want to dishonor his name. And so even back to the ancient writings, we're talking about the 600. The very first Bibles in 500, the writings, 300 years after Jesus had died, the writings started changing the name of YHWH to Lord, to Elohim. Uh, they, th they start changing it all together with God because they were afraid of dishonoring his name. They didn't want to bring shame to his name. They didn't even want to get close to blaspheming the name. So they replaced the name in all of the ancient Bibles with Lord. When we started writing Bibles in the 1600s, King James, you'll always know that the word was YHWH because it will say the Lord. Go look at your old Bibles and it will always be capital L O R D. L O R D lets you know, capital L O R D lets you know that it was actually supposed to be YHWH. That was their way of letting us know that this was the actual, like he used the name. David used the name YHWH, but we, we don't want to dishonor him. So we're going to put the Lord is my shepherd. When David really said YHWH is my shepherd, I shall not want. Does that make sense? So I say all that to say this. What was I saying? That the names are important. The names are important. This is name. I choose to say Yeshua Hamashiach. And the more and more and more I get closer to the Lord, the more and more I find myself calling on that name. Because at that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. He's not coming out of heaven as Jesus. He's coming out of heaven as Yeshua Hamashiach. We're going to look up and say, ah, I even believe our own spirit man, our own spirit man will connect with the, the actual name. Just me. I could be wrong. He's going to come out the clouds and there won't be 1,500 different translations of the name. Like our spirit man that he's given us are all going to look up and say, it's Yeshua. Oh, he's coming on the cloud. It's Yeshua. Look at all the angels. Boom. Like that. We're going to be taken up. All right. So let me help this brother real quick. I don't know if he's here. I don't know. Do, do y'all want to hear this explanation? I don't know if, if, if it's either here nor there now. He wanted to hear the explanation. Are you are you still here? If not, we're going to close this out. We've been on here since 6 a.m. No, no water, no coffee, no breakfast. If I wasted your time, I appreciate you just even listening. I know some of you use this as a podcast, as your radio uh, morning uh, uh, listening. So I'm I'm a priest. I'm gonna read a few more comments and then I'm gonna close out of here if he's not gonna show up. A lot of people come, they ask questions, then they leave. Um, and we all do it. We scroll, we scroll, we scroll. Not interested, not interested, not interested. And then the Holy Spirit will stop you. Sneezy said, what was the beginning of God? He is, there is no beginning. He's always been God. 
It, it and it's it's not something we can put our minds to. There's no logic to it. You can't understand it. Like that's why they call him the ancient of days. Like before days even began, before time began, he was the ancient one. He's always existed. He always was. He always is. That's why they try to translate his name as I am or I was. I always will be. I'm I'm just I'm the created one. I'm the creator. Kato, one last call. Let me read these chats and then I'm going to get out of here. He said, why does it say son of David have mercy on me? That's an easy ex explanation. I, I, I can get to it quickly if he shows up. Ah, Lord, thank you for this day. This will be this will be on YouTube later today. You can go back and find everything we've done. Our prayer will be in one section. And then I have to download it again and cut it, edit it, and put this section in the um, All right, I needed to hear this, this, that, and the other. Answer my question. I had for a few years. Praise the Lord. It's been a blessing. Um, I haven't cut them off yet. I'm just I'm just looking at the chats. There was Felicia's comment. Much respect. Um, three grandsons praying for them. What Bible do I have? Can you say Christ? This is good. Um, all right. Off the record. So we're done. Yeah. Can we can we say we're done? Thomas Chain Bible, that's a good one. Have you heard of that Bible? I have. I have. It's a good Bible. Um so it's so Yah yeah, Yahweh yeah, we've said that. We, we created the vowel sounds. Think about that just for a moment. We came up with the alphabet. We told E, you're going to say E and I and E. We told, we told A that A would be A and R. We, we, we pronounce. You go to a whole nother uh, 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 language group and the German language pronounces letters differently. And you go over to another group and they choose to take the same letter and and all these different sounds so man chooses the language that's in their culture this goes all the way back to the tower of babel we don't have time to explain that where everyone spoke the ancient language we don't know the ancient language and the bible says that as they were trying to reach the lord this is where the two or three come together they could probably accomplish anything they can ask for anything. I'll be there. And they built this tower. The Bible says that as they continue to build this tower to the Lord, this is why I, I disagree with people who argue about how was the pyramids built. They built a tower that almost touched heaven. Now, they were going to literally touch heaven, but they were building high. They were coming together. They were on the same page. And for whatever reason, the Lord said, not, not right now. This, this isn't the dispensation for you all to do this. And he allowed their groups to be broken up and their languages to be formed and so from there we have all these different sounds and language and even from there languages have evolved and split and so when we say Yahweh that's how us in America us in the English language have chosen what about the other 200 languages have you ever, have we ever thought about like what are the other 200 languages what do they translated YHWH to be because it all comes from the, the ancient Hebrew. What vowels did they put in there? How do they pronounce his name? So if you looked at all four letters, the Y is actually pronounced. If you got a, a, a Hebrew dictionary, I'm, I apologize. I'm going long here. I'm done. The Hebrew dictionary uh, uses or says that, that that letter, that letter Y in all of the Hebrew is Yod. But it is not pronounced Yod sometimes. If you leave it by itself, it's Yod. Y-O-D, Yod. But then when you see Jerusalem, it's not Yod-Jerusalem. When you see Yehovah, 
it's not yod hova when you see joseph or yosef it's yosef it's not yod osef and so just like our z and our ch and uh, sounds can change so the y is yod the h is ha ha or hey depending on again how you read it hey the w has a v sound there is no w the, the the w in hebrew go do your own research the w has a v sound just like some of our syllables you look at the letter and you say wait a minute that doesn't sound that way confusing us as kids that's where we hear and when we grew up jehovah the because the ancient text tried to get very close to the word for word it made a v sound jehovah so where did we get a wuh from because it could go either way depending on how you spell it and what you used there is no j in the e in the hebrew language so we don't even say jehovah right it's probably yehovah but wait is it a o or an a is it ya or yo who knows you have some people say yehovah some people say yahweh some people pronounce the V, some people pronounce the W. It's lost. And I don't think the Holy Spirit is telling any particular one person or two people or groups, this is the right way to say it. Here's why I say all this, and I've said this before, I'll say it again. What he actually did in his all creation, he saw the big picture. This is the big picture. I'm going to allow my name, the pronunciation, the letters will still be there, but the pronunciation will be lost. Because I'm going to send someone whose name you can pronounce. And the actual definition of his name is YHWH saves. The name Yeshua or the name Jesus, if you go look it up in a dictionary or the Bible, it means saves, that he sa that God saves. YHW, like the actual name, the ancient name saves the ancient name put a plan in place the ancient name are one father may they be one as you and i are one so even the name yeshua is connected to the name of god y-h-w-h saves who is jesus to you who is yeshua to you the one who saves the chosen one the hamashiach the anointed one all right, let's get out of here. Let me scroll, make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, that diagnosis that you had, and we talked about this, I think, in the, in, the, in the private chat. You don't have to live with the, that diagnosis. You have to believe. All the way to the very end, you believe. You, you go... As far as God and life allows you to go with the understanding that I'm healed, I'm free, I'm cured. You can say what you want to say. You can say what the charts say. But my belief is that I'm healed. Lord, she's healed. All of our, It's the same prayer I pray for all of our friends who have cancer. We believe that they're already healed. We believe they already have the victory. We're just waiting. We're waiting on the Lord to follow through in his timing. He's not a man that he should lie. Set a reminder for yourself to at least bring water tomorrow. <laughs> I will. I've been doing this a year and I forget every time to bring water in here. Never a waste of time. I do need to stay hydrated. I'm going to go in here and get a big old, big old cup of water. All right. Um, you're sad about last night's Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so my, for those that are my friend, y'all can be my friends on Facebook. Come on. Like this is relationship. God is teaching us and showing us that this goes beyond just church or building. This is about people's lives so if you want to find me on facebook same name me and my wife kissing on youtube me and my wife kissing instagram twitter me and my wife kissing um not perfect but that's our life so find me on facebook what we do on facebook for those that want to be a part of our bible studies on tuesday uh, i actually open up messenger 
and you didn't get to hear it last night if you've been new to our channel, but Jamie, Gracie, Crystal, many others, we have conversations. Like they get to be, a, last night was just me and my wife talking. Sometimes my wife has work or she's busy. Uh, and so it's just me and whoever can jump on messenger. And so last night messenger crashed on me. And so Miss Jamie couldn't come on and be a part. So I apologize for that. I hope your son did well at the baseball game. Monique said, I'm so glad the Holy Spirit stopped. Yeah. All right. Good. My husband was with me when I said I was free. That's beautiful. That's amazing. That's amazing. All right, I'm just I'm just uh, scrolling through these last couple of chats. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm gonna let you all go. Can I, can I ask you to do one thing? We're done. We're done with prayer. We're done with the after conversation. This is just Ken now. This is Ken personally talking, just one on one. Have nothing to do with the ministry. Have nothing to do. Well, no, it has nothing to do with the, this ministry of prayer. This is just me talking. I don't know who's still on here. I, I have somewhat of announcement, but I. Um, it's not an announcement. I'm going to let the Lord do whatever he wants to do. So this is just personal time now. Okay. So don't, don't connect this to prayer. Don't connect this to the Bible studies. Don't connect this to anything we said. Um, part of what God is doing in my life right now. I'm just sharing. Can I just share? Are you okay with that? Can I, this don't connect. I'm not even putting this on, on any YouTube. This is just intimate. Now this is private. Let me see who's still on here. Okay. Felicia. No, all right. My wife's still. All right. So this is just me sharing. They said share. Go ahead and share. We feel like family, don't we? Y'all have come to know us as family. So uh, Ezra, real quick. If you are unaware that you haven't forgiven someone, can you still? Yeah. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit will work Ezra over time. Like the hurt that I had in my heart toward my coaches. I didn't know the Lord revealed over time. I did. I was unaware. It took a trigger. It took a situation. Somebody mentioned something and I'm like, wait a minute. I, I'm still mad. I forgot I was mad at you. Have, you. have you ever done that? I forgot I was mad at you. Yeah. God forgive you. He'll show you. We're still here on earth, so he's going to give you time, brother. So, 2019, roughest spot in my life ever, 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 ever. Lost my dad. Me and my wife weren't on the same page. Relationship with my kids was topsy-turvy. There were some other things going on in my personal life, and then I lost my job. Job that I thought I'd be with, be at for for forty years. They let ten thousand of us go. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I work for, but I thought that they would do me right, and they didn't. But I learned from it. Two months later, the Lord blessed me with another job. Thought I'd be there for at least another fifteen years. Name of that company was a well known company. It's a lab company. I had a call center. I was a senior manager, and I did really well. The company that decided. That they didn't need our, our department anymore. So all seven of my supervisors that reported to me, including the vice president that I reported to and the 200 plus frontline agents dismissed last day, December 8th, got a phone call. Ken, today's your last day. I need you to announce to your employees that a few of them today is their last day. And over the course of the next two months, some of their, their last days will be February. That was February, I mean, that was January, December of 22. Didn't have a job from December of 22 all the way to September of last year. I started this ministry. The Lord put it on my heart January 1st, get online, start preaching. I said, how? My wife said, the, the masses, the, you heard the Lord. I said, I heard masses. She said, then it has to be the internet because you can't go to enough churches to, to speak to the masses. The Lord has done everything ever since. So I still needed to work. I said, Lord, I can do your work. I'll, I'll sacrifice, do whatever you need me to do. Uh, 
but I still got a mortgage. I got two kids that, that they're in college. I got two weddings that I'm probably going to have to start saving for here in the next couple of years. And we have our own needs and wants. The Lord said, trust me. So we started the ministry last January. I was without a job, January to September of 23. Stay with me here. The Lord finally blessed me with a job. I started working, good income. Everything went well. For that season of my life, the Lord has sustained us. I was able to start saving again, start able to, to get things back to where I thought they were. March of this year, that company also surplused me. Three good jobs over four years. The Lord said that was your time. I questioned the Lord at the, at the beginning in 19. I had a few questions last year, but it was very clear and obvious to me what he was doing, what his will was in my life. And as I got closer and closer to the Lord, the more I kept saying, I'm listening, I'm listening. Samuel, Samuel, Ken, Ken, I'm listening. I'm listening. Your servant listens. And that's the genesis of what whatever this is. We don't even have a name for it. We've never taken an offering. We don't do cash apps. There are no seed offerings. We don't beg you to fast and pray. We just we just follow the word. Fast forward to my announcement. I felt that the Lord has been sharing with me to, to be done with corporate. I've been praying about it. I've been saying, do I need to go back and find a, guy, a job? I've been filling out applications. I have a master's degree with 25 years of leadership abilities. Been to the Philippines nine times. I've led masses and groups of people, project plans, you name it. I've done it. I'm a pretty good leader. I'm energetic. I have the motivation. I know how to how to organize things and performance management, coach people, motivate people. I was an AU coach for the 10 years that I coached my son and daughter while working uh, at the other two jobs. I know how to multitask, keep things in order. I got all this skill. I'm just going to be online and preach the rest of my life. Okay, if that's what you want. That's fine. We still got to eat. My wife's been holding it down. So, and he started dropping things into my spirit years ago. And I've always told myself, when I get old and retire, I'm going to start going after those things. When I get to that point, when I'm about 58, 59, start drawing social security, get close to retirement. All these visions that I had, writing books and building apartments and doing this and doing that. And I got like a list. I'll start them then. Well, little did I know, perhaps, that the Lord was tugging at me in 19. Now, maybe I didn't listen. I don't know. And then in 22, when it happened last year, I was looking for a job doing this, looking for a job doing. I'd come on here, be online with you all like I am now. Then I go in my office, do a Bible study to myself, and then I would look for a job the next four hours. And every day I was looking for jobs. My wife would tell you, I filled out so many applications. Got close a couple of times, third interviews. Maybe the Lord was just encouraging me, motivating me, but I finally landed that job. When I lost my job in March, you know what I said? Lord, do you want me to work? Like what? I got to do something. He's been telling me all those things that I've put in your heart. I want you to fulfill them now. Not like tomorrow now, but over the span of the next couple of years, I'm going to start using you. You got books inside of you. You got businesses inside of you. You got plans, plans, plans. I'm getting ready to manifest those plans. We're done with Bible study. I'm not soliciting on behalf of the Lord. I'm not turning his house into a den of thieves. That's not my purpose. We're just personally sharing now. This is my personal time. The Lord knows I've set a line of demarcation between ministry prayer and now what I'm sharing with you. So I wrote a book. I wrote my very first book. I give him the credit. I give him the, the, the glory. It took me three to four weeks to write some things that have been on my heart for years. It's a small devotional. I say small. It's 102 pages for men. Some men's devotional. I started a website. Got an LLC. Got my social media set up. 
and I'm going to let the Lord work over time. My second book is on its way. I'm working on it, a, a book for couples, a devotional for couples. And all the books are going to be very simple in its format. Lots of scriptures, some commentary from me, and then a couple of questions in the devotion to help you think and start the process on whatever that topic is. On my current uh, TikTok, and then I created a new TikTok for that account, for the, the ministry, I mean, the uh, the LLC, that book is available. My first published book is on the way. I haven't even gotten my own copy yet because it's on the way. If that's something you're interested in, for getting for a man in your life, Ken is putting it out there as an option. You don't have to. Just check it out. The second thing the Lord has confirmed, he's confirmed it multiple times, is that all of this skill, all of this information, all of the know-how of how to lead and manage and develop and coach people both on the court and in business. And then you take the, the spiritual aspect. I started the second LLC yesterday. Abundant life coaching. I'm going to attempt to be a life coach. I'm going to set up opportunities uh, to, and I want to thank Sister Pittman, Sister Mary Lou, my wife, uh, for their encouragement, and even Sister Veronica for for seeing and hearing and being obedient to the support that the Lord is saying, go, go, go do what the Lord tells you to do. Go do what the Lord tells you to do. And so as another means or a way of ensuring that my family is taken care of, those who need developmental coaching in life, uh, I'm still setting up the, the matrix to where it's affordable. I'm not trying to rip anyone off. Uh, we'll set up actual plans of how to, to get there. I want to start with young men, but I'll also take uh, any any anybody who wants to be a part of uh, an actual process, a, a plan, a coaching mechanism where you know I have goals, I have visions. But the difference between my life coaching process, and this is what the Lord showed me, just, just in the last 48 hours, well, actually, I talked to Sister Pittman on Friday. So between Friday and now, that is all Christ-centered. In the, in the state of Oklahoma, I cannot give financial advice as a life coach. I cannot give uh, counseling advice. But I can still guide you. The, the laws are really gray. I do really good in the gray. Uh, I've done multiple conversations and sessions where... Uh, and here's what I want to be sure of. I told the Lord this. I do not want to make his house a house of den, a den of thieves and robbers. I do not want to 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 cause any kind of stain on this. So I'm being very careful to keep the ministry over here and those LLCs over here. The life coach part of it. It's going to have some spiritual aspects, but it will be based upon what the Lord wants for you. We'll pray, we'll, we'll intercede, uh, but there will be daily or weekly, monthly sessions, just like a coach would in, a, in an office, just like your boss would sit you down once a week and have a one-on-one. -on -one. The only difference is we're doing the one-on-one -on -one with your life. And so for everyone who has questions about their purpose, it goes beyond just prayer. We're going to continue to pray won't cost you anything. I don't need an offering. I'm not asking for a seed. I'm not asking for an investment. I'm just sharing with this group here. For those that have been very, very supportive of what the Lord is doing. Uh, I got more books coming out. I'm going to come out with a teen devotional. I'm going to come out with a devotional uh, for, for adolescents. I even went so far to say, Lord, even the children need maybe even a coloring book with some hope, with some purpose. And I, I, I'm just going to be... So I'm going to sit back and see what the Lord says. But I, I thought it important maybe right now to share this with you, uh, that you would pray for me. I never come on here in all my time of coming on here and ask for prayer for us. I mean, I've prayed for us. I've said, keep my wife, my son, surgery, things like that. But if there was ever a time that I needed your, your person, you get to pray for me. Pray that the Lord continues to, to show me his will. 
I'm not asking for blessings on the business. I'm not asking that he manifest and multiply the LLC. I'm not asking for client, none of that. Lord, help Ken to hear you. Help him to, to understand what it is he's supposed to be doing right now. Because as a man, you want to supply for your family. As a, as a husband, you want to make sure your wife has her needs and her wants. You don't ever want to be in a position as a man, Ezra, uh, not being able to supply, but trust in the Lord. I think my brother Ron understands this. Many men understand this. So just keep brother Ken in your prayers that he just listens to the Lord. And if, if you're interested, perhaps in the book, it's available. My first book. I got its own website, but I also published it here. Uh, the name of that LLC is Walk by Faith Worldwide. The website is W by F dot site. That I, the, the fact that I was even able to come up with that on the, the Lord gave me that. Walk by faith, not by sight. That, that, that's the actual website when you think through it. W by F dot site. S I T E. Check it out. Tell me what you think. I'm open to improvements. I'm open to any kind of feedback. Brother Ken, you should probably change this. This was hard. This was confusing. Thank you. Thank you. Prayer tomorrow, 6 a.m. Can you, can your wife pin it? Can your wife pin it, please? What, what do you mean by that, Shawnee? I'm not following. Can she also write a, a book? Is that what you're asking me? Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can comment it here. Let's see if I can put it in the chat. Did that come through right there? No. So I'm keeping it separate, Shawnee. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm so I'm so respectful for what the Lord is doing. I don't want it to have nothing to do with this. I've already established this as holiness, righteousness, prayers. And so you won't see any of this in this. It's it's somewhere else. I've already created, I don't want to use the word brand. But we've already created here what this is. This is Ken Dowdy being used by God for prayers and ministry. Whereas uh, the three or four, and I got four more LLCs in my head that I, I'm going to work over time that the Lord would expand if he says the, the same. But those are that, that's separate. That, that's, that's over there. That's over there. Um, when, when, we, when I worked at uh, Ma Bell um, Ma Bell was Ma Bell but then they segregated singular wireless and then when we became AT&T they, seg they segregated Cricket, they segregated DirecTV, they segregated Warner Brothers, it wasn't AT&T uh, studios, it was Warner Brothers, they didn't change the name, it was segregated they wanted to prepay to stay prepay and they didn't want anyone to, dis uh, to discover that, that cricket and and if you read the fine print, you figure out that cricket and AT and T is the exact same network, exact same phones, exact same people behind the scenes running it, but they segregated it. I'm trying to keep it segregated. I want to I want to keep it whole. I don't want the Lord in any way. I'm almost sounding like the people that wrote the Bible. I'm change. I don't want I don't want to mess up the name, Y H W H. So we're gonna just leave it out. We're gonna we're gonna leave the business out of this, but. From time to time in sessions like this, and I made you saw what I did, right? I, I was clear, Lord, I was clear in saying that this has this is Ken's personal time now. This has nothing to do with prayer. This I we were finished with prayer, we're finished with Bible study. This is just Ken sitting at his house, inviting some friends over. We having a barbecue. What you been up to? What you working on? What are you working on? This is that conversation. Does that make sense? I don't want anyone to think that I'm soliciting right now on the gospel. I don't want to be, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. I, but I, 
just like everybody else got a business. I'm a reseller. I'm a re I'm a resell in the sense of not people who've already worn it. They're still brand new, but Christian, uh, uh t-shirts and hats and hoodies, uh, on that website, the, the books that we sell will be added to that website. And the more books that we write, I, I've encouraged my son and my daughter to write. I said, we can sell it on the website. We got an LLC. I got a publisher now. And so I told my daughter, I said, like, pin, pin something, write it. And we'll, we'll have a section at some point of books. And you can go look at all the books that be right. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Anything else before we go? Comments, questions, thoughts? Again? No, it's not in my bio. I don't want to put it. In. But but here, here, let me look up, look up, look, work, uh, look that up on TikTok. Let me see here. Let me see how to, how I can do this. If you look this up on TikTok, I think the name of my TikTok is the same. Yes. Look up, look this up on TikTok. And that's where I'm going to start posting for that LLC. And then when I do my second LLC, which is called Abundant Life Coaching, I'm going to create, I'm in the process of today, uh, creating the website. I'm going to create the social media, put together a pricing plan, uh, all of my uh, metrics and goals and things for people who want to be a part. If you know somebody who needs a life coach that needs motivation at a very, very fair, reasonable rate, because it's our, it's my time that I'll be given uh, from about, I said, I'll do 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m. every day, 30 minute slots, as often as that person needs, probably like a weekly, like you would sit down with your boss every week and go over how you've done. What, what are my performance metrics? Did I hit my goals? What's what's what are my targets? What's my incentive? What's my bonus looking like? Oh, well, we're just going to do that for life. Where are you at spiritually? Where are you at financially? Where are you at in your personal life? Where are you at in your social life? Where, where, where are you at with your parents and, and those relationships that should be important to you? Where are you in your giving back to humanity and to your society? And we're going to have goals for every area of your life. And over time, as a coach, as a life coach, when I did AEU, my goal every practice was to push the kids. They became teenagers to be the best versions of themselves. Well, I've been doing this my whole life. It only makes sense for those who need it. You should put your name on the website. You think I should? I don't because I don't want to I don't want to merge the I don't want people to. Um, what's the word, Alex? I want to keep it pure. I don't want people thinking that, oh, there he, he, okay, there he is, one of them preachers. I knew it. I knew it sooner or later, sooner or later, he was going to start asking people for money. That's, that's, well, that's my, I don't want to call it a fear. I don't want to call it a fear. That's my concern. Teresa said, put your name on your site. Okay, okay that's two people that said it. There's three. Put it in the bio on on the uh, TikTok or y'all talking about my actual website? I assume y'all on my site right now. Put it on, put it there. Jamie said, okay. I'm trying. Yeah, I hope you hear my heart. And do y'all see? Y'all know me by now, right? Y'all, you all have figured me out. My wife know me better than anybody. Her and I were talking about this last night. And so uh, y'all know who I am. I'm not trying to get over on anybody, but I'm also being bold and courageous in what the Lord has put on my heart. I've been praying for y'all to be bold and courageous, been asking the Lord to do whatever he needs to do in y'all's life. So I'm saying, okay, what you doing in my life though? What are you, what are you doing with me? So it looks like a vote. You all are all saying, put the name on the website. Okay. I'll figure that out. And as I'm building my second website today, Abundant Life Coaching Worldwide, um, I'll find a way to ensure, or they'll definitely know it's me uh, that, that's out there as, as the life coach. And if you know anybody that perhaps would need a life coach, start putting it out there. 
Word of mouth is the best marketing tool of all time. If you order anything from that website, it takes about a week. Or I mean, for my 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 other LLC, Walk by Faith, um, two weeks to get ordered because I got to get it from my supplier. Even my book that's being produced, uh, I've had. Uh, for those who've been in management or leadership, you know, uh, there's the there's two methods, two processes, methodologies of how you can store inventory. Sh Shani, you understand this. Business owners, you understand this. Uh, I don't have the investment dollars to go buy 200 books and have them sit here and wait and then wait for you all to order books. And so as you order a book, then I order the book from the manufacturer. Right now, I got about 10 books on the way. So in case somebody were to order then I'll be ready to to send those out. But in the, in the meantime, it takes about two weeks to get these orders in. Uh, my other supplier, probably suppliers you're well aware of, but just I'm just doing it myself. That's all business is anyway, is people purchasing stuff and then selling it for a margin. So I get the T-shirt for X price. I'm able to sell you the T-shirt for five. Well, what do you think I'm getting a T-shirt for? You probably know the site. I, ain't, I got nothing to hide, but... It's part of the, with the process of what the Lord is trying to do in my life. Taking 25 years of working for AT&T, Quest Diagnostics, uh, NWN Carousel, running an AU team, being a part of multiple churches and putting all that together and saying, OK, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I could be my own CEO. Lord, do you want me to be a CEO? I'm a CEO. I'm a president. I'm my own company. All right. Any other advice? This is humbling that I'm even sharing this with you because I did not want to share. And it's only looked like 50 people going to hear this anyway. So I, I still feel safe and not feeling like I'm trying to mix the two. I, any other advice y'all would give Brother Ken? Since y'all are on there looking at my site, give me some feedback. I did. I looked at KDP. They want 70% of your book. Um, any book that's $9.99 or less, you keep 70%. They only want 30%. But if your book costs more than $9.99, you only get like 34% of the sale. That's why so many people's books on Amazon are 40 bucks, 25 bucks, because they're trying to recoup the 10% profit margin that they would have got if they sold it on their own website or if they would have sold it uh, you know, in a store or something like that, or their own, you know. Uh, so I, I've looked into that. I'm going to keep looking into that. I am. Because there's some opportunity within the Amazon where you have millions and millions of eyeballs. But the other challenge, the other con, or I guess you could call it a, a challenge, you know, weakness there on Amazon is that everybody's on Amazon right now. So, so to find my title, uh, I'd probably be on page four or five, which then gets into to marketing dollars, right? Advertising dollars, two different things. If you've ever been in the business, advertising and marketing, two different things. And so how much investment dollars am I starting to put aside? So I have a budget that as money comes in, uh, how much I'll spend for TikTok ads, Amazon ads, Google's Google, Google ads, SEO opportunities where I get integrated. I hate to be that guy too. I hate going to YouTube and an ad pop up. I hate scrolling TikTok and I'm interrupted because of an ad. So I, but I get both sides of it. When I was at AT and T, they spent more money in advertising than they did on their employees. Billions. We sponsored everything at AT and T. The NCAA, the PGA, the NBA. You you name it. AT and T was trying to put their name on everything. They just wanted their name to be big. They were losing money, but spending money to to put their name out there. So I got to be strategic i gotta be wise i gotta listen to the holy spirit on when and how to advertise when to market when to use influencers when to uh give the book away for free to maybe one of the nba players here in oklahoma city and then that person uses word of mouth like i'm just trying to listen right now i did consider an audiobook believe it or not one of my LLCs is voiceover. Uh, part of this big plan is to use this voice that the Lord has given me to to do audio books and maybe even some some voiceover. I got like six or seven different voices ranges that the Lord I can use. But yes, I have. 
I actually tried to do an audio book for someone about eight years ago and Amazon tore me up. The decibel levels wasn't high enough and you got to bring this up. And I still this that matched this other chapter. And I got so discouraged. I apologize to the person that asked me to do it, that I wasted three months of their time because my home studio just wasn't good enough. So then do I rent a studio? It was an investment in buying the actual equipment. I can download different apps, but my computer runs so slow. Can't, my computer can't even keep Messenger up, Jamie. My computer can't even run Messenger and Facebook and TikTok at the same time. So I got to invest in another computer. So there's a whole other piece and layers there. But yes, I'm going to do my own audio on my book. And then I also want to be the voice of someone else's book. Because I can change these different octaves and sound like I even thought about it. I said, Lord, show I'd like to do like a Nickelodeon or a Disney voiceover for a cartoon, a video game voiceover. I've had so many people tell me, man, your voice, you could be in radio. Well, the Lord has to open that door. I gotta get an agent. I gotta have somebody out there selling my voice. I gotta have time to do it. And if I did that, then I probably wouldn't be here with you all. What's robbery? You said that's robbery, sis. What's what? What's robbery? Did I? Are the prices prices too high? I'm just reading comments. We just talking right now. I do have PayPal. I don't have Zelle. I do have a business bank account through a company. Um, all of it is separate. Again, all that is separate. I did find a publisher, Lulu. If you got a book idea, uh, I did some research. It's like five publishers out there that will help you self-publish. They have different price ranges and the different websites. And so when I did my research the last three weeks, Lulu was the best, for me, the best publisher where you still end up with a pretty good margin. They'll produce your book let you write your book, upload your book, and then you set your own margin, what you want it sold for. They'll sell it on their website. They sell it on some of their other distributed websites, and then you can sell it wherever you want to. So the distributor or the publisher, the publisher is lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com, which was also an odd, like another, like for me, it was a sign. It was like, okay, I'm listening because L-U means a lot in my life on another level. That's the college we went to. So the door wide open. Um, order whatever. I, I'm Word of mouth. Send it out. You guys get to be my influencers. You get to be my first influencers. Thank you for listening and sticking around. Shawnee, you don't know this, but you, you were an encouragement. Remember that conversation we had? I was already thinking and, and working behind the scenes. So I was really investigating, asking you questions. Uh, Sophie, Sophie doesn't know this. Sophie on here, Agent Sophie. She's not on here right now. I have to give her credit next time I see her. But she penned a book about a year ago on behalf of a friend that's no longer with us. Uh, and she published a book and I asked her questions. I was inquiring like, well, how did you do it? And who did you use? And I ordered her book. It was a good book. She, she, she that set, that was a seed. Some of you got books inside of you. You got a story. I'll sell it on my website. I'll help you publish. World, Walk by Faith Worldwide Publishing. Walk by Faith Worldwide. I'll help you with your manuscript. I'll even help you life coach and we'll figure it all out together. How about that? So it's not misconstrued with real scram scammers. People would try to copyright it. Yeah, so there's a copyright and I, I, I'm in the process of, you know, that whole piece. So every, every book you write, you got to purchase an ISBN. The good news with Lulu, Lulu will give you the ISBN number if you stay within their framework versus having to go purchase a separate ISBN number and then the copyright is separate I think each copyright you can get a block of copyrights from the copyright company for X amount but yeah it's, it's there's 
some layers to this. This is a lot. But when your heart is in it, you're running toward the finish line with everything you got. You wake up every morning. You stay up late at night. Anyone who's ever hustled, anyone who has a, ever had a dream in their heart, you know that you're going to go after it. If you ever worked on your master's degree or your PhD, you're putting in the time. You're putting in the effort. I told the Lord this. I gave AT&T so much time. I gave Quest so much time. I gave the other job, NWN, so much of my time, overtime, before time, in airports, away from my family for them. The Lord said, now do for you what you did for them. If you can give that much energy and effort for another company, how about you work on yourself? This is the first time in my life I get to invest in me with the Lord's help. I take no credit. I take no credit at all. But if I told y'all all the time, I would, my wife would be like, babe, it's, it's six o'clock. Are you, are you on your way home? We're getting ready to do X, Y, Z. Should we wait on you? And I'm like, babe, I got two more, two more projects, two more emails I'm working on, two more updates I got to send over. It'd be eight o'clock. I don't work from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. What kind of life was that for another company that ended up letting me go? I spent so many time, so many months and weeks away from my family, investing in them, thinking that they were investing in me. So guess what I'm getting ready to do now? I go back there in my office when I'm done here, and while the 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 TikTok is uploading. I'm, I'm writing. I'm either. I, I got time set out. Spend an hour or two writing. Spend an hour or two on the marketing and the advertisement of the business, and then spend the next hour or two on the next business. I wanted. I looked at affiliated marketing. I looked at how to drop ship. I've looked at so many different things. I've even had these ideals. I mean, I get my hair twisted all the time by the my my, my lovely wife. Um, I use a product called Malay. I don't know if any of you ladies know the it's a purple and white bottle and those are the products it's, it's no alcohol it's supposed to be all natural it's helped my hair grow it kept my hair stay healthy i'm not even a marketer for them yet but i thought how cool would it be to, to have my wife do my hair on camera marketing them and people buying the product the wife is like i don't know if i want to be on camera doing your hair that's us time and it is that's been her time. But I can still market the product. I can do a before and after. That's one of the LLCs, one of the other businesses that I, I want to do affiliate marketing for Malay. I probably sell a lot of products, especially when I get a fresh stew. When it's looking right after the wife does it, y'all never ever see it right after she does it. It is fly. I, I be feeling myself. I be feeling myself. And I turn around and tell her thank you. Because she didn't have to spend those two and a half hours once a month baby if you still on here thank you in front of everybody right so i got all these ideals i got all these things he's put in my heart i'm just asking the lord how when what's next so pray for me i'm gonna read the rest of y'all's messages and i'm gonna let y'all go yeah i'm a ceo felicia i mean just even hearing that out loud like i i, I run my own company two companies right now walk by faith and abundant life every company that I start is going to have a scripture it'll be very unique and hope significant that people recognize when they see that brand that's a Christian brand without me telling, having to tell you it's a Christian brand like Christians will pick up on he will give you life and life more abundantly for we walk by faith and not by sight so, I'm the key. You know where it is? Uh, look at my office. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my son. Katrina said, just keep going. Any other opinions that is not God ordained? That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you see now? And again, some of you probably pick this up like you said i've been picking up i've been picking up on you brother ken in the spirit even our own bible studies and the lessons i've been teaching about samuel and what we've been doing on tuesday nights god always ministers to the minister first he, he always speaks to the preacher first 
the prophet first, the teacher first, before he teaches the, the, the others. And so all these lessons I've been talking about, hearing God's voice, I'm talking to myself. All these messages on loving your enemies and so God will bless you and, and having a, 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 a free path to everything he has. I'm talking to me. So you're right. I'm not taking anybody's opinion, especially if they don't read the Bible. All right. Uh, what other comments y'all have here for Brother Ken here? And I'm going to let y'all go. Just don't put it on YouTube. Don't put what on YouTube? My audio book? And sis, what did you mean by... Uh, So I know people in radio doesn't pay well. Yeah, I was thinking more like a Disney movie, a Nickelodeon cartoon, flying to California once a week to do voiceover and coming back to Oklahoma. I'm not trying to move to California. And nowadays you can just do stuff remotely. I can go to a studio here in Oklahoma, upload my audios and send the tracks uh, to those companies. Everybody else doing voiceovers. I got a, the Lord gave me this voice. I can't sing, but I can, I can change my voice. I was saying that the Amazon commissions are robbery. You're right. Yeah, they are. They are. They they Walmart all over again. You hear. You used to hear stories how uh, people would have a product. They take it to Walmart. Walmart said no. We're not selling it. We're going to sell it for our price. And they want to sell their product so bad that they start losing money just to get into Walmart, hoping that one day they could raise their price. Amazon can sometimes be the new Walmart. Yeah, the percentage that the company gets is robbery, as my wife said. One day, maybe you can voice over your own Christian cartoon show. Oh. Okay. I've never thought about writing a cartoon. I have written a play. I wrote a play back in 99. Sent it to Tyler Perry in 2000. Didn't hear anything. And it's just been sitting there in the office. Probably need to rewrite it for the relevance of text messaging and and Twitter and all like none of that stuff was even out when I wrote my play sat down with a group of people we read it thought the Lord was getting ready to do something but it, he had different plans for me start having kids start working touring around the country where the play was out out of the out of the plans at that time so we'll see what the Lord says Felicia said I'm in tears about how happy I feel and all of the possibility. Well, thank you, Felicia. Thank you. I mean, that means you all have been like trusting us this entire way. Uh, like I said, we feel like family. We we talk so often. For those that have been with us even just recently in the last month. Yep. So I can teach classes one on one. Yeah. I can speak. I could. Monique Rodriguez sold Malay. She's majority. Oh, I didn't know she she sold it. But she's still the majority majority owner. That's interesting. If you feel like you're the expert on any topic. Just think. You glad for this unofficial ministry? Yeah, it's unofficial. Didn't know I'd be announcing this today, but you guys, we, we're on here, so you're fine. You won't make money off of YouTube, yeah. Yeah. You, you have to like be a, a real high niche uh, YouTuber or influencer. My son has taught me a lot. Even in his, the little bit of time that he's been on TikTok, he's had some videos hit a million or 400K and and hit, it's his niche. He's a young man. He doesn't show his shirt. You know, he doesn't take his shirt off doing any of that. He just he knows his niche. It's basketball. And for whatever reason, one of his videos 
just went way up and he gets stuff all the time from people that said, Hey, will you do this on your, 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 uh, uh, TikTok? And he'll turn it down. Cause he's like, that's not who I am. I'm not selling roller skates. I'm not selling eyeglasses. I don't wear, you know, I don't wear sunglasses like that, but depending on where he's at, he doesn't go to YouTube. He doesn't go to Instagram because the algorithms are just a little bit different. So Shani said, you got this. Thank you. Have a blessed day, sis. He's giving you a gift and a tongue. It should be shared. Appreciate that. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the motivations. I could use a Bible cart, Bible story cartoon for my son. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. Somebody said, can I have some advice? I don't know what the question is. The best thing you can do, solve a problem and teach others. That's life. That's life. That is. Thank you, Sister Gracie. Thank you. All right, listen. We're going to get off of here. Appreciate you all. Tomorrow, 6 a.m. morning prayer. Have a good one. Lord, thank you.